Hello and welcome to Pia Tia, the German Engineer. Yes, we are finally back after a almost three week break. As a matter of fact, how are you guys doing today? It's really nice to already see you guys here. We have Frozen Hair, we have Jay, Elfie, and of course, Cinema Night Entertainment in the chat. Really, really nice to see you guys. How's it going? Isoka Moro says, hey, hello there. Welcome to the stream. Gremlin is here as well. Gremlin, how are you doing today? Ah, feels really good to be back, not gonna lie. It's just gonna be a slight problem here remembering what the hell is even going on here. I hope you guys remember, because yeah, i having uh, having some slight trouble here. Let me put it that way. <laughs> All right, I would say let's uh, run the game and let's see if we can get rid of a few of their messages here. There we go. Our plants are thankfully not as dead as they looked in the first moment. And if we could get some daylight in here, guys, that would be really nice. Come on. Daybreak. There we go. Now we can actually see what the hell we're doing. That is good. Dead Frozen here just become a supporter? Is uh, that what I'm reading here? If so, thank you very much. Ah, what is going on here? Let's see. Down here on the bottom, that's right. We got our metal refinery set up. We have our plastic and our oil refinery going strong. Very, very nice. Um, well, I was in the waiting room, but it never started the stream. Yeah, that certainly sounds like YouTube, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, God. Well, usually, if you just refresh it at around 3.30 or whenever I come online, um, it'll fix that problem. Obviously, that is not how it's supposed to be, but here we are. Sin, how are you doing today? Uh, let's see down here on the bottom. We can make us a little bit more steel. Let's make sure we have everything available. We have plenty of refined carbon, plenty of iron, and plenty of lime. Very, very good. Well, the only two things that I really remember from last time around that I promised you guys we would do is um, we dug up this fossil right here, the petrified fossil, and we have three more fossils laying around. Let us find them real quick. Over here on the left side, we have the ancient specimen, and over here on the right side, yes, yeah, so right here we have the amber fossil, and up here at the top, we have the frozen fossil. And my understanding is if we get all three of them, we will get some kind of unlimited amount of fossils. So that is certainly something that we are going to take a look at today. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Right here, we just have to dig over. There is really nothing near. It's a little bit cold over here at negative 94 degrees, but that's about it. Really nothing to worry about. Uh, down here on the bottom with the amber fossil, we have a spore kit. Okay. Yeah, a few spores in here, but also uh, really nothing bad, to be quite honest. And then over here on the left side, is there anything crazy going on? Oh, there's nothing. We don't have any germs, we don't have anything hot, anything cold. Really, just as simple as that. And Cinema Night, of course, once again with a spicy entrance of $5. Uh, dude, you are absolutely insane and I love it. Thank you so, so much for your support and, of course, your continued support. Uh, definitely nice to have you here. All right, let's see. What are we going to go in first? First time I've been around to catch a stream. Uh, Jazz, really? It's the first time you actually uh, caught a stream? That's amazing. Well, I'm really glad you did. Uh, welcome. Really nice to have you here live. All right. Let's see what we can start to tear up. First of all, right here we have our thimble reeds. And our thimble reeds are not looking too hot. Um... Yeah, we need to do something about that. The reason is that up here, our water did run out and do a damn thing about it. I prefer the term colorfully eccentric, but crazy is good. <laughs> I'll try to remember that. Do you stream on Twitch? No, I do not. I do have a uh, Twitch channel. I used to use it a long, long time ago for not really even the oxygen not included or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I decided to go exclusively on YouTube. Just because, yeah, YouTube is my uh, website of choice and I make my videos here and I figured might as well start streaming here as well. Um, if that is a good idea or not, we will see in the long term, but for right now, it is what it is. Pendler in steel. Um, ahoy, mates. Ahoy to you as well. 
And Chas is here too. Glad to catch you live. Well, glad to have you here live. Thank you for joining. Okay, so down here we have all this polluted water. And this polluted water here... Why do I have a metal refinery in my hands? Not entirely sure. We're going to go to plumbing and we are just going to grab us very simply a liquid pump and we're going to plop it probably right here. We're trying to try to melt all of this polluted ice here just with the polluted water that we have. Uh, that problem should solve itself. And we're going to plop it into our pump right here and pump it all the way to the, uh, to the top of the base. So might as well go for that. Let's see. Um, let's go into plumbing. Let's uh, grab us insulated pipes. It needs to be insulated because it is so, so freezing cold and we don't want to freeze our entire base. So let's come through here and let's see if we can build this thing here all the way to the top. We already have a pipe right here. Well, definitely going to utilize that. And we are not directly putting it into the symbol reads because it is too cold. Therefore, we need to do something like this here. Let's see. Let's come over there and maybe just right around here get rid of this tile right here and then in plumbing let's grab us a liquid vent plop it right there and then of course we need a, a liquid bridge and let's make sure that this connection here is absolutely complete there we go that should be everything we need right here's the last one there we go and just for completeness sake all of this here can be deconstructed as well all right very good that's a pretty good start um, all we need is a little bit of power, but we're going to wait and hold off with that for a second because the water that is in this pipe right here, yes, uh, for the amount of time it has, sitting, it has been sitting there, we are at 11.5 degrees. Yes, 11.5 degrees is too cold, therefore we will have to recirculate this water here. Uh, shouldn't be that big of a problem, but just got to keep that in mind that we just connect this pipe here up really quickly so the water empties out goes back into the tank and then we're going to suck up some fresh hot water once we reach this liquid tepidizer right here. Really, really easy. Um, This guy talking so smooth, I thought this was a video. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. You know, I'm trying to be as authentic as I can be in my videos as well as in my live streams as uh, little editing as possible. Okay. So now we have taken care of our simple reads right here. The other thing that I do remember from last time around is this natural gas geyser right here, which is currently dormant. So we definitely have to take a look at that right away. So how are we going to do this? It's probably going to be relatively simple. We just need a liquid lock right here, which is going to be these three tiles. Therefore, these here will need to be dug out and then something like this here. So we can come in. There we go. And something like this here. Um, let me think about this. We're going to come in here. We're going to come down. We're going to come back up. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. We need... Actually, that is going to work. Yep, just fine. Just like this. All right. Let's get this here out and call it a day. Very nice. Just going to pump in a little bit of oil from all the way on the bottom right here, which we can't reach anymore. Eh, look at that. Put your pump. Come down here, get rid of this one, and then let's plop in another piece of ladder right here. So we can then actually also pump out this polluted water right here. Slowly but steadily, we are going to get rid of it. Very good. By the way, I copied your critter wash tub. <laughs> you mean just do that right here? Yeah, it does work pretty well, doesn't it? It works for anything, even for critters that are sitting on the wall, if this here is filled properly. It's a pretty neat design. Not even going to lie by myself. It's a, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of it myself. <laughs> okay, we have more than enough food. That is a good thing. Um, we have more than enough uranium. Steel is looking good. Reed fiber, we're going to get a hell of a lot more, even though 77 units is definitely a good start. Six tons of plastic. Can start replacing our ladder slowly but steadily here with plastic. Very good. Lime, 260 kilograms, once again, a good start, but slowly but steadily, we should be getting more of that. And then, of course, we can't forget that right here, we have an iron volcano as well. We will see how far we get today. Maybe we tame that real quick while we are at it, even though there are a couple other things that I want to do first. As I mentioned, uh, for example, right here, this ancient specimen right here, we want to get to that. So, uh, let's take a look here. How do we get there? Probably something like this here is doable. We can just straight dig over there. Let's do that. 
I'm just going to, uh, yeah, tell him to go over there. It'd be pretty simple and straightforward as usual. Something like this here. And then just dig our way through here. Uh, once we get to here, though, I want to stop real quick and make sure that the dupes don't dig into this hydrogen and chlorine gas mixture area right here. I um, want to do something about that manually. But other than that, we definitely didn't want to make our way all the way across here. Very nice. All right, let's turn up the speed a little bit. So actually something gets done around here. And over here, yes, the liquid lock has been built, but I already dug into there. Good grief. So much about the liquid lock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. I need a bottle emptier right here. High priority. Let's drop a little bit of gas in there, as a matter of fact. Let's grab us two insulated talents and build them the right there real quick with number nine priority so we can avoid as much natural gas escaping as possible. I didn't pay attention that this one here was already open. I thought both of them were closed because I already put the uh, blueprint in. Uh, how about wrangling the poke shells for lime generation? I know that feeding them is a challenge as polluted dirt is usually in short supply. Yes, that is exactly the problem. Um, I'm not a big fan of um, uh, ranching the poke shells down here uh, for that reason. Um, and for lime, we should be getting... I have never actually completed this uh, whole fossil thing here, so I don't know what it's going to do. Uh, therefore, uh, we're going to try and see what's coming out of here. Um, if that is viable, then we will use it. It's that simple. If not, we will come up with another plan. But for right now, I just want to see actually what the problem is or, or not the problem, what the output is with this frozen fossil and um, this amber fossil right here. So we need to get all four of them, I've been told. And as soon as we have all four of them, um, we should have access to a hell of a lot of uh, fossil. When you look for water, what is the first kind of guys that you look for? I usually go with cool slush, but uh, don't know if this is optimal. I mean, it really depends on what exactly you're looking for, right? Uh, the answer is rarely ever black or white. Um, you can go with cool slush. You can go with um, something like uh, this here, a cool steam vent. Again, it really depends on what exactly are you looking for and what is your use case for it. Like, for example, cooling this here down is relatively easy if you need to. So going with a cool slush, um, you will have to heat it up. It's, of course, the other direction. Unless you want to feed it for, um, what is it called? Um, it's laying on the tip of my tongue. Can't think of it right this second. Damn it. What are those um, very cool plants that you need to farm? Sleet weeds. There we have it. If you want to feed it into sleet weeds, for example, that would be a better use case. It really, it's, it's kind of hard to say whatever you are trying to accomplish, right? Come on. Put a little bit of more oil in here. One more dropper. Come on, dupes. Put one more in here. Yeah, you'll have to pump out a little bit more here. You're definitely going to keep track of all this natural gas here. Hmm. Me not playing only to watch beer play. Also, Potato PC doesn't let me play. Ah, that really sucks, though. Sleet with us for burgers, anything else is ancillary. Yes. Yep, definitely. It is uh, definitely for burgers. Come on, dupes. Why are you not bringing me one more freaking thing of oil? Because you can't reach this here, that's why. Okay, that explains everything. Around here, uh, we are just going to dig all the way through, all the way over to here. And then we're going to plop in ladders so we can get around it. It's going to be very simple and straightforward all the way down here into the oil once we get there. 
Uh, just need one more drop. We are at 794 kilograms. It uh, is really frustrating when you need something and you don't get it done. Come on. Get it done, dupes. How much more plastic do we need? Is there a reason not to let this here run? Probably not. I mean, oil is something that we are not going to run out of anytime soon. We have an oil reservoir right here. And much, much more solid crude oil that we will thaw over time. So yeah, I'm not worried about it. Let's make plastic until we fall over. Especially since we don't have another source right now anyway. And last but not least, the liquid lock is here. I wish I would have seen that this side here is already open. I thought there was another tile here. Maybe the dupes dug it up to build here. Can't entirely tell. But either way around, not that big a deal. This thing here is dormant. Um, let's um, analyze it to see how much longer it is dormant. We will get rid of uh, this one tile right here, though. Uh, yeah, so the dupes can actually come in here. Very good. What do you think about polluted water distillation to generate polluted dirt? I have done that in the past, as a matter of fact. Um, I have built a, a evaporator to get clean water and polluted dirt out of it. That worked out pretty well. Uh, we could do something like that with our magma down here. Um, usually I just use my polluted water for, for other stuff, like for example, feeding it into simple reeds. So... It's unless you have a source of it that is almost unlimited, like it's say you have a lot of polluted uh, cool slush geysers sitting around or something. I don't think it's really viable in the long run because you usually don't have an unlimited supply of um, polluted water. But if you do, if you happen to be lucky enough to have something like that laying around, it may be a good idea. Uh, I should probably do more with gas water as I find myself usually dumping it into reeds, which is lazy. That's not lazy. It's always good to have some extra reed laying around. All right, over here we're looking better. The next question is where are we going to go with our piping? Um, the answer is right here. Very good. That is our infinite storage right here that is currently completely empty. So, yeah, not really that infinite, I guess. Let's come just straight through here. We will have to go through the liquid lock here in the beginning. Later on, we can straighten all this out and save a tiny little bit on resources, even though it's not much. But right at the moment, it's looking pretty good. And then we will also need some power. Let's see, where do we get power from? Um, nowhere. Nowhere at all. Um, can we just dig straight through here? Hold on, what do we have here? What were you? I can't recall. We have a hydrogen vent right here. Why am I utterly unaware of that? And it lines up perfectly. Look at this. Okay. Um, that actually fits perfect to the seam of the stream that I was absolutely unaware of. <laughs> we are just uh, going to come right here. And we are not only going to tame this natural gas geyser, but also this hydrogen vent. That <laughs> is perfect. Oh, God. Do you guys remember that there was a hydrogen vent on this map? I can't recall that at all. I don't think we ever looked at this thing. Oh, my goodness. Well, I guess that works in our favor. Still doesn't solve our power problem in, uh, in the short term, though. Uh, why is there so much on here? Oh, that's why. Look at this. I forgot to disconnect it. And now it looks a little bit better. There we go. Okay, then. We are going to come... What are you doing? Uh, we are going to come through here with this power wire after all. Because all we have is this one gas pump. So it's not really going to hurt anything or nothing. So, there we go. Put that in here. The only problem is that this here is a gas pump. And the gas pump right here will pick up anything. We have polluted oxygen, we have carbon dioxide in here, and of course natural gas. And we do only and exclusively want natural gas. Um, what could we do here? Instead of this gas pump, I'm just going to go ahead in uh, ventilation and I'm going to build a filtered gas pump. Yes, this is a mod. It does cost us 25 plastic. And the only difference is that it just has a filter already built in. 
Um, really big fan of this mod. Just a nice quality of life improvement, in my humble opinion. Something like this here should be in the game from the get-go. But it isn't. So, we're modding it in, and we're calling it a day. <clears throat> Just so someone work on producing polluted water, wish I could remember to build, but I think it involved animals. Animals to produce polluted water. Mm, can't think of anything from the top of my head. Not entirely sure what they were trying to do there. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Put some ladders in here. Very nice. Right here we can dig out this, 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 these two, and this one. Only this one granite right here we cannot dig out. And then we should be able to walk through here with our dupes and see what's going on with this hydrogen vent right here. Um, definitely need a doorman to tame it, because otherwise we're going to have hydrogen everywhere, and we definitely don't want that. Uh, does that pump use slightly more power? I don't think so, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, let's take a quick look real quick. It uses... 240 watts. No, there's no difference in usage. Uh, power 240, power 240. The only difference is that this one here costs um, only 50 steel, where the filter gas pump costs 50 steel and 25 plastic. So the plastic is added, but not more power usage. So that should be good. Would it be easier to filter out everything but natural gas until the other stuff is gone and delete the filter? Yes, that would be the normal solution, quote unquote, for sure. That would be the intended solution, even if you want. And our natural gas guys are right here. Let's take a look. Uh, 402.1 grams a second at 150 C, an average output of 96 grams, and next activity in 21 cycles. Oh my god, we have time. So much time. Not even funny. All right, let's get rid of all this stuff right here. While we're at it, uh, let's deconstruct this tile so we can actually uh, get to this uh, one piece right here as well. And then hopefully you will put in my conductive wire here made out of lead. And uh, yeah, you should be good to go here. It's literally the simple to tame a natural gas geyser. Yeah, the dupes are not too happy. The breathability down here is, of course, next to nothing. We can dig into those two pockets right here to get us a little bit of oxygen in this area, but unfortunately that is also above us, so it doesn't really help us too much. We would have to dig into something like this here to give us some temporary relief. You won't vacuum the natural gas guys in the room? This one here? Yes, I will vacuum it out. I will definitely vacuum it out. I'm just going to use this pump for it. It's pretty simple. Breathing is for casuals. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Instead of just vacuum it out. So basically what the plan is here, right? We have only three different gases in here. F4, not F3. We have carbon dioxide, we have polluted oxygen, and we have natural gas. Somewhere inside of my pipeline right here. I'm going to go into ventilation, and I'm going to plop a gas vent, for example, right there. And I'm going to set this thing right here to carbon dioxide, and I pump until all the carbon dioxide is gone. Then I'm going to set it to uh, polluted oxygen, pump until all the polluted oxy oxygen is gone, and then natural gas until all the natural gas is gone, and then it will stay on natural gas forever. It's basically, yeah, just like that. Dude, I was thinking to myself, be letting things a mess? No. No, no, no. Never. All right. So far, so good. Um, just got to get these guys here to actually build this stuff. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is, but if I don't set shit to nine, nothing will ever get done. It's crazy. How are we looking with this here that should be built now? And of course it isn't. For some reason, there are a few tiles missing in the middle of nowhere. That's crazy. But also just temporarily. All this here is completely temporary. We will get all those resources back. No problem at all. We are going to build the heavy watt wire down here. And just use the heavy watt wire to hook it up to our liquid pump. 
It's literally that simple. Nothing bad here. Do we actually have any way right now to get oil back in here? No, we don't. Because we have a bunch of oil sitting around here from uh, messing with the pipes um, a while ago. But we don't really have anywhere to put it. It's, um, yeah, quite interesting. But at the moment, that doesn't matter. We're concentrating on this area. So, for example, right now, I'm going to set it to unbreathable gas. I'm going to set it to carbon dioxide. And then right here, we have our gas vent. And everything that goes through this pipe right here will end up going out of this gas vent. Unless, of course, uh, the pressure is too high. So to prevent that from happening is, I'm just going to snip it off for extra safety. That's what I always do. And I would highly recommend you doing that as well. Um, unless you are building the better version, uh, you're building the high pressure gas vent. Uh, the gas vent here is very prone to every once in a while, just very, very briefly overpressuring and uh, letting something go through. So yeah, got to be careful with that. Uh, what is your opinion on the gas tank increase? I know you've said on my videos that the oil capacity is what you uh, what put you off. Uh, do you feel they're now viable? Yes, they are very viable. As a matter of fact, that is the that is one reason why this infinite storage here is now empty because uh, we're just pumping it into this gas reservoir. Okay, as a matter of fact, right at the moment it's empty because we have four of them and not enough to sustain it. Um, but yeah, with a thousand kilograms, they are now actually very viable, and we are going to use them. Um, for this hydrogen vent right here. Um, our other side right here on the left side, we have right here an infinite storage. It has a bunch of hydrogen in it already, roughly 200 kilograms per tile, which is pretty nice. But you can see I put water in here because I completely missed that there could even be the possibility of having a hydrogen vent on this planetoid. Uh, this gas here will never, ever cook my water, whereas the hydrogen vents gas will. So we cannot put the hydrogen vent gas into this infinite storage. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab two gas reservoirs and probably plop them right here. Not exactly like that, more like this. And then right here is where we're going to put the gas from our hydrogen vent. And we will see how that works. And if that works out well, then I would say it is now very viable. So because I, in the past, I would have always built an infinite storage for a hydrogen vent like this. Um, talking about real life engineering, are you an urbanist engineer like works on building pedestrians, friendly citizen, etc.? No, I am not a civil engineer in any way, shape or form. As a matter of fact, I am an engineer in the plastics industry. I'm a process engineer uh, spe specialized in injection molding. Uh, that is what I do for a living. Can you put a, uh, can put a bottle empty on the right side of the ladder to drop oil down the ladders into your oil pool? Yes, right here would be a viable spot for it. For example, we can plop one here. It doesn't really hurt anything. I just noticed that we have all this oil sitting around here. So, no, not P. Of course, we don't want to press P. We want to press O to turn our bottle emptier around. There we go. Natural gas is my favorite source of energy. I like to build sour gas boiler. Definitely. Plastic engineer, you wrench Drecos. <laughs> Exactly. That is exactly what we're doing with plastic. <laughs> oh, it's just funny. That is hilarious. Okay, right here, our pump right here is set to carbon dioxide. And right at the moment, it should be... Why are you not grabbing the carbon dioxide? You're saying you're not in gas. What? Are you drunk, Mr. Pump? What is going on here? I can clearly see you being in gas. Is anything missing here? That is connected, yes. Okay. How about I put you to natural gas and we will see if you will pump that out. Oh, disabled by automation grid. I am blind as a bat. I have it, of course. <laughs> I have it hooked up to this um, uh, atmos sensor right here. We're going to say above zero grams. There we go. And now all this here will go if it likes it or not. There we go. That is the issue here. Um, up here on the top, we have all this polluted oxygen. So we got to do polluted oxygen last. Right down here on the bottom, we have a little bit of carbon dioxide. So I'm 
going to let the dupes come back in here. Thankfully, we have all the time in the world and at 18.9 cycles to go. Uh, therefore, we are going to get rid of this thing. Hook this here back up and then set this here to natural gas. Let's see. Let's make sure it goes. And once it's gone, we are golden right around now. So molding like aircraft scale models and alike. No, I have made a lot of different things in my life from, you know, automotive parts, front and rear bumpers. I have made um, inhalers. That was the job at my last company. Um, those are devices, uh, dry powder inhalers that people with diseases like COPD use. Those are all injection molded, mass produced. We made 60 million of those a year. Um, they're unfortunately one use devices or better to say one month's use devices use them for one month and then you throw them in the garbage um, here in the states unfortunately nothing is getting recycled so there's that definitely not an optimal system but it's nothing I can do anything about it unfortunately and right at the moment I work for a company that makes uh, high precision containers for automated uh, storage solutions for companies like for example Amazon Uh, rotation on O gets me all the time. Yes, for example, for, for, for some reason, my finger always goes to P and I don't know why instead of O. Uh, just had to remember to like, just a reminder to others. Yes, if you are here, it would be really appreciated if you could like my stream. It would help me out and it doesn't cost you a dime. Thank you very much. Oh, bees on the right. Yes, I did notice the bees on the right. We do have bees. Very nice. Interesting, I never thought on how much workforce goes on working in these areas, and honestly, uh, not your blame is how the system sadly is. Pump more trash and don't recover a lot. Yeah, it is unfortunately the truth. Um, but it's with, uh, with most industries like that, right? You don't know the scale of the industry or you don't truly understand the scale of the industry until you actually work in it yourself. That's usually how it is in my experience. I mean, if you look around you right now, wherever you're sitting, most of the stuff you see around you is made out of plastic and probably 90% of that is made with the process of injection molding because it is the most cost efficient way to mass produce anything on this planet. So yeah, there's that. Ease rotation in RimWorld. That would make a hell of a lot more sense because I have my fingers on WASD anyway. So yeah. <laughs> I have to watch an extra speed because it didn't start. Oof. That really sucks, Jay. You haven't missed a hell of a lot, though. That is uh, the bright side here. All right, now we have all this here pumped out. Are we through here? Yes. We are dormant down there. Okay. We need to put our attention to this event on the bottom. That is now highly important because otherwise we will run into a bunch of problems right here. I'm going to set this thing here to polluted oxygen. That is actually in breathable gas. And now we're going to empty this entire thing here out. No problem at all. Okay, for the hydrogen vent, how do we tame something like this? Well, my favorite way, and I hope I remember how to properly build it. It has been a couple of days here. Um, we need um, metal tiles and metal tiles with a relatively high thermal conductivity and a relatively low thermal mass. So let's see what we have. You have 60 and 30 and a half. That's not too shabby. You have 55 and 44. Don't want that. Um, we have aluminum here at 205 and 91, so aluminum here would be good, uh, but I think that's overkill. Yeah, this thing here is at 271.5 grams a second. That thing here is pretty weak, actually. Usually I'm used to seeing over 300 here, so... Uh, let's do it with copper. With copper, we're going to come in here and we're going to build it all the way here to the top. We're going to build it all the way over and then... Um, let me think about it. We need one, two, three, four, five, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to build us something that looks like this here for right now. That should be okay. And once we have this here, we are going to put the entire thing here into a layer of insulated tiles. That is what we want. 
something that looks at the end of the day like this here. There we go. And just to make sure, let me turn down the speed here for a second. We are going to go into uh, power and we're going to grab us a where you are. Steam turbine. So no, turns out we need to go one further. There we go. Going to plop in one more. Going to come down with it. There we have it. That is the appropriate size. Just large enough for two steam turbines. Even though I'm pretty sure that two steam turbines are complete overkill for what we are doing here. Because this hydrogen vent here is so incredibly weak. But yeah. Can't help with that. This here we will not need that high. There we go. Gonna build a ladder up here. Gonna build a ladder up here. Gonna dig a few of those things here out. Yeah, screw it. We're just going to go four high all the way across, all the way into here. And now the dupes should have plenty to do for right this second. Um, oxygen not included. Civ 6 and RimWorld. They have claimed far too much time of my life. <laughs> I haven't really played RimWorld, uh, but I do I have played Civ 6 and I definitely enjoy Civ 6 a lot. Uh, how much recycled plastic gets used by the plants you work at? We use quite a lot of recycled plastic. Um, it really depends on. At my current company, because we make containers, storage containers, it isn't really that important, you know. They are high precision because they're being used at the end of the day, not by humans, but by um, automated systems. So they have to be precise. But it's not like um, a medical device. In medical devices, uh, we used 0% recycled plastics. Just to make sure, you know, it is being used by humans for medical reasons. Um, so the regulations are a hell of a lot higher for that kind of thing. Uh, you know, in the States, for example, the FDA had their fingers in the game. So we have to be very careful about what we are using um, that we are within the regulation. So we used nothing recycled at my last plant for those 60 million inhalers a year. See, I'm old school Dwarf Fortress player before they released the easy version on Steam. Always felt Rumble was trying to be easy Dwarf Fortress in the beginning. I've never played Dwarf Fortress either, not gonna lie. I've heard of it, but I've never even seen like a picture of it. And Kionis is here. I'm late, my bad. You're totally fine. Thank you very much for joining. Kionis, how are you doing? What if you found old school Dwarf Fortress easy? I take my hat off to you. Yeah, I have to take a look at this game. Huh. All right, come on, dupes. Uh, let's dig her out. All of it, please. We just need to get up there. We need to get in here, get rid of all of it. How are we looking in here now? We are still pumping out polluted oxygen. And apparently we have some uh, carbon dioxide here. Let's get rid of that stuff real quick. There we go. And then back to the polluted oxygen. As a matter of fact, the normal filter may have been easier. <laughs> Thankfully, we have 20 freaking uh, cycles without an issue. Let's turn the speed back up here. There we go. High precision plastics like Legos? Uh, no, we are talking about dimensions here. Like, uh, for example, we have boxes that are literally 400 by 600 millimeters wide and the tolerance is 0 0.2 millimeters plus two uh, plus minus. Uh, that kind of high precision. Because they have to fit in those high precision machines. Um, yeah, that is nothing for that uh, inhaler I was talking about earlier. Uh, the dimensions were plus minus 0 0.1 millimeters. <sighs> you never know what's in these recycled plastics as softness, right? Might release some nasty gases. That is uh, one reason. Um, yes, you don't ever know what they actually sell you. That is 100% correct. There are a lot of additives that can be in plastics. Um, so yeah, you do have to be careful with that. There's absolutely no, absolutely no question. A picture like implants and prostatics. Yeah, that is definitely one use case. Nothing I have personally ever done. Uh, like I said, we had inhalers. We had um, injectors where the only metal piece was the actual needle. But yeah, the field is extremely broad. 
Yeah, with the filter external from the pump, the pump always grabs some sort of gas and chucks it out. Yeah, that would have been an easier solution. You are correct. Now I need to do it manually, which is an issue. I would really like to concentrate on getting this here done because I don't know how long this thing here is dormant. As a matter of fact, um, you should probably figure it out ASAP. So let's make sure we get an understanding of uh, how much longer we have for this hydrogen vent. If it's going to come back online in two cycles, we have a problem. So yeah. Uh, from a guy who knows nothing about plastics, is there a significant difference in handling prime stock versus recycled stock? Yes, there is. Um, it really depends on, right? So plastics are actually called, as an engineer, I would never call them plastics. I would call them polymers. And I tell uh, the technicians and the other engineers at work the same thing constantly. Do call them polymers because that is the word for it and not plastic. <laughs> um, polymers means there are chains of molecules, a very, very long chains of molecules. So every time your plastic is being heated, um, those chains are getting more and more destroyed. Degraded is the word for that. Um, the more degraded they are, the worse it gets to reuse it. Therefore, the more often the plastic has been recycled, the more difficult it becomes to reuse it for an application like injection molding. And there's really no good way or at least no cheap way to determine without sending it off to a lab how degraded your plastic molecular chains are. Uh, therefore, it's like tossing a coin. Sometimes you get some really good stuff that has only been reused once or twice. Sometimes you get some really bad stuff that has been reused 20 times. You just don't know. Yeah. Okay. Over here on the right side, most of this stuff here is now built. That is a good thing. Uh, the only problem is right here. We are six tiles long. That is okay. We need more metal tiles that are coming along the inside right here. A mechanized airlock right there. And then we need a box that looks something like this. And there we go. Let's come up here. And up there. That should get the job done. Of course, we are not actually going to build those two tiles right here. We still need to get in and out. But this here is the general thing of how this entire box here should look like. And just so in case you guys are wondering, it is nine tiles wide from the left to the right, starting at the very left side of the neutronium right here. Uh, Lagers are 0 point, uh, uh, 0.02 millimeters, but most actually come down with 0 0.001 millimeters. Absolutely. I mean, if they don't fit together, kids are not going to have fun, right? <laughs> Interesting. Very similar to paper, where the fiber length degrades by recycling in prime stock is needed for structural integrity. Yeah. Yeah, that is 100% correct. That is exactly how it is. That is exactly how that goes. All right, dupes. Down here on the bottom, we need some insulation as well, or we're not going to have a fun time. Therefore, uh, let's dig a too high area all the way through here. Actually, let's make it three high because it will be too high once we put in another layer. The layer's too far. We only needed two right there. Perfect. Even though right here we have neutronium, so we wouldn't need it right there. But just for completeness sake, I like to put it in like that. In case you're wondering. Alright, very, very good. Slowly but steadily. Really looking forward to see this hydrogen vent here. How much does it have left? And what is going on in here, oh, of course. That is now going to be a biatch. I'm not going to lie about that either. We need to put an insulated tile right here or there is always going to be carbon dioxide down there and we will never get it out of there. Um, so let's make sure we get a tile right here to solve that problem. Is it okay if I use three steam turbines on iron volcano? Uh, I mean, yes. <laughs> the truth is you can use as many as you want. The question is just how efficient it is, right? Um, because... Most likely on an iron volcano, those three will never ever run at full output. Um, because they are cooling down the water too much that, are, that is coming back in. You can try it. 
Uh, but I found that usually for everything, two of them is more than enough um, to keep it up. Uh, sadly, I gotta go, Peter. Might be back before you're done, but if not, be awesome. <laughs> well, I appreciate you checking in, Sin, um, as usual. And of course, say hello if you happen to make it back. I'm planning to be here for a total of like roughly five hours or so. Uh, so there's plenty of time. But if not, I hope you have a good one, Sin. All right, come on. Let's get this uh, hydrogen vent here done, please. That would be really nice. We can directly put in some automation here. The automation is pretty simple, what we are going to build. We just need an AND gate. We're going to plop the AND gate right here. The other way around, though. Yeah. Come on, cancel the build. Copy it. This way around is what we need. Then we need a, a thermal sensor. We need an atmo sensor. We need some automation wire that just plops into here. And... That is already it. That's the entire automation we need to tame this thing. Literally this simple. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that two steam turbines up here are complete overkill. I'm going to get uh, rid of one. I need to get rid of one anyway because we need to fill this area here with some kind of liquid. So we're going to do that as well. And then... Um, let's see. 22.1 cycles. We have all the time in the world. All the time in the world. Very, very good. Let's set it back to carbon dioxide. And now we should be able to get all the carbon dioxide out and only have polluted oxygen left over. Very good. You right here, though, of course. <laughs> I may have connected this here a little bit prematurely. Because now it's always locked. Come on. Get rid of it. There we go. Uh, what project or mechanic would you say is or has been the most difficult challenge you personally find with an oxygen not included safe? I mean, there are a lot of difficult ones and, you know, usually you don't just, um, um, you usually don't just, um, um, you know, copy and paste something in. Like, for example, where are we at? Down here. We have our iron volcano. To tame this thing here is very easy, and you can in, in 99 out of 100 cases just copy in your blueprint and call it a day. But if you do something like a sour gas boiler, or you mess around with actual volcanoes, dependent on where they are on the map, um, you may not be able to just copy and paste something in. You have to come up with something yourself, right? Um, those are usually the most fun ones and also the most challenging ones. Um, like we were talking about the polluted water boiler. I was pretty sure I built that thing um, in my um, LP1, the Let's Play 1 version. I came up with that thing completely from scratch, and I think I failed like three or four times to actually make it work. That was challenging, but it was also really fun, because I've never built anything like it. But at the same time, um, you know, it worked in the end, and, you know, this whole trial and error thing is the most challenging, but also the most fun thing in the game as well as in real life. Uh, we have no more carbon dioxide in here, so now we can set it up to polluted oxygen and get rid of all of that. Very good. Um, I got bored and did the mass at 200 degrees Celsius. Steam, two steam turbines can delete 1.755 million DTUs per second. <laughs> I would say that's a lot of wood. A hell of a lot of wood. Is this pump with filter? Uh, yeah. Is this pump with filter a mod? If so, uh, what is it called? Yes, it is a mod, and it's called Smart Pumps. It adds two pumps. It adds a filtered gas pump, and it adds a filtered liquid pump right here. And the only difference is uh, that it needs its normal amount of refined metals plus some plastic, and then it has a filter on it. Um, in the research, it has to be researched in valve miniaturization right here in this area. So you do need uh, the level 3 applied sciences research to get to them. Uh, that's where it's going to be added with the mod. Pretty straightforward. I fucked up the, I fuck up the spawn frequently. In the end, I frequently, uh, frequently add a gas filter. Really? 
uh, like this kind of spawn right here. Hmm, I wonder what you're doing though, because this one here is actually, without trying to like bash you or anything, uh, pretty straightforward. Once you turn it on, like the hydrogen just settles on the top and the oxygen goes to the bottom. So I'm not entirely sure. Uh, you must have, you must be building your gas pump in the wrong location or something along those lines, probably. That's the first thing that I can think of. How about you open this here up, guys, so we can come back in here and actually finish this? So wouldn't that be nice? All right, there we go. Let's pick all this stuff up and let's go. I think I built mine with a space like the old setups had. Um, like right here, you built it one lower. Yeah, I was just told about that in, in the stream where I built it, that this here is supposed to be better. So I was like, okay, cool, let's try it and see what happens. I'm not entirely sure how that makes a difference. But yeah. Here we are. It works, so apparently it's good. Yeah, thinking about screenshotting yours? Sure. Go right ahead, sir. <laughs> be my guest. <laughs> And I do have an entire tutorial on these here. I've actually made two videos about it. One where I compare this version here to a Hydra. And another one how to actually build this here. This thing uh, right here is called a um, Full Rodriguez. Um, it's not actually a spam in its um, original, you know, design. Because a spam, S-P-O-M, stands for Self-Powered Oxygen Machine. Um, it's clearly not self-powered. Because um, I personally prefer to have my power go into some kind of centralized area and then power the entire base from there. Um, but that's personal preference. It could be self-powered the way it is right there. Uh, have you considered fixing a submitted doomed colony? That is a good idea, actually. That is a really good idea. I'm wondering, do you guys have any doomed colonies? I see Venom is here. Guys, say hello to my girlfriend. He has just joined the chat. Um, yeah, Kyle, that is actually a good idea. Have you considered fixing a submitted doomed colony? Do you guys have anything like that laying around and would consider submitting it? If you have something like that, that would be a, a cool idea to just take a look and see um, who is doing that for City Skylines and the traffic? Uh, Biffa plays indie games. That's right. I don't know if you guys know Biffa. Um, I've always enjoyed his videos where uh, his viewers are submitting um, um, City Skylines maps where the traffic is completely wrecked and he just goes in and fixes up the traffic. I could do something similar with Oxygen not included, I guess. Duck number 27 cough. I would never have a doomed colony. Frozen hair has two doomed colonies. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I never have doomed colonies. I tend to quit the first time I run into any problem I can't easily solve. Oh, come on. You got it. Just gotta have a little bit of self-confidence. You have a little bit of a problem, try to fix it. It's, there's barely ever a better feeling than having something that uh, you think you can't fix, but then in the end, walk away unscathed. If you remember the beginning of uh, this uh, stream right here, we died several times almost from not having any food, and we still managed it without losing a dupe. And you know, did I fuck that up? Oh yes, I did. There is absolutely no question about it. But... Even though it was something so simple as having our dupes die from food. Um, overcoming that is a good feeling. It's just the truth of it. I think Francis did one. Really? Francis John did, did something like that for Oxygen Not Included? I haven't watched him in a long, long, long time. We're talking years here. So, I wouldn't know. But it's cool though. That's, that's, a great, uh, that's still a great idea. Luma did one? Really? Uh, Luma is a good friend of mine, actually. Um, 
uh, Luma and I talk a lot. I must have missed that video, because I usually do watch his content. If it's fun, his traffic fixes are the perfect listening episodes. That's what I usually do. You know, just do something else on a computer and have it running on a second screen. <laughs> That's what I usually do. Exactly that. Okay, so this one here is now all cleaned up. So what we need now is in a plumbing, not in plumbing, in ventilation. We need a gas pump. We don't need to make it out of steel, but I am going to make it out of steel anyway. Again, absolutely not required if this here works the way I expect it to work. Um, it's just a safety mechanism in case anything should ever go wrong for whatever reason. The gas pump is not going to die immediately because getting back in here is going to be a pain. So I try to avoid that from the get go. In ventilation, we need insulated gas pipes and the gas pipes have to come over here somehow. How are we going to do that? We figure out later. But in the beginning, we're just going to put it down here. In F2, we will need some power. Um, also not entirely sure where our power source is going to come from, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, I am going to connect this here to power, but I'm probably going to snip it off later because I usually like to have a little bit of a delay in here. But depending on how we're going to do it, um, yeah, it's better to have this here connected. We can always snip it. So let's start off with snipping. Or better to say, let's start off with it being connected and then go from there. Very nice. And then the automation overlay. Um, we're going to connect this. We're going to connect this. Uh, we should not have to come back in here ever again. So that's perfectly fine. And we can just change it with our sensors right here as well. Then up here on the top, what we are going to do is I am going to put on the right side here airflow tiles. Something like this here. Uh, because all this gas here has to escape somewhere and then just somewhere on the top. Um, preferably, does it make a difference? Probably not. We will have one tile of garbage in there probably. Somewhere right here. We're going to fill it with, uh, with uh, water and with polluted water. Very, very simple. Speaking of that, need to be careful. <laughs> yeah, need to be very careful because we are about to overfill this thing here. Good grief, almost forgot about it. Uh, down here on the bottom, how much more do we have? I may have to stop this here, as a matter of fact, because this polluted ice here is not melting as fast as I would like it to. I thought that the polluted water alone will take care of it, but now the mass is so low that the polluted ice is actually cooling down our polluted water and not the polluted water heating up our polluted ice. So let's uh, quit here for a hot minute. And then let's dig through here, dig through there. And then we may have to put a liquid tepidizer in here just very, very briefly. Shouldn't be a big deal at all. Um, then right here, we're just going to come over so we can dig out a few more things here. Uh, that is has nothing to do with the polluted ice or the polluted water down here, but might as well while we are here. And then up here on the top, I'm pretty sure I said oh, we need to do something like this here. Um, for right now, that's totally fine. And then slowly but steadily, we need to connect this here back up, heat up this polluted water right here, and then um, we should be able to get all this water here exchanged properly. All right, very good. That's a good start. Um, I think so, like a month or so back, if even that. Really? And now you're sitting on a quarter million calories. Yep, look at this. <laughs> uh, Luma is a great guy chatted with me on your discord one day he is a great guy um, I have played with him a bunch of games like for example we just played Helldivers 2 together not that long ago <laughs> and now I know what the automation of the uh, of the door is for uh, this door right here yes there is a good reason we are about to use it for something actually useful <laughs> Uh, I couldn't find the Luma Plays version. I couldn't find the Echo Ridge either. I could be misremembering who it was. I know it wasn't my favorite only streamer because that's you. Oh, Jay, come on now. Don't make me blush over here. How about moving the polluted ice to the hydrogen steam chamber? Could do that. Definitely an option. Uh, forget the tepidizer. Metal refinery. Also a good call. And let me know if uh, I'm backsitting too much. No, you're totally fine. I'm always open for suggestions. That's the nice thing about a game like Oxygen not included, right? Um, it's kind of like uh, programming. 
I don't know if you have any if you have any programmers here, but if you give these same programming problems to ten different programmers, you will get ten different solutions that all do the same. But if you look at the actual code, they all look very, very different. And I think it's the same for oxygen not included. There is not only one way to solve any one problem. There are many, many different ways. Uh, they, one of, some of them may be more efficient than others. That's very true. But their end result is always the same as long as it works. And that's the nice thing for me about oxygen not included. WKHS, I'm a full stack programmer. Then I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Always open for suggestions, but I can't talk him into using passive filters. <laughs> well, the reason for that is that I only use passive filters like mechanical filters if I use a filter for anything long term. And like, for example, filtering this stuff out right here, that is not long term, that's short term. Um, for short term, I just throw some power at it and call it a day because it's just much, much simpler. <laughs> I'm an economist. Ask 10 e economists about something and you'll get 10 different answers. But is the outcome always the same? And are they all right? That's the question. I'm a coder. Biggest project was a flight control program in Space Engineers. Really? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man, I just fired up Oni and it reset all my game options. Thankfully, the game doesn't have too many options. That's the nice thing. No, no. Passive filters are filters you build out of a valve and bridges. They use zero energy. Yes, I know. Uh, I do have actually... I think the last actual tutorial that I made was about mechanical filters. Or passive filters, as you call them. Um, I know exactly how they work. But usually you have to prime them. And for priming... It's just a lot more work than just throwing a filter at it and spending 120 watts of power for three minutes. That's where I'm coming from. I think we can close this here up. Do we have now everything? Um, we have our conductive wire. That's correct. We have our insulated gas pipe. That is also correct. Um, we have our atmosensor, thermosensor, the ant gate. We have our automation going in here. That is all 100% correct. And then a bottle emptier. That is all we need. Now we just need a tiny little bit of water in here, and we're just going to do that with polluted water, and we're going to do it with water. Um, all we need is literally just a couple hundred kilograms. Not that much at all. Um, again, this thing here is extremely weak, and we still have 18 cycles, so it's not that big a deal at all. This one here we can close up now. Um, very good. The only thing is now we have right here crude oil and I built this piece of sedimentary rock here into my um, um, liquid lock right here, which is going to be an issue. But thankfully, it's not a big one. We still have 11 cycles, so yeah, no problem whatsoever. Uh, let's get this here going. Ask 10 different stakeholders for a design brief and get 50 different headaches. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Uh, electrical engineers kind of program, but yes, very true. Yeah, so process engineering is my actual job, right? But I did teach myself a lot of uh, industrial programming like uh, PLCs, six axis robots, linear robots. Um, I taught myself uh, Swift, which is the programming language for uh, iPhones, just because I own an iPhone and I always wanted to know what's going on, you know, behind the screen. So I would never say that I'm a programmer per se, but I do have the basic knowledge about how uh, pro uh, programming and also um, object based programming is working. Um, that's where that analogy is coming from. Very good. Our water is heating up. Our liquid tepidizer is running uh, like a champ. Our water is getting hotter. Very, very good. Currently, we are just pumping it in a loop. We wouldn't even have to do that, as a matter of fact. Let's just uh, pause this here for a second. Let's heat it up first. And once we heat it up, then we are going to waste the power in our liquid pump. There we go. 
All this here is now done. Where do we get power from? Uh, let's go back to that question real quick. We need two things. We need this heavy water wire right here to come all the way along here and into there. That's the first thing that we need. Um, we need a ladder to come back into here because there is one thing I forgot. Of course, um, our steam turbine has an output and that also, well, has to go somewhere. Surprise, surprise. So let's grab a liquid pipe and let's just come along here. May even be overkill to build not an insulated pipe because it's already so cold in the first place. So we will see how that goes. And then somewhere like here, we're going to need a liquid vent. There we go. And then we can build something very similar for the second one. But we can do all of that for the, from the outside. Again, I don't even know if we need a second one. We're going to try it with one first, and then we're going to go from there. You do have to prime them. I usually start them from a source with a predominant element and can prime them 90% of the time just by starting the pump. Got to watch carefully at first, though. Yeah, no, that's exactly the thing. Um, if you have a source, what you need re re relatively close by, it's not that it's not hard. Don't understand me wrong here, right? It's not difficult. It's just much, much easier to just throw an electrical filter on it or a filter gas pump um, for something very short term. That's usually I only use mechanical filters when I really want to do something long term and I use it over and over and over again. Which we really haven't had the case yet. There is nothing here that needs to be filtered over and over again. Um, eventually, I'm sure in the later game, we will get to mechanical filters. But right at the moment, it's just a waste, in my opinion. Especially since we have so much power that we don't even know what to do with it. Uh, smart pipes can use more power. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's like a config file that you can change uh, for the mod. But I haven't done anything like it. It just uses a little bit of plastic. I feel like that is a fair exchange for using a smart pump compared to a normal pump. And um, yeah, leave it at that. Okay, we need to get rid of this oil right here. So we're going to introduce a little bit more gas into this area, which truly sucks. That was my mistake. I should have built the liquid lock one tile lower and we would have never had the problem. But clearly I didn't pay attention. So there's that. I could... Could I fix this? Um... Let's see, if I build, I don't think I can fix this now, there's no way to fix it, unless, let's see, an F4, actually it is currently still fixed. Let's see, if I go ahead and I dig this here up, right at the moment there should be no gas being able to enter as long as we have this blob of crude oil right here, so that may actually work out after all. Because this blob here is currently blocking everything. Uh, what are you doing with the overproduced hydrogen from the spawn now? Uh, currently nothing. Currently it's sitting in here. Currently sitting at 261 kilograms per tile for a total of 8 tiles in this little infinite storage. Um, yeah, when I mean, this pipe here is ever full, this insulated gas pipe, it will fill up the infinite storage. Um, and as soon as this hydrogen vent here is online, that should happen a hell of a lot more. That blob is the savior of the stream. <laughs> Yes, exactly. There we go. Just going to plop this in. Turn this off. Put this one here to natural gas. Uh, we could even replace the entire pump and get my 25 kilograms worth of plastic back. But is it really worth it? Probably not. Probably not. All right. This is now properly boxed up. Uh, this one here can be set back to above, let's say, 500 grams. Only if you have 500 grams in here, we're going to pump it out. It's made out of steel. Temperature is 150. The overheat temperature is 275 because it's made out of steel. So we will never, ever have a problem here. Very good. All right. And then last but not least down here, is that all done now? Yes, it looks like it is. And the plastic here, why are you not being picked up? Uh, do we have nowhere to store it? Did I never set our infinite storage here to plastic? Uh, let's see. Yep, that's the problem. And now it's a problem. That is in the past. Very nice. Now we just need to set this bottle emptier here to water. We're just going to start out with water. I'm going to enable auto bottle number 9. And I don't even think we have anywhere 
looted water that we can get out of here. Doesn't look like it. So we need to build us something in here because this one is nice and warm. It doesn't just freeze our water. Uh, need to be careful with that as well. Of course, temperatures are always an issue. The only problem is I have nowhere to really build it. I need to get rid of this piece of ladder right here. There we go. No need to have this one here anyway. That's better. Now in plumbing, we can grab us a pitcher pump and just smack it right around here. And now we can, or we will have access to polluted water from this tank right here. Very nice. Also, the only other problem is, of course, our metal tiles right here are pretty freaking cold because they were exposed to the outside world. Uh, so I may have to start with polluted water after all and hope that I can heat up these metal tiles here just a little bit to something more reasonable. So let's do precisely that. That should be okay. My sweeper ladder is now moving sedimentary rock. It's going to take forever to move everything. Your sweeper ladder? Not entirely sure what that means. Uh, I do a lot of my current colony to draw out CO2 for my molten slickster wrench. Yeah, see, that is, for example, a perfect use case right there for a uh, mechanical filter. Because you're doing it over and over and over again, so it makes perfect sense to save yourself uh, the... Um, the issues with, uh, with the, not the issues, but the waste of power over time. What are the airflow tiles for? The airflow tiles are for because right in here we have all this gas and all this gas here has to go somewhere. I probably will need another airflow tile right here as a matter of fact, because all that stuff here will get trapped and I want to have one layer of uh, polluted water and one layer of water. Um, that is the general idea here. The metal tiles are now nicely heated up. That's very good. Just need to make sure that we get the right amount of water in here. Let's take a look here. We have 20 tiles. Um, for 20 tiles, I want about, what, 15 kilograms of steam per tile or so. It doesn't really matter too much, to be quite honest. Let's switch it over to water. Let's put a little bit of water in here. We do have water. Yes, we do have water access. Very good. Sweeper and auto dispenser moving items across and closer to the base. Ah, I see what you're saying. And yes, of course, because I built the bottle emptier on this side instead of the other side, we will have a trap up here. So we can see we have natural gas, carbon dioxide, polluted oxygen, and chlorine gas. Four different gases in here. Um, those are four tiles that now can never ever go anywhere. No matter how much water we put in here, no matter how much polluted water, we will never be able to get this gas out of here. Because, as we know, uh, only one element can occupy one tile at any given time. Therefore, it will forever look like this. Unless we build an airflow tile right here, and then we can push those gases out and fill the rest with uh, liquids. Uh, yeah, that's what the airflow tiles are for. My dupes always get stuck in a cycle of pulling sinks from the infinite storage and repositioning them in the dispenser. Uh, that can happen if... You don't set your automatic dispenser to sweep only. You need to set them to sweep only. And then, of course, you can't do that. Because if you do that, this here happens. Right? Now they're in an infinite loop. And now they stop. <laughs> so, yeah, you need to be careful with that. Sweep only. Uh, that's the only way to do it. And now they will just pick up the stuff here on the top and put it into right there. Uh, so yeah, that's how the uh, infinite storage works. Can we stop putting water in there? That's already way too much anyway. Uh, we're just going to let this here finish. And good. Deconstructed. And now we can see it in F4. The entire top layer is now water. And the entire bottom layer is now polluted water. Now we have what we're looking for. And now we can just replace those tiles here. Once again, with insulated tiles. So... Of course, the steam is supposed to stay in there. We don't want it anywhere else. Uh, let's cancel this here real quick. We're going to get rid of the ladder as well while we're here. Not with G. We want to deconstruct it, not dig up the ladder. Probably not going to have much fun with doing that. Or you can add a weight tile to stop it. Yes, of course, that is another way to do it. But yeah, there we go. 
There we go. And one more time. The dudes can't reach this here, is that correct? Oh, they can. Alright, good. I can't believe I forgot that. Ah, you're totally fine. Shit happens. It's that simple, you know? Here's a seat that's a cool so that's guys are in the starting biome. Uh, what um, biome is that? Is that a uh, rhyme? Because I actually do believe I have one around here somewhere. Didn't we find one? Ah, God, we have too many geysers going on here. No, that's infectious polluted oxygen. What do we have here? You are a volcano. I can actually see that we dug into you a little bit. But we had one. I could have sworn somewhere around here. Is it you? Yes, we actually have a cool slush geyser right here. We just haven't done anything with it yet. We just uh, built a ladder all the way up to it. <laughs> but seriously, though, can anybody remember that we ever found a hydrogen vent? Like, finding this thing here completely flabbergasted me. I had no clue that we would find something like that. Okay, now to the sensors right here. I usually set this thing here to something like send a green signal if um, above 1000 grams, for example, would be okay. And then the temperature, send a green signal if the temperature is below 150 degrees Celsius. Um, so that should be pretty simple and straightforward right here. So we are saying if we have gas in here, of more than 500 grams and if the temperature is below 150 grams we are pumping of course for this to work we need to have our gas pump right here first create a vacuum and we have another 15 cycles time to do precisely that so let's see if we can find us a power source here in power we will need a something like a we don't even need a large power transformer we can just work with a normal one um Let's put us one right here on the edge. Obviously, not exactly like this. We need to come up here and then through there. And then with this conductive wire, we're just going to connect it to there. Thankfully, we are on Rhyme. One of the benefits of Rhyme is, of course, that it's bloody cold here. So having this thing here heat up the environment is really not a problem. It's actually a good thing and it's not going to produce enough to do anything really anyway. So... In F2, that is now correct. Now we're going to give it some power, some just like this here. And then F7, and we have, of course, our output pipe right here. Um, let's see with our output pipe. Let's come up with a plan here. How do we get over here? What is the easiest, simplest, and the fastest way to do that? Probably to come along here, come into there, come through here, come all the way through here, and then come up here up there, into here, over and up, uh, then gas bridges, we need one right here, one right here, one right there, and then an insulated pipe, probably just straight into here, there we go, should be that simple, I would assume, without a big problem, we can see actually this here is all backed up now, which means that most of our gas here is actually going into our infinite storage. Um, not entirely sure why that is. Um, smart battery. Why are these here running and these here are not? You are set to the exact same setting. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Not entirely sure. We have 18.9 kilojoules in here and 18 kilojoules in here. That would be the reason why, but I don't have a reason why. But yeah. Obviously, we can't build this here because we can't reach it. Therefore, we will need a ladder. And then here on the bottom, we're just going to dig in too wide uh, so the dupes can come down here with the ladder all the way and then build this area out right here and we should be good yeah, I can connect to input and to outputs it will not move gas from one to the other uh, how do you mean croc I'm coming over here, I'm coming up there, I'm going to the input, from the output to the input. And then of course, yeah, right here, I forgot to connect that. That should work. Um, that should work exactly as it should. 
Unless I missed something completely. <laughs> am, I, am I blind again? Help me out here, guys. What am I missing? <laughs> of course, we need to be slightly careful here. I need to snip it off before we put some garbage in there. Because right at the moment, we are still in the phase where we need to empty this thing here out. This time I'm just going to go with high pressure so I don't have to worry about it. Because we're just going to pump everything out. Whatever's in here, um, hydrogen vent is going to be very uh, nicely um, um, just going into the atmosphere. We just got to get rid of it. And for that, we're just going to say above zero grams, which will always be the case until we have a vacuum to keep this door here open. That's the general idea. Um, yay, li <laughs> yay, live stream. Hey, everyone. Elizabeth, oh, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for joining. Truly appreciate it. Connect two whites and two greens, not like you have now. Oh, you want to have them connected? Yeah, yeah. You want to have them connected in parallel instead of in series. But that is totally fine, though. I mean, it doesn't really make a difference. Or am I missing something? I'm filling this one here. It will immediately... I'm not filling this one here. That's the wrong thing. I'm using this one here basically as a throughput. I'm coming in here. I'm filling this one here up first. And when this one here is full, I'm filling up this one. If I do it in parallel, it just fills them both at the same time. And I'm emptying them at the same time. Is there a benefit or a downside to one or the other that I'm missing here? It will, fir uh, it will fill first and then go to second, then deplete first and then second. Yeah. It will work in series, yeah. Like, both versions should work. I just don't see a benefit over one or the other. Nope. First and second pipe will be blocked. You know what? Screw it. We're going to try. We're going to see. We're going to try both versions. We're going to wait those 14 cycles. Obviously, we're going to do something else and not just sit here. <laughs> but um, I'm going to leave it as it is. We're going to wait until this thing here erupts. We're going to see if it even works in the first place. What I built here, that would be a good thing to check out. Um, then I'm going to, um, in a not a, not in the next dormant phase, but just in between, reconnect them the way you were saying, and then we will see what the difference is. How about that? We're going to try both versions, and we will see exactly what happens. You know, every once in a while, if you don't know exactly uh, what the problem is, um, trial and error. It's a good thing. Uh, croc means I think that there is a non-flow specified pipe length, which will almost always pick the wrong direction. Will almost always pick the wrong direction. There is nothing here that should have any way to pick the wrong direction. Unless you mean right here. Even right here, I have a bridge right there. Uh, which has a output, so it should always pick this direction, because here I have the inputs connected. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I don't see a problem here. <laughs> but again, we're going to try it. We're going to try both versions, and we will see what happens. And we will see if there is a benefit of, from one over the other. Because I'm curious myself. I really am. Uh... Pipe will be blocked. Well, the very first thing that I'm going to do is before I do anything else is I'm going to put two more in. Because it definitely can't hurt to have more now that we have this other thing coming online. Um, better too much than not enough. So let's put two more in here. And then an F7. Let's see. We are going to connect this one here up. And then right here we are going to connect... Are we going to do this? Probably like this here. That's the best way to do it. Everything should be on the right side of this connection. Should work like a charm. The parallel connection actually wastes less processing power as the gas has to run through less pipes. And to fill the second one, it doesn't have to enter exit the first tank using less processing. Are we talking about CPU power here? Because if that's the case, I'm not too worried about it. 
thankfully, I'm fortunate enough to have a computer that's more than enough to handle the end game of this game. <laughs> okay, so that is the thing here. So you are talking about processing power. Okay, and it, that does make sense. Um, of course, those kind of optimizations for CPU power are uh, highly important if you don't have a beefed up computer. There is no denying it. Um, I was not always as fortunate as I am right this very moment. Um, so I know how it is to um, uh, play on a low-end computer and trying to run its, its cycle 1500 and uh, having it stutter along at 15 frames per second. But usually it's less the gas movement, it's more the dupe and critter movement that is usually causing most of your CPU issues. Not only uh, more visible how much you have of the gas. Again, we're gonna try it. But first, let's pump all the shit here out. There we go. And we still have 12.9 cycles left over. But speaking of it, um, what about my fossils? We haven't done anything about that, have we now? So, let's come through here. And uh, let's just await our fancy uh, corner building method. Put some tiles in here so we actually make it to this fossil. And then up here on the top, I want to get this fossil here as well. We can't come over here, can't come all the way through there. So let's just dig our way into this general direction here as well. And then down here, we need to be a little bit more careful because we have a spore kit. It's still not going to be the end of the world though. Uh, we're just going to go somewhere to right there. And we're going to put another liquid lock here just to be safe. Um, I don't want those zombie spores here all over my base. Uh, not that it's a big problem or anything, but might as well avoid it if we can. Is there anything else going on here heat-wise? 50 degrees? Yeah, that's not a big deal. Theoretically, at the moment I open up this abyssalite right here, the outside cold should be coming in and probably kill off those zombie spores here all by themselves. Probably I don't have to do anything else. Potato gang. One will be uh, one will be always full when another will be working. My computer was built by me on a budget eight years ago, and it doesn't seem to struggle too much with oxygen, not including except saving. I really need to tile up or vacuum out more of my base. I think that saves. Yeah, the, the, I mean, if you vacuum out like most of your base, like um, a lot of people do, they just have a tiny little area. Um, where they have their dupes living and everything else is a complete vacuum, that will definitely help save you some CPU power. And by the way, kudos to you for building your computer myself. Uh, not myself, yourself, of course. Um, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people either play pure consoles or um, have buying a pre-built system. I have built every one of my computers since I'm 11 years old myself. And there's nothing more satisfying, in my opinion, than to buy a computer... Uh, buy the parts for a computer and put it together yourself and then turning it on the first time and actually see a, uh, a BIOS boot up. <laughs> Still to this day, uh, over 22 years later after I built my first PC, it's still a very satisfying feeling to build one from scratch. Fifty frames. You're being way too optimistic about my potato PC. <laughs> I said fifteen, not fifty. Fifteen. <laughs> it's as good as Lord of the Rings, I believe. I should turn it into a movie. Doesn't even need to be conductive via any steam engine for only three hundred sixty watts. Yeah, I know. I know. Doesn't have to be. But usually, I just build everything out of conductive once I get to this point. It's just a habit. But yeah, no, we don't need anything right here. The only thing we are powering is this gas pump and potentially this mechanized airlock, and that is the extent of it. You're 100% correct. I got the fossils unlocked in my seat. I don't know the benefit of the unlimited fossil, though. I need to go in the wiki, but I like trying to build and figure stuff out. I don't know. I have never done it. I, I literally have never done it. We are very close to figuring it out, I guess, and we will see exactly what the hell is going on with this stuff. Um... It's another case of trial and error right here. 
Um, also built my computer myself and then upgraded when I got some deals. Smoky, that's awesome. That is the way to do it, in my opinion. I just, again, I'm a huge PC gamer. I do have a PS5 that I barely ever use. I do have a Switch that I barely ever use, but the PC is the non plus ultra. Uh, it just is what it is. I just can't help it. Especially the accomplishment of having that thing sitting right beside me that I built from scratch with my own hands. It's just nice. My first was a 386 TX40. Good grief. <laughs> I used to do it back in the 90s with help. I thought it would be easier now, and it was until it wasn't. <laughs> I don't want to do it again. I just don't have the knowledge to make the right choices. I mean, there's a really good guide on there. Um, I don't know if you uh, watch Linus Tech Tips. Uh, for example, they have a one and a half hour video that explains every potential step that you could ever need. Um, if you ever want to build one, I can highly recommend they are a guide. Even though I know how to do it myself, I did watch it all just for the fun of it, really. Um, it's a good video. They did a good job with that. Uh, this here is all connected and good. How much do we have left in here? Yeah, this here should be going away. And now we have officially a vacuum. Very good. We actually got to watch that live. Always nice to see. And we can once again say, let's say 750 grams. Let's leave a little bit more in here. So if we are above 750 grams and if we are below 150C, both of those go green. When both of those go green, the ant gate will go green. And at that point, our mechanized airlock will open and our gas pump will turn on, pumping our hydrogen out into our currently set up in serious gas reservoirs over here. And we will see how that works. All right. Another 11.3 cycles to go. But let's take care of these fossils here first and let's see what happens. Sebastian says, well, good evening. Good evening to you as well. Good sir. Thank you for joining. Uh, the benefit of infinite fossil is infinite lime. Yes, that's the main reason you have fossil. That's for sure. Uh, fossil is always needed for steel and is often a bottleneck. Yep. One ton of diamonds for some fossils. One ton of diamonds. Are you telling me you need diamonds? I uh, guess we will find out here very soon. We'll find out very, very soon what exactly the requirements are for this thing. Um, let's see. That's too early. Where do we build our liquid lock? Probably um, something like right here. Maybe we can come all the way to right there. Dig out this. I'll leave these here alone. Dig out this. Um, dig out that. Let's see. Yep, need to get rid of this one. And then before we do anything else, we're just going to get rid of the Abyssalite right here. We're going to leave the LG alone and we will try to just introduce some cold from the environment into this area. And we will see if that alone will make a dent into it. Not as long as the spore gets alive, most likely, but there we go. Let's get rid of the Abyssalite. And while you're at it in plumbing, let's put in a bottle emptier right here. Um... Jay says, and my base, which is 1,050 cycles old, hasn't broken into space by him yet, so no renewable ores. Did not even know you streamed. I just um, got inspired by one of your volcano timers yesterday. Well, that's awesome. I love to hear that. Always happy that my uh, tutorials help somebody out. Um, we're going to use one very, very soon down here in this game ourselves. Of course, we are going to use the version 3.0. Who could have seen that coming? Um, how are we doing in research? We haven't researched anything. Space Power 1. Uh, you're sitting at 10 out of 20. Didn't we sit there for a little bit of a long time? What's going on here? Radiation lamp. Uranium ore. You're waiting for uranium ore at a level 9. Why are we not getting uranium ore? There is no errand. Life support supply to radiation lamp. Applying or life support. Why is nobody doing that? What am I missing? Hold on for a second, dupes. What do we have here? Do we have anybody on life support? Yes, we have Iris on life support. 
We have a bunch of dupes on standard supplying. So why exactly? Come on. Is no one filling up this radiation lamp? You should be able to reach it through the door. Uh, the door is in auto mode. David here says the door is closed. I believe that's the issue, but it is in auto mode. If I open it, you think that will change something? No uranium ore? No, we have 3,053 kilograms of uranium ore. That shouldn't be the problem either. Um, so we're going to open this here up. Uproot this damn flower? Oh yeah, we will uproot it. Don't worry about it. I just want to make sure that we have a crude oil liquid lock here real quick before we uproot it. But then we're going to uproot it. <laughs> um, so now I'm not entirely sure why they are not filling up my uranium lamp here. Now the door is open. The errands are still not being... Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the hell is going on here. You know what? Screw it. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of that. There's no wire running through. We're going to get rid of no wires up here. No piping. No. I'm uh, going to get rid of these two. We're going to change the entire damn thing. Very, very simple. Sick and tired of messing around with this thing here. We already wasted enough time last time around. Now it's of course working, but now the dupes can get in. But what we are going to do is we're going to put a nomadic door right here. And we are going to put a ladder right there. Um, does it matter? Probably not. We can put it right there. And now the dupes will put uranium into this bloody lamp, come hell or high water, and they are not able to go in here. There we go. Problem solved for good this time. Good grief. Okay. 600 kilograms. Come on, two more bottles, guys. Bring me two more bottles. And we're good. At the same time, over here on the left side, let's dig out another row. Let's put in another one right here. Um, can directly put another one in. The automation signal is not the problem. Uh, the automation signal is coming from the material study terminal right here. Um, who said that? David Blackwell? No, because here sends a green signal when its radiation storage is full, which it definitely was not. So it's going to send a green signal along here, and then it will be converted into a red signal with our NOT gate. So this here was definitely green. Uh, no way in hell that that was any different. Uh, gotta go away again, sadly. Sh chefs do not get Easter off and also night will be an hour shorter. Do you share wads? Yes, there will be a wad on the channel. Um, definitely for all my streams at all times. Um, thank you for joining, Sebastian, though. I truly appreciate it. And yes, of course, chefs do not get anything off. Um, my sister is, as a matter of fact, or used to be a chef at least. And she quit for that particular reason, because she would never get off for anything. <laughs> but again, thank you very much for joining. All right, dupes, are you going to come by? And uh, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> so let's do it like this. Simple as that. There's always a solution to the problem. Uh, gotta be careful though. Don't want to dig that out. Not yet. First gotta build this tile right here. Come on. Get over there. Is the liquid lock done? Yes, it is. Deconstruct this here. We don't need it anymore. And are we getting colder here? Yes, the cold is already seeping in. But, of course, that is not good enough. We need to tear this here out. And the good thing is, it doesn't really matter. The dupes are not going to get sick. At least not from that short exposure. Unless you just breathe in. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, but it just had contact. Not infected. We are good. Tear it out. And get out of there. Very easy. Very simple. And we're going to use our old same trick once again. Uh, let's see. Is there something caught up here as well yes so we gotta dig out this one tile right here 
Um, all the other stuff here is germ free all around. All good, no problem. So we're going to dig out this tile right here. And then we're just going to put in some wonderful mechanized airlocks made out of uranium ore. There you go. Uh, let's just do three of them. Uh, that should be more than enough to kill this here off in absolutely no time. Elizabeth says 68 watching, but only 33 likes. Y'all get on it? Yes, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. <laughs> I keep forgetting to remind you guys myself, but of course, Elizabeth is 100% correct. Please leave a like on the stream if you enjoy what you're seeing, because it helps me out greatly and it doesn't cost you a dime. Thank you very much for that. And also thank you, Elizabeth, for reminding our kind viewers. All right, very good. We are looking better and better. Uh, nine cycles left on our hydrogen. Two cycles left on our natural gas. We definitely need more natural gas. We are completely out of natural gas because currently our entirety of our natural gas is coming from this thing right here, which is also not the strongest boy. It's at 351.6 grams a second. So... Yeah, definitely need a little bit of backup from the bad boy down here on the bottom. And right here, our mechanized airlocks, we can see it. Radiation overlay. The radiation here should get rid of all those zombie spores here in no time. It's just a question of time. Um, and we definitely have that. All right, let's dig through here and then let's keep on going all the way over here to the left. And then this ancient specimen here will be number three on the list. Uh, without any big trouble. Very good. Might as well get rid of this one and build us a new one right there so we can go straight through and don't have to jump over the stuff here. Something just like that. Thank you, Che. Uh, you did very well on that one. <laughs> uh, looks like this one here was done. Oh, that was research. The research is completed. So, okay, our you our radiation lamp here is working once again. Let's take a look into research. We just got the space power. Very good. What else do we have here? Uh, solid controls. We will need those here rather earlier than later, especially the conveyor meter. If we want to tame that uh, volcano, uh, we need the conveyor meter for that. So that's going to be the next thing that we are going to research. So we have it ready for whenever we need it. Oh, yes. Thank you for the reminder, Jay. I'm pretty sure I don't only have one. I'm pretty sure I have three. And we are already two hours deep into the stream almost. So I think it's time to take a look at the first blueprint. Let's see what we have here. We have a confetti atmos suit. It puts the fun in the perfunctionary not to personal individually. Uh, individu individuality? The fuck is that word? With grief. Okay, we just ignore that. Gunnar is here and AZBZ is here as well. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Very nice to see you guys live. And once again, we have two more uh, blueprints to unlock and we will unlock those throughout the stream. Uh, there's no question about it. Uh, just a matter of time. Um, I do like to dabble around in the sandbox, so even though while I'm off, I was um, dabbling around in the sandbox, and I actually have another video idea that I hopefully can um, um, realize very soon for you guys here. Um, but right at the moment, that's why those here are already unlocked, even though those were unlocked from the very beginning when we started here. Let's see here. In properties, we are overpopulated and we are exposed to 54 rats. It is 1.7 million uh, germs in here. We're just going to wait that out. Yeah, that will go down. With our three um, mechanized airlocks right here, it should go in no time. All right, guys. Let's keep on going over here. That will be number three almost done. I keep getting gloves. That's all we got in the last stream. <laughs> all we got in the last stream was bloody gloves. In all different colors and variations and whatnot. 
All right, we are ready to excavate this one here. That is the ancient specimen right here. So that will be number three. This one here, we have to dig out a little bit more from the looks of it so we can actually get it. Very good. So I'm putting this on 1.5% speed and going back to the beginning. See you in a long time. All right, AC. See you later. <laughs> uh. All right. Very good. 1.4, 1.5 million. Yeah, we are going down. Sinking like a rock. Just got to get this one here um, excavated. I keep getting repeats of the same drywall. Yeah, also that sounds right. All right, come on. And done. Very good. Oh, okay. Look at this here. You, there's actually a bunch of stuff here to read. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Sorry, I'm not that interested in your lore. <laughs> More interested in the engineering of the game. All right, Amber Fossil. Last thing to go. Let's get rid of this stuff here, guys. But we can take a look at this one right here. So how about we're going to build us a ladder all the way straight down and take a look um, if this thing here is dormant or if it is active. Because I really would like to build this thing here while it is dormant. Uh, so, yeah, may have to wait a little bit in the first place. So let's see what we are working with in the first place. To get all this here done, of course, we can just go something like this here um this tile here once again in case you don't know that yet on the neutronium if you have four new neutronium tiles right here the second from the left the first one the second one up this tile here cannot be dug out or it will um, erupt immediately everything else you can dig out safely so if you want to know what's going on with your volcano or any other vent that works for any vent there is uh second from the left second from the bottom uh, changing drywall pattern are very time consuming better deconstructing and build correct one i haven't tried that yet so not entirely sure how that works out how is our water looking in here by now though we are at 29 degrees okay so um let's cut off this here and then connect this here back up and let's see if we can drain all this stuff here out. And then hopefully refill it with some fresh hot water. That would be nice. Turn up the speed. There we go. Most of it is drained. Of course, not all of it because right here we have two more pieces. And each and every one of these here has actual polluted water in it as well. I'm wondering, what could we do about that? We could do something crazy. Um in furniture we could just plump a bunch of ceiling lights in here and try to heat it that way where would we get power from let's see is there anywhere power nearby it doesn't look like it uh, it's just going to be temporary so it doesn't really matter where it's coming from we're just going to come down here uh let's not do it this way let's do it this way that's easier and faster so we should be able to heat this here up a tiny little bit um, this one here is now an uproot errand, though. Um, can I cancel the uproot? Yes. I don't want to have it uprooted. Uh, can I copy the settings? No, I can't. Of course, that would be too easy. It wants to uproot it because I'm building something here. Not the intention in any way, shape, or form. We want to leave the plants here. We just want to heat them up just a little bit. And then once the first one, probably the one on the very left right here, starts and empties out this water right here, um, we can just come in. We will see if that works. Something that I've also never tried. Definitely what else we want is we want to pick up all the stuff that's laying around here because that is also cold and it has mass and we want to get rid of as much mass as possible. A little bit faster though, guys. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, we do have an empty storage right here. You are right. We could try that as well. Let's see. Empty storage. Empty storage. Empty. Empty. You're going to say empty all of them, even though I'm pretty sure uh, the water will just flow back in from the outside from those two extra tiles that we have. But that should be okay. Let's see. Let's see what the dupes here are doing. Everything is on a number nine priority, so I do it, should do it relatively quickly. It's still going to uproot it, though. <laughs> Unless... Empty storage is for the hydroponic farm. Okay, that makes a hell of a lot more sense now. Uh, I would actually need to empty the radiant liquid pipe. I can do that with empty pipe, probably, can't I? Let's see if that works the way that I expect it to work. In F6. What do we have in here? Yeah, we still have water back here. 10 kilograms apiece. This here is all empty. So that's... Alright, all the water is being emptied out here. Come on. Get the rest of the water out, guys. Then we just have to replant our plants and introduce it with fresh water. And that should work in absolutely no time. We will not even need um, those uh, ceiling lights right here. Where are our symbol reeds? All the way in the back. We can't plant them though, because of course now we have the ceiling lights in here. Yeah, I should have considered that. I should have built this entire thing here one higher. It's always good to have an extra space and not um, put it in, in as little space as possible. So yeah, let's try it this way. Get rid of all of this here. The nice thing is that our iron ore that we're getting out is now relatively warm compared to the environment, so we should get a little bit of heat out of it in anyway. And then all we have to do is connect this here back up, and we are golden. I would rather have too much and not need it. Yep, that's exactly it. <laughs> that is 100% a true statement. Come on. Let's get rid of all the stuff here. Where did oxygen come from? Oh, I accidentally <laughs> emptied out an insulated gas pipe right here. <laughs> yeah. Let's once again uh, plant our plants. And then turn on our pump. There we go. That should work. We will see it in F6 when the water comes at 29 degrees. That should be perfect. I think you were emptying an O2. Yes, I was. Come on. Heat it up. 1920. It's not going to be enough, is it? We're not going to get it all the way up to 22. Just barely short. You son of a... Just barely not enough. Okay. Let's try it one more time. If I go ahead and empty it one more time, then it, more water should flow after it. It's still marked for emptying. Oh, we don't want to do that yet. Let's cancel that out. There we go. Okay, let's pump the water in. We just need one of those plants here to reach the appropriate temperature so the water keeps flowing. Uh, as soon as the water keeps flowing, we should be good. Body temperature 21, 24, uh, 21.4 I mean, 22. And now we have both of them, now we should be able to cancel it. And now that the water should be continuously flowing, we should be golden because slowly but steadily the entire area will heat up. There we have it. Very nice. Alright. Let's see. Down here on the bottom. 
We still have this polluted ice right here. A metal refinery would heat that area up nicely. Yeah, it would. You're not wrong. <laughs> Oh, but hold on for a second, guys. I do need to get me a drink. I'm thirsty like hell. Be right back. Uh, what are we going to watch? Is there anything interesting going on? Probably not. We have our natural gas geyser up here. Um, but even that thing here is um, pretty uninteresting. So I guess you can just uh, watch some plants growing while, until I'm back. All right, let's see. Yep, this is not working as expected. Very, very nice. And we have nowhere to put this oxygen right here. Um, in F7, everything is looking good, though. Just making sure that our uh, oxygen is still flowing the way it should. Very nice. Okay, now down here in the bottom, we still have this polluted water we want to get rid of. And we still have this polluted ice we want to heat up. Um... Yeah, I mean, we could rebuild our metal refinery, or we could build us a new metal refinery. How about that? Let's just plop one. Does it matter too much? Probably not. Are you getting water, tea, a soft drink? A, a loud drink? <laughs> I am getting me a Coke Zero. Uh, thankfully, I have a fridge here in my office, so that is helpful. I don't have to get, uh, I don't have to go very far. Let's deconstruct this stuff here. There we go. Let's build us a few tiles. Let's grab us another metal refinery and plop it in here just temporarily. Right here, a little bit of power. And then, of course, in F6, we will need a, a little bit of a water right here which we can thankfully just pump in from right here i'm gonna snip this here off and then right here on the right side we're just gonna come over to the right let's build us a few ladders so the dudes can reach it all nicely and then a liquid vent thankfully we have one right there and then connect it all up and then we're just gonna make us i don't know a few pieces of steel or something that should create some wonderful heat without an issue whatsoever well, steel is probably not a good idea. It's probably too hot. But we will go with... Does it matter too much? Probably not. Let's build us five of these and let's see how that goes. Nine priority. Let's go. Don't want to miss our hydrogen vent here. Next activity, 4.7 cycles. Definitely want to see that thing erupting. And right here. Yep, the spores are going down to 300,000. And over here on the right side, we are down to 7,000. So those are going to be dead here any moment as well. Come on, dupes. Let's build this here. Let's get it done. And then let's heat up a little bit of polluted water. Come on. Where are you going, Jin? Oh, we have some diamonds laying around down here. Well, probably can't use those very soon as well. Come on, build those last two pipes. Is it really that hard? You can definitely reach it. There we go. Now we have it. And now the water that's coming out of here is at what temperature? At 18 degrees. Okay. Definitely better than nothing. Should be good enough to hopefully melt down as much of this ice here as possible. We may have to go a little bit further over to the right as a matter of fact here with our output. So let's build the pipe through. And the liquid vent right here. I want to melt everything. 
Not just a little bit. Everything or nothing. Coke Zero. Fewer calories, but more bloating and farting. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't do sugar. Um, I do like me the occasional soft drink, but I, I, I'm not somebody who, who does a lot of sugar. So I just stick to the, to the Zero version. Uh, aluminum ore. You know what? Let's make us a little bit of steel. Let's get the heat going here. Let's make us uh, five of them. Better living through chemicals. Hey, I'm a plastics engineer. What should I say? <laughs> Get rid of this one piece here. Just an eyesore. All this stuff here, we're going to dig all of this here out. We're just going to leave the abyss of light and everything else can go. I want to make this as simple as we can. The first tile already um, molten. Just all these here still have to go. But now with our metal refinery here, that should go in no time. Definitely a good call. All right. The water is coming out. This time at 40 degrees. Well, that should make a dent into it, if nothing else. <laughs> Slowly but steadily. Trying to retain as much ice as possible. Once again, in case you're wondering why go through this entire exercise and not just dig it out. Well, the reason is that if we dig up ice, it will half its mass. And if we then melt it, um, the molten mass will, of course, also be halved. So if we want to retain as much polluted water as possible, and the same is also true for any other ice, by the way. For example, down here, uh, solid crude oil. If we dig this stuff up, we will lose half of its mass. That is something that I'm always trying to avoid, for sure. Is aluminum a common metal? I haven't found any in my map yet. It depends on, on what map you're playing. It is um, a relatively common metal. Um, like right here, for example, this here is aluminum ore. Um, but usually, uh, if you're lucky, you will find an aluminum volcano and you directly get... Um, Aluminum that is already refined. That is, of course, best case scenario right there. But, of course, you do need a little bit of luck for that. All right, let's see here. We are getting slowly but steadily better. I'm going to dig out some more stuff here that is not ice. Just so we dump this water here directly onto the ice and not into the pool because to heat up this entire pool here will take a little while. It's very rare on Terra map. Yes, on a normal map, it's very rare. How is the hydrogen vent doing? 2.8 cycles left. Getting there, getting there. And right here, looks like we're germ free, aren't we? Yes, we are. All right, we can now, without trouble, go back in here and get rid of those mechanized, uh, mechanized airlocks. I don't recall ever finding an aluminum volcano. Really? That is really unfortunate. That is really sad, actually, because aluminum volcanoes are my favorite. And now we can excavate this fossil right here, and we will see then what happens. And up here, let's make us a little bit more steel. Can't have enough of this stuff, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, it's not like we're losing anything, because, again, we will need it one way or another. So it shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. Very, very good. So let's make us a little bit more. And it should be enough to hopefully melt the rest of this ice here. Definitely this tile right here. Uh, then we have three more tiles left to go. And then we can start pumping uh, the rest up into our reservoir on the top. Uh, this one here is not yet done. The amber fossil. So let's see what we get out of this thing. Again, something that I've never done before, no idea. I have just been told we will get some kind of unlimited fossil. So we will see how it goes. Yep, this first tile here immediately and the other two should be coming along as well here. Of course, we can't see that because the tank is so big right now. Um, so it's not really making a dent into it, but 
Jim Nanny is here making us a more nice and hot water. The funny thing is we're not even after the steel at this point. In the corner right here, we are approaching zero degrees, which is very nice. One degree even. And of course, now slowly but steadily we're going back down due to the size. But that's perfectly fine. No problem. Back missing any fun? Actually, you're just coming for the fun. Sin, because um, next activity for our hydrogen event is in 2.1 cycles, and we will see how this goes. And uh, we just completed the story trait. So let's click on that and let's see what happens. My duplicates have meticulously reassembled as much of the giant critters as scattered remains as they could find. Their efforts have unearthed a seemingly bottomless fossil quarry beneath the largest fragment stick site. Nestled among the topmost bones was a handcrafted critter collar. It's too large to have belonged to any species traditionally categorized as companion animals. All right, let's activate the fossil quarry. And let's see what this thing here does. Uh, so apparently I can make fossil down here. Okay, it takes 80 seconds. And it takes a thousand grams of diamond. And a thousand grams of diamond gives us 100 kilograms worth of fossil. And with 100 kilograms of fossil, of course, as we all know, we can make down here 5 kilograms, where you at, your fossil to lime, 5 kilograms of lime. And considering that we currently have 12.6 tons worth of diamond, it's not necessarily 100% unlimited, but it's pretty damn close to it. So I say that's actually a pretty good find right here. That's, uh, that's pretty neat. I think we... Uh, can definitely make some good use out of this thing here. Very, very good. And it was relatively easy to do. I mean, the biggest problem was literally the one down here with the heat around it, which um, we have clearly solved, I would say, even though down here on the bottom, we still have a little bit of heat retained. But even that, we still have the metal tiles right here. Um, slowly but steadily, it will solve itself. And even right here, we have our temp shift plate that is um, connected to this igneous rock right here. So it's um, no problem whatsoever. We can see how much it has heated up, though, this area. Considering that all this crude oil here started out as solid uh, crude oil at negative 40 degrees. Oh, uh, we did well. So we are doing very, very good here. Um, yeah, that's actually a pretty nice um, story trait. Probably the best one that I have seen. Um, I've never seen it done. I've never done it myself. So I had no idea how it would work. But a thousand grams of diamonds. I mean, it's not too shabby. One kilogram to get 100 kilograms of fossils. So we're basically one to one conversion is uh, uh, one kilogram of diamonds to five kilograms of lime. That's basically what this here is. So very good. Uh, you can destroy the other quarries to get the space back. It doesn't hurt me when I click demolish here. I'll trust you. I'll give it a shot. Let's go. Uh, with diamond press late game, it becomes way stronger since you can produce diamond from refined coal through that. Very true. Um, that is, of course, another big benefit. But now I'm really waiting for this hydrogen vent here. And by the way, didn't we dig into this thing here? The iron volcano is dormant. Oh, wow. Are we literally this lucky that we find three um, vents behind each other and all of them are dormant when we need them to be? That's actually insane. Uh, it's just going to be a gamble. Um, how long will it be dormant? Did we complete the research? Because the conveyor meter is the last thing that we require for the tamer, to the best of my knowledge. Um, we can get us some glass next while we read it, though. Um, it's always a little bit of a problem, because if you don't know when it became dormant, it could be active in two cycles from now, so you have no idea. Um, yeah, we could just go ahead and use a blueprint because I have the blueprint for the timer right here. I retained that thing here and that's probably the easiest thing to do, at least to get an outline of where we are at, um, because we do require a bunch of space right here for sure. Um, let's see. Let's see here. What is the best way to do this? Let me take a look at my blueprint one again. Once again, I mean. Right here. We're not really going to lose anything. 
you know what, screw it. We're just going to plop it in. And then we just need to make sure that the dupes have the ability to reach all of the stuff around here. And then we need to move some stuff around. So we will give it a shot. This here is the Steam Tamer, or better to say, Steam Tamer. <laughs> this here is my Volcano Tamer version 3.0 with the meter on the bottom and only three uh, tiles of um, metal tiles down here to cool the entire thing down. That is all that is required for this thing here to work. And this here is the entirety of the space that is needed for it. It's pretty compact. Um, pretty happy about this thing. Um, I mean, it's version 3.0, so you can imagine I've uh, worked a read a long time on this thing to get it to work. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy that the way it does work is happening. So let's make sure we're going to dig all the way through here. As a matter of fact, we're going to come with the ladder all the way down here to the abyss of light. We're going to dig all the way over here. All of this stuff here, we're going to dig it all out. And then we have to replace a few materials that we don't have. Um, thankfully, it doesn't matter too much what kind of materials we're using. Everything's pretty simple and straightforward here. So, let's see if we can put this here in and make it work before this thing here comes online. The seed is fantastic. Everything the heart needs. Yes. <laughs> Double beehive in the east. Oh yeah, there's another one down here. How did we even uncover this thing? That's crazy that we actually can see that far. Probably from right this corner right here. Oh yeah, double beehive, definitely going to come in, in handy later. There's no question about it. Taming volcanoes can be very scary the first time. And for me at least, taming a major volcano is still terrifying. Yes, taming volcanoes is always terrifying. Um, especially if you don't know when they come online. Because if that thing erupts in the middle of having all the dupes in there, uh, we are in a world of hurt. <laughs> Uh, so do you normally shoot for compact designs? I know sometimes space is a premium, but I have noticed you end up with a fair amount of empty space in your vid in your videos at least. I mean, do I aim for it? Not really. I mean, I know that a lot of people are out there that are trying um, their best to make the builds as small as humanly possible. And of course, it's a fun way to do it. But it's just so unnecessary in 99% of all cases, right? Um, that's just the reality of it. Um, in most cases, it's also not necessarily viable to build something like that in your own base. Um, it's usually, it usually looks nice in a short on YouTube or something, but it's, it's just a huge headache to actually create that in a real game. So that's how I look at it. In this case right here, um, I wanted to have it more efficient because before that I had a huge amount of um, metal tiles down here on the bottom, so I wanted to save resources more than anything else. Um, and that's what I accomplished with version 3.0 here. Um, basically how it works is instead of having those uh, full 20 kilograms per um, tile coming through here and going through uh, 15 or 12 of those metal tiles here with our meter right here, we are making that a hell of a lot less than that. And with that way, we are being able to reduce the amount of metal tiles that we need. That is the general idea here. It takes a little bit longer to empty it out, but time is not really a factor, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. What's a few scalding incidents between friends? <laughs> That's what medical beds are for, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is funny though um, I need to go in here and I need to make sure that the dupes have a ways around here for example right here for example right there I'm going to build another piece of ladder right here so the dupes can get over there just to make sure that everything is reachable and we already have our scientist Cassiopeia here and Cassiopeia is on the job trying to figure out how much longer this thing here is dormant very, very good. Hydrogen vent, 0 0.9 cycles. Do want to see how this works. So why are my natural gas generators right here damaged? Where would you get anything else uh, but natural gas from? It shouldn't even be possible. What damaged you? What in the hell? That's a very odd, but... 
Yeah. Not entirely sure. Um, these here are completely empty. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. But that's okay. As long as there's nothing worse than that, I think we're doing just fine. That sounds like uh, my dog's not happy about something. Let's see here. 0 0.6 cycles. Getting there. Can't you plug with a temp shift plate where it melts and reforms as natural tiles? That would be a good idea to actually fix that problem. Puppy, yes. <laughs> yeah, they're selling the house next door and a lot of people are coming and going trying to look at the house. Um, he's not a fan of that. Let me put it that way. All right. Let's see. How much longer do we have? 39 cycles. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. How lucky are we? Like, we literally got the natural gas geyser, the hydrogen vent, and now the iron volcano with insane amounts of dormancy to have literally all the time in the world to tame them. <laughs> It's like you can't script it if you wanted to. It's an insane. Oh, God. I remember the doodle pics from Venom? Yes. Though that is, in fact, the doodle you hear um, from the pictures on uh, Discord. Papas and realtors don't usually get on very well. Yes, that is exactly true. <laughs> Caffeinated tactician, ho ho ho, stream, yes, we are back. Oh, we are back indeed. And uh, trying to tear some stuff up here. Come on, hydrogen went. Next activity in 30 seconds. Let's see if this here works the way as, in, or as I intended it. Oh my god, I almost forgot. Can't have that. <laughs> uh, high pressure gas vent. Get rid of it, guys, because we're going to have, we are about to have a bunch of hydrogen in the middle of our base. There we go. So the hydrogen is coming. It's coming out. And it is heating up all of these metal tiles around here, which then will in turn eventually heat up this water up here. And it's going to take a long, long time. Um, currently, it's just going to come out. It's not going to be even that hot because, again, our metal tiles right here are completely cooling everything down. And once we're reaching 750 grams, it will open up right here. Uh, the store and the gas pump right here will grab all the hydrogen gas and put it into our storage. And Cinnamon Knight with five gifted memberships. Sin, you are insane. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. I appreciate it so, so much. And look at that. Elizabeth, David, and Caffeinated Tactician, and Pendler and Steel. We have four active members right here. Uh, that actually got the membership this time. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> no temp shift plates and hydrogen timer? We could. It's just not necessary uh, because I have metal tiles all around. Um, it doesn't really do us any, any... Like, it doesn't make it any better or any worse for that matter. Not really needed. I got here just in time, it seems. Apparently you did. Then, again, thank you very much. And it hit the right active people in chat, which is really, really awesome. Can you check hydrogen packet size? Sure. All right here. Most of them are 500 grams at a time, of course, except the first and the last one every time. And we are currently at 36 degrees. Uh, that will change over time. I put a little bit too much water in here, and there is really no such thing as too much water. It will just take a longer time for this to actually become steam. Um, like a much, much, much longer time. Um, usually I aim for about 15 kilograms per tile. We are slightly higher than that. Just, just a little bit higher than that, actually. But, yeah. <laughs> I 
since this caffeinated in your entrance inspired me to give them out. <laughs> uh. Okay, so everything else that we have down here um, is apparently not in something that we have. What are we talking here? We are talking about gold and cobalt. Um, none of the two are actually required. So that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Down here on the bottom, we are talking about aluminum. So the cobalt doesn't matter in any way, shape or form. We can make us some gold. There's nothing stopping us. Um, we can just use this one here and make us, um, let's say, 15 times gold. And then right here on the top, we are going to make us a 15 times aluminum. So we have that in the bag. And then everything that's made out of uh, cobalt, we're just going to switch to literally anything else because it doesn't matter. Uh, we have temp shift plates right here made from diamond, which we should be able to reach because our diamond is sitting around down here, I believe. That's probably all of it. Uh, we are getting into a little bit of a trouble right here because we are starting to suck up polluted water. Why do we still have polluted water? I thought I set this thing here to auto bottle. And our uh, pitcher pump right here should slowly but steadily get rid of polluted water, but apparently it doesn't. All I'm going to do is I'm going to relocate our pitcher, not our pitcher pump, our liquid pump further down. Um, let's give it a little bit of power. Let's give it a little bit of piping. There we go. Because I don't want to end up accidentally creating a steam with our metal refinery here. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be fun. Wouldn't be a big deal either, but still not necessary if we can avoid it. So let's just extend this here, bring it further down into our tank. And then slowly but steadily, we will need to take care of this, uh, of these spore kits right here. And then melt us more solid crude oil. We need to get further and deeper down. Also, this petrified fossil here can go for that matter. So very, very good. And we have Ogen with a, another five gifted subs. You guys are absolutely insane. Ojin, thank you so, so much. And of course, Sin as well. You two are absolute MVPs in my book. I don't care what the other guys say. You guys are doing great. <laughs> 400 degrees down here on the bottom. Let's see. Since you have so much water, you could turn up the atmosphere sensor in there and increase the thermal mass of hydrogen gas inside the chamber. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, we could probably increase the thermal mass. Let's put it up to, let's say, 2 kilograms. How about that? Let's see if we can heat this up a little bit faster here. The thermal mass would certainly help. Um, we did use copper tiles here. Copper is really good because, again, the balance between... Um, Let's take a look here. Between thermal conductivity and specific heat capacity is the most important for this build right here. Even I mean, the truth is also, it doesn't matter too much. If you want to have it very um, efficient, then copper is one of the better ones for this particular build right here. The polluted ice is all gone. Yes, I know it's all gone. Um, but the thing is, we are heating this water here up on the top anyway. 228 degrees. Right here, it's set to 28 degrees. So we might as well heat it up a little bit higher down here on the bottom. It's just now surrounded by abyssalite, so it doesn't do any harm. And we can use our second metal refinery here to make us a few more materials while we are at it. I'm draining a cool steam vent on top of a copper volcano on my current save. I set up a suit checkpoint so dupes can safely get in and out of the danger soup. Danger soup. <laughs> That is funny. <laughs> of course, the dupes um, built themselves out of the area where they need to build in, as they usually like to do. So we need to deconstruct this tile right here so we can build these three. And then probably the easiest would be to um, cancel this insulated tile, uh, deconstruct this insulated tile, and then come with a ladder all the way down to here. Something along those lines. Well, we do have this crude oil right here. It's a little bit of an issue. Um, before we do anything else, let's take 2,000 to this direction. You know what? Screw it. We're going to take all the way over here in this direction. Put in another ladder. And we're going to wait with this ladder here just a tiny little bit. 
Then we're going to put in two tiles right here so the crude oil doesn't run down here. That's a position where we don't want it in. <laughs> Sin says, I'm an MVP everywhere, but I'm also an egotistical narcissist with delusions of grandeur. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I did finally find one of those hydrogen cooler doohickeys, so soon I'll be cooling my base with very cold hydrogen in radiant pipes. Wait, what? Are you talking about the, what is it called, the AEC, I believe? I'm surprised I haven't found one yet. Shouldn't there be one on this map, too? Oh. I have like three of them on my seeds, but not enough uh, hydrogen. I need to use one to keep my base from heat death. <laughs> Any idea how to turn crude oil into well-behaved oil? <laughs> oh, good green. Oh, no. <sighs> All right. Let's get down there. And let's get this here built. And then once again, this heavy what wire right here. Um, this heavy wire right here is um, built out of cobalt, and we don't have any cobalt. Therefore, we just need to get rid of the power wire. And then in F2, we are going to say power, heavy wire, wire. We're just going to build out, out of something that we do have in abundance, like, for example, aluminum ore. Got plenty of that sitting around. And build it all the way over to there. Wonderful. That should work. We need to make sure to see where this here is actually going. Currently, it's going nowhere. So we can just go ahead and build it maybe out of iron. All the way through here, we can bring it all the way over and connect it with a conveyor bridge up to right there. Because this one here is going straight up into our infinite storage, which is where it should go in the first place. So that's very helpful. And right here. I'm going to build some ladders so we can actually reach all this stuff right here. Very, very good. Slowly but steadily, we are getting there. A couple more things that need to be built here. Then we're going to tear out this ladder. And we're going to finish it up. Uh, when taking a duplicate, is it better to take one with three skills, but in which he's weak, or one who is good at one thing? That really depends on. In the beginning of the game, I usually like to take one that is uh, better at one thing, usually, you know, digging or science or something like that. Uh, later in the game, I like to take more of a variety uh, because at that point you want to fan out with your abilities and you have time. In the beginning, it's all about efficiency and speed to get stuff built as fast as you can. Um, but later on in the game, it doesn't matter anymore that much. Uh, so... It's better to fan out later. That's my personal opinion, at least. Come on, dig him down one more tile, and we get in here to our conveyor meter. Uh, right here, and yeah, of course, our ladder destroyed a bunch of stuff here. That's fine. Here we will need a um, auto sweeper, and down here on the bottom we will need a temperature sensor. That is about it, though. Very, very neat. All else we need is we need a power source that is coming into right there, but we have the option to let it come in wherever. That is just from my um, blueprint that I have. Uh, we just need to figure out what's the best way to do it. For example, something like this here is very nice for our output. And the input we will solve once we figure out what we have to do here. Here we have a conveyor bridge that we cannot finish because we don't have the materials. Um, it's an easy solution. We're just going to build it out of something else. Again, the actual materials in most cases do not matter. The only things that really matter is that the thermal aqua tuner the conveyor loader, the conveyor shutoff, and the auto sweeper are made out of steel. Uh, the other thing that matters is also right here. Uh, the conveyor rails in this area here need to be out of steel. Everything else is gold. Um, 
Also, that doesn't matter too much. But right here, the steel. The steel is important because if these are not out of steel, they will melt away on eruption, potentially. Um, so that's a little bit of steel you need. And it looks like most everything is done. So let's tell the dupes to clean up their mess here. All around. Everything that's laying around, even down here on the bottom while you're at it. And on the top, screw it, let's go. And then we will go from there. And by the way, uh, the hydrogen gas right here. Okay, we have now more thermal mass. Uh, we are at 75 degrees. We are slowly but steadily getting up there. And now let's take a look here in our F7 overlay. We can see the gas coming. It's coming along. It's going into the first one, going into the second one, and then it's going out the second one through the bridge and into here. Um, we can see we are at 158 kilograms. We can see that somewhere. There we go, 162, 163. And of course, this one here is completely empty because they are set in series, which again makes perfect sense to me for it to work this way. And as soon as these here turn back on, we will see if we have an output. Uh, which they don't, because our natural gas generators do like to take the, um, the forefront right here. Not entirely sure why, but they really like to be on before anything else. So I <laughs> guess we will see how that goes. But anyway, we will see if this here works, and then we will change it over, and we will make it parallel, and we will see what the difference is. Um, I have almost completely stopped accepting destructive dupes. They always seem to go for the most important pieces of equipment. Just don't get them stressed out, and you're okay. <laughs> Might have to build another, but the other water source I have are the saltwater geysers, and yeah, eat this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, saltwater geysers can be a problem because the saltwater output is relatively hot. Um, definitely a problem. I have seen let's plays where dupes are required to have a specific skill or even everyone has to have a certain negative trait, usually using a mod. Yes, you can have a mod where you can just choose your dupes to be whatever you want them to be. Uh, speaking of not dupes though, but we haven't looked at a blueprint in a while. Let's see. New blueprint. Print. Let's see. Anything good. Uh, more common gloves. Isn't that nice? Well, the second one was, of course, a bust again. But maybe. Maybe the third one. Maybe the third one. My hopes are high here. And let's build this here back together. Let's get rid of this ladder right here while we're at it. Uh, deconstruct the buildings. And let's get rid of this ladder all the way to the top here. Don't need it anymore. It can go. <sighs> I might just make another spawn to have the hydrogen. I can't play and watch beer at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, I see how that's a problem. I also only can concentrate on one thing at a time. <clears throat> All right, hydrogen, 82 degrees, doing fine. Natural gas coming in, very good. Why is nobody repairing those things here? Not that it matters or it doesn't do anything, but it's really annoying to have those little red lines here everywhere. It's just, uh, I don't know, my mind says, what are you doing? Let's get that fixed up. What I miss, I had to run to the store. Um, just building a little bit of an iron volcano tamer right here. And our hydrogen tamer here is up and going. Um, other than that, I don't think you missed a hell of a lot, honestly. We turned on our fossils. Uh, we have now a quote-unquote unlimited amount of fossils where we convert 1,000 grams of diamonds into 100 kilograms of fossil. And then those 100 kilograms back to lime uh, at 5 kilograms. So effectively, we are converting 1 kilogram of diamonds into 5 kilograms of fossil. Sorry, 5 kilograms of lime, I mean, of course. All right. Yeah, 
There we go. There we have it. We don't have any power, of course. It's complaining about that, and that's totally fine. We will need in shipping an auto sweeper, and the auto sweeper has to be built out of steel, as I mentioned earlier, and it has to be right there in this position for it to work as expected. And then down here on the bottom in shipping, um, is it not in shipping? Is it in automation, actually? We need a sensor. Do we not have that sensor yet? Um, should be in shipping, I believe. Where should we take a look into research real quick here? Where is our solid research, solid material? Okay, we need a conveyor rail thermal sensor that we don't have yet. I completely forget about that thing. But we do need data analysis for the conveyor rail thermal sensor. <clears throat> used almost all of your steel with this iron timer that's totally fine um we can make much much more much much more um we will have more than enough iron refined carbon and lime so i'm not worried about the amount all right now we do need this conveyor rail um sensor right here so have we already unlocked the uh, station for it? Probably not. Let's see. In colony development, we need... Where is that thing at? Am I blind? Where is it? Here we have the supercomputer. Here we have the material study terminal. Where is the data bank research? What is it even called? It's laying on the tip of my tongue. Where is that damn thing? It's not the molecular forge. Uh, I wish I could see it. Am I blind? Where's the force research building? Come on. Yeah, the large glass globe. That's what I'm desperately looking for. No, that's the, that's the telescope. Oh, right here. There we go. The crash plan. I was looking at the telescope. We need the virtual planetarium. <clears throat> that's what we need. All right, let's research that. We should have enough data banks, I would assume, to get uh, the required amount. We have 76 data banks. Um, yeah, that should be sufficient, I believe, to get 30 out of it. I knew it was somewhere there, but I only saw the uh, enclosed telescope, and I was like, where the hell? I know it's not that. <laughs> there we go. That is what we need. We should have that in absolutely no time. And thankfully, we still have 34.8 cycles. And if we have to go to space really quickly to get us more data banks, then we will also be able to do that within those 34.8 cycles. If it should really come down to it, which I don't believe it will. Why are you guys not repairing those things here i mean seriously it just annoys the living crap out of me then i have a little red bar right here for no reason that shouldn't even be there because theoretically there should never be anything else um um but gas going in there so I, i'm i just don't understand it natural gas i mean of course and it looks like those things are just running forever so I'm going to set the low threshold here. I'm going to set it to 18. Just to see here our hydrogen generator. Turn on. It can't be overheat damage. It's definitely not overheat damage. And even now, they're turning on before anything else. That is crazy. Let's see here. Um... Let's set the slow threshold to 25. Let's screw it. That was a that was a joke. <laughs> well, better is. Cinnamon Knight once again with two dollars. Thank you so much, dude. Uh, I don't even know what to say anymore to you. Uh, thank you. So no material to repair. That could also be it. Don't we have any more copper ore? You know what? Let's see if we can. Uh, uh, change that if that is the problem if that was the problem now it's not a problem anymore that was the problem eh. 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 oh god 
Yep. Pendler and Elizabeth, you were 100% correct. I just didn't have any more copper laying around. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It, it must be wrong element damage, but I, I just, for the life of me, cannot understand how there could potentially be wrong element in there. And the damage was already there before we started the second one up. And then the first one has already been running. There is no way that there is a wrong element in here. I, I just don't understand it. It's um, absolutely beyond me. Not going to lie about it. I have no idea. I, I do not understand it. But our research here is complete. That's very good. That should give us access in stations to the virtual planetarium. And the uh, virtual planetarium doesn't need anything. Um, we will build us a better... Um, um, what is it called? Actually, can we put it in here? Do we have space? Um, um, yes, we could. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this thing here is now full. Let's select another research real quick, just for anything. What are we going to do here? We will need the, um, in solids. Let's find the solids once again. Solid material. We will need this here so they can already get started on everything. And Barris Attack? I really don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry about that. Gifted 10 more memberships to the channel. Uh, Barris, thank you so, so much. You are absolutely crazy. Thank you so much for 10 gifted memberships. Thank you. And Killjoy says, hi, Beer. Hi, Killjoy. How are you doing? <laughs> um, so, yeah, we will, need us a we will need to build us a better laboratory because we could probably expand this one here, to be quite honest. Um, should we? Could we? You know, might as well. It doesn't really hurt anything. Um, we have more than enough space here. You know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Let's get rid of those two. Build them further out. I'm just going to plop us in an extra light um, to get the efficiency bonus from the light as well. And instead of building everything up here on the top, it works like a charm. Ten gifted memberships. That makes 20 gifted memberships this stream. You guys are absolutely insane. Thank you so, so much. Am I right? How was Vegas? Vegas was fun. Uh, lost a bunch of money, of course. Surprise, surprise, we could have seen it coming. Uh, Gabriel says, I'm going to take a bath. See you later. <laughs> Thanks for joining, Gabriel. As usual, I truly appreciate you being here. Um, yeah, lost a bunch of money, of course. I am uh, the most unluckiest person in the world when it comes to gambling, which is why I don't ever do it. But yeah, this time my buddy from Germany wanted to go to Vegas really badly, so we did. And the result was exactly as expected. Um, where exactly do I need the light for this thing? I believe I need it in front of this computer station here, don't I? Should be right there. Um, let's pull up in a little bit more power here. And that should be good. Yeah, down here in the bottom. We are doing so good that all we're missing is literally this one thing right here in power. That is it. That's literally it. Um, so down here on the bottom, uh, we can already um, close this here off. I never understood the fun behind those gambling, knowing the odds are against you. Yes, the house always wins. Um... Like I said, I'm not a gambler myself. I prefer playing games like this here and not shoving uh, money into a machine or something like that. Um, it's um, The last time I was with him in Vegas was in 2015. So nine years ago and losing a few dollars every nine years. If it makes him happy, then that's what we that's what we're going to do when he's here. That's how I look at least. Uh, so that's how I look at it at least. But yeah, for me, it's not really fun either. Uh, I don't gamble. I don't buy lottery tickets or anything like that. Yep, 
It's a good song, though. The house always wins. <laughs> Are you in the path of the eclipse on the 8th? Yes, I am actually uh, directly in the path of 100% uh, totality. Not 99.9, .9, but 100%. So I'm actually really looking forward to that event, not going to lie. Um, yeah, that's going to be fun. I'm too logical, really doesn't make sense. Same here. Again, 100%, same here. Like, if you look at the Powerball, the chances are what? 1 to 681 million or something to win? Yeah, that ain't happening. There's a, there's a reason why people call it the poor man's tax. The lottery, right? Okay, looking good here. Looking good there. Um, time to pump more water to the top while we're at it here. Something just like this here. And then right here we can make us something. Let's make us two more steel or something to get rid of our um, metal refinery contents. And then we can tear that out as well. Um, the only thing that I'm currently thinking about is... How do we create a vacuum in here? Uh, since I just plopped in blindly my uh, blueprint. Uh, that is of course now a little bit of a problem. Um, we will need to do... Hmm. How are we going to do this? First of all, we need this here. There's no question about it. And then from here, I probably just going to put in a very temporary liquid lock that looks something like this here. Um, fortunately, that's not going to work because I need one more space here. Can I get down here somehow? It cannot, not the way we are. So I'm going to put another tile right here. Then we can come down here and over and we can build from the bottom as well as from the top. That's going to work. So, um, cancel everything, please. Thank you. So, right here. <clears throat> I'm going to build it like this here. It's actually not going to make it any better. <laughs> Let's build it here. There we go. That should get the job done. And then right here, we are just going to come down and do something like this here. And then gonna come down right here and right there and build us a new ladder right here. There we go. Uh, so I can build a liquid lock right here. I can build a uh, pump right there. I can close this here off as soon as we have some water in here. And we are golden. Uh, um, let's see here. It's fun to just sit and watch people gambling at times. I got to the hotel 12 hours before my room was ready and the lady running the table let me just sit and hang out. That's pretty nice. Usually they throw you out if you don't spend money. Awesome, I'm traveling down that way for it. That's nice. Uh, Barry says three different liquid. Uh, what exactly do you mean? Oh, you mean in here three different liquids? Yeah, that would be a way to do it. Um, but I'm just going to create a vacuum the old-fashioned way. Because I can control the amount of water in here a lot better if I use only water. Uh, that's the main reason for it. But yes, you're right. We could do it with three different liquids. We could throw salt water in there. We could throw water in there and polluted water, of course. That would absolutely be viable. There's no question about it. Um, I'm traveling down there, down that way for it. I'm assuming you're talking about the eclipse. Yeah, it, it's going to be good. Um, actually, my plant is closed that day because they're expecting several hundred thousand people in our area. So, um, they're expecting, like, gas shortages and everything for this event. S supposedly, it's going to be insane. Um, we will see. I will let you guys know. Um, I do it the slow way. A door on top of two empty spaces in the air pump, then seal it in. With a switch to open the door, then once it is vacuumed, close the door and diagonally make the two blocks. Yeah, that's what we did. Uh, where did we do that? I can't remember. Did we do that over here? Yes, we did that over here, didn't we? Uh, for this cool steam vent right here, that's exactly what we did. Um, that is working. And uh, it leaves a mess though. I'm assuming you're referring to these three different liquids. Yeah, it will leave a bunch of salt and it will leave a bunch of polluted dirt down here in the bottom. Um, that wouldn't be really that big of a problem for me personally though. 
But yes, it certainly would. That's quite the influx of people. Yes. Like I said, I mean, they're expecting mayhem out here. <laughs> I'm just going to chill at home. I wait until, what is it, 3.08 p.m., I believe, um, on that Monday. I already got my uh, certified glasses. Uh, definitely highly important to have the right glasses for that kind of thing. Um, because if those are not up to ISO standard, you are wrecked. All right, plumbing. All empty here. Now we can go in ventilation and plop us a gas pump right here. Thankfully, there's more than enough power all, oh, not all the way, but everywhere around here. We can just use the heavy wire. We're going to tear all the stuff here back out when we are done. We don't need it. In ventilation, we're going to grab us a pipe. Any pipe I use insulated because, well, not a good, not any good reason. And then just out there, we're good to go. And then right here, of course, I need another bottle emptier so I can control how much water goes in here. Because the amount of steam, so the number one comment that I'm getting um, on my video for the version 3.0 Tamer is something is not right. I don't know what it is. My auto sweeper, my conveyor shut off, my conveyor loader, everything is breaking inside of my steam chamber. Why is that? The number one reason for why that is, is that there is not enough steam in here. Um, so the amount of steam inside of this area here is highly, highly important. If you go higher than 50 kilograms per tile, it will actually overpressure the, the iron volcano. If you believe it or not, it's true. Um, but if you are below like 30 kilograms, depending on what kind of volcano you have, sometimes they are working with a copper volcano, sometimes it's aluminum, sometimes it's iron, right? So they're coming out at different masses and different temperatures. If you don't have enough uh, steam in here, your auto sweepers will break because the temperature goes too high. So yeah, that is highly, highly important. All right. Everything else looking good? How are the natural gas generators still the first ones to run? Okay, now we have hydrogen generators turning on and we can see here that we are actually emptying out the, um, not the chlorine gas, but the gas reservoir at the same rate as it's coming in from the left. So we are basically taking the same amount from the left and from the top to feed all of our hydrogen generators right here. So the serious version is definitely working, but we want to see how it works in parallel so we can most definitely do that as well. Um, all we have to do for that is um, we can come with our pipe um, one further up, come along here and build it like this. And then we can tear out this pipe right here and just bring it over something like this. Uh, definitely a very simple solution. So we're going to do that temporarily right here. Uh, just have the dupes built that real quick and that will effectively make it parallel instead of in series. And we will see what that looks like. Uh, I think the dupes will, yeah, right here. You are correct, Jay. They will definitely do that if we dig out one of those here. That is definitely going to be helpful. Right here, we're just going to choose a liquid. We are going to use, does it matter? Probably not. Once again, crude oil. Enable auto bottle. Enable auto bottle, not auto bottle. <laughs> and just put a little bit in here. Let's create us this vacuum. And down here, or better to say up here, we will need water. It has to be water. Um, doesn't have to be, as a matter of fact. We just want water because with water, we don't leave a mess behind, as we said earlier. So that's going to be good. Um, now we can't get in here anymore to get our gristleberry out, though. That's another issue. So let's get the gristleberry first. No, actually, we can get the gristleberry out with our conveyor loader because with our conveyor loader, we're just going to set it to all. Everything in any way, shape, or form that is in here, we're just going to grab it. We're going to throw it into our conveyor loader and send it through the gauntlet. It's going to be that simple. All right, dupes. Let's get it built. Sin says, so big lotto games are about buying hope, not rational reason. The problem is gambling is an addiction and people feel they are investing as a form of cognitive dissonance. Yeah, you're 100% right. 
I mean, who wouldn't like to win a billion dollars, right? I mean, just, you're not. You're just spending a lifelong worth of money, and you are not going to get a dime out of it. That is the sad truth of it. Uh, think of the steam as the heat sump. So you need enough of the heat sump to stop the stuff from breaking before the steam engines uh, start cooling it. Oh, he said it. Never mind. <laughs> you better build that missing top tile before more stuff falls in. You mean this one here? Yeah, you're right. You are right. I should probably build this one. I also should turn the speed back up. Why are we playing on one time? Let's go. <laughs> Come on. Get it built. So now, uh, we have it built in parallel. Don't mind those extra pipes right here. But yeah, right here. Now we have both of them storing it and both of them releasing it. Effectively, in my opinion, it makes no difference at all how you do that. I also don't know if it's better from a CPU perspective. Honestly, I don't see how that would make a difference, quite honestly, because you're still inputting in both and you're still outputting from both. So I really don't see how that would make a difference. Yeah. I'll let it run a little bit like that. If you guys have any idea how that would make a difference, I, I, I'm truly curious. I, I don't see... I, I just don't see it, no matter how I look at it. <laughs> uh, our pump is already running before we have any... Uh, no, is the liquid lock established? It is actually established. It just doesn't help us any. Uh, because we still have this connection right here. We first need some water. So we are just going to cut this here off for right now. And we are golden. We also don't need any more crude oil. Um, because this blob right here is all we need. So 332.4 grams. And now just we need to make sure that we have enough water in here. Just as simple as that. Uh, let's take a quick look here. We have how many tiles here? We have a total of... 30 tiles. Is that what I'm reading here? Yes, we have 30 tiles. <laughs> so we need roughly a total of what? If you want 40 kilograms per tile in here, 1.2 tons of water. Um, so we need roughly 120 kilograms per tile along the floor right here. We're currently at 12.5. Um, as soon as we reach roughly 120, we are golden. And no matter how much this volcano here throws out, we should have enough of enough of a heat sump, as uh, Elfie Wolf said uh, very correctly, to overcome any kind of issues. The only problem is that we still have this crystal berry in here, and we have no way of reaching it, do we? Um, if I build a ladder here and a ladder there, it should be doable, but other than that, yeah, we're not going to be lucky enough. How is our virtual planetarium doing? Um, do we need more data banks? Yes, we do. We are at zero units, and another reason for it is... What's going on with the atmosuits? I don't know. What is going on with the atmosuits? Is there a problem with the atmosuits? We have a dupe here. Uh, we have a dupe there. Is there one missing? Or am I missing a dupe somewhere? Yep, there's another dupe. Nothing's going on with the atmosuits. Oh, this oxygen right here? Yeah, why is there 1,106 kilograms worth of oxygen? That is, in fact, a good question. Where is that coming from? Dupe kept putting it on and taking it off. Where is this oxygen coming from? I mean, that's 1.1 tons worth of oxygen just sitting here for no particular reason. Suit breaks, so the O2 gets dropped. It's still a lot, though. But okay, that's fine with me. Either way, though, we need more databanks. 
um, to get more data banks, we have to go to space, unfortunately. So and let's see if we can uh, just throw that together um, as chankily as we can. Um, we need a rocket platform basically anywhere. I'm just going to put it, let's see, right here. Um, we need a few tiles underneath, so preferably insulated tiles. Doesn't matter too much, though. And once we have that, all we need, we're just going to build the simplest rocket that we can build. And the simplest rocket that we can build is, of course, a CO2 rocket. So now it would have been good to actually store it. I I hoped we would get by without having to go on the, with the CO2 rocket, but yeah. It's, um, yeah. Thankfully, we have more than enough carbon dioxide sitting around here. How is our base looking, by the way? Oh, very good. Okay, good. Chlorine gas everywhere. Yeah, why do we have chlorine? Where is all this chlorine coming from? Seriously, though. Did we release some chlorine somewhere and I just uh, didn't notice it? Because uh, that stuff is actually going to be a slight issue. Uh, it stops our symbol reads from growing. And down here in the bottom, how much more water do we have? We probably should put in a safety mechanism. Um, probably wouldn't hurt real quick here before we have um, polluted water everywhere. Don't want that. So in automation, we're just going to grab us a hydro sensor. We're going to plop it right here. Um, then with an automation wire, we're just going to come through here and up to there. All temporary. None of that is wasted material, thankfully. Once we have the hydro sensor, we're just going to set it to 999 kilograms. So as soon as this tile here reaches 990 kilograms, um, we will just close off our liquid vent. Pretty simple and straightforward. Liquid chlorine that evaporated. That may be it, actually. That is probably it. Um, so we are going to send a green signal if we are below 999 kilograms. Um, as soon as we are touching this tile up here, we are just shutting it off and no more water comes in. Good. Oh, right. All that li uh, liquid chlorine that I thought was nuclear waste. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not nuclear waste. Come on, dig this stuff here out, guys. We need to get up here. We need to get this done. And we need to get it done within 31 cycles. Okay, it's really not that much of a hurry, honestly. Not that big a deal. Do need more water, though. Did I disable it? Why did I disable it? Huh, not entirely sure. Gotta go. Bye, everyone. Looking forward to watching the replay later. Thank you for joining, Elizabeth. Truly and uh, uh, truly enjoyed. I mean, truly appreciated you joining us here. And yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Yeah. So this year, I mean, other than we have now in two storages. Um, uh, hydrogen, I, I don't see a difference. I don't see what that should do or, or make better in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to cut this here back off. I'm going to come back over. I'm going to connect this here back up. Going to kill this connection. And then kill uh, this connection. Let's see. That should work. There we go. And now we're just going to deconstruct all the stuff that we just put in. Because we don't need it anymore. And we are now back to the old in-series version. Which again, shouldn't do anything different than what we had before. <laughs> you saw what now? You saw so just some natural gas and some other gas? Are we talking about this pipe right here? Oh, we are talking about this pipe right here. Where the hell are you coming from? Oh, you were coming from down here? How is that possible? Why is there polluted water in here? How in the hell? That would explain a lot of things. They pee? No, they can't pee because they are inside of their um, uh, Atma suits. And they can't pee inside their Atma suits in here. That should be impossible. 
Now we found the culprit, but I still don't understand the root cause. Uh, polluted water storage unavailable? What? Why? Oh, that's why. Huh. Very, very odd. Where is the polluted water coming from in here? The refinery makes water and polluted water. We have petroleum and we have natural gas coming out of here and here. We have petroleum, carbon dioxide, steam and plastic. No. There is no polluted water coming out of anything in here. Did someone sneak down without a suit? Shouldn't be possible. No, it shouldn't be possible. All entrances are blocked except this one here. Unless it happened way, way earlier before we had Atmosuit docks and I never realized it up until right now. Which would really suck, honestly. That will probably explain where most of our copper ore went. Very, very suspicious. But now we are back where we should be. Did you just say overheat damage? Are you actually overheating? I mean, I have had these thing here running for a long, long time. Uh, you are built out of copper ore. Yes, you are actually overheating. So, um, let's fix that real quick. In F6, right here. How much do we have? We have 30 tons worth of plastic. Maybe that is a little bit overkill anyway. Let's snip this here off. And let's turn off our polymer presses. And all we have to do is wait a little bit until all the cold from the environment seeps back in here and takes out all of this uh, heat right here. And everything will be blue again. That's the really nice thing about Rhyme that certainly does make it a little bit easier, there's no question. Um, in this regard, at least. All we have to do is get rid of, or better to say, turn off the heat source and over time it will just um, fix itself. Very nice. But yeah, this uh, polluted water right here, that would explain a lot of problems we had. Is it possible that some PH2O got into the... Yeah, I, oh yes, that is exactly what happened. I never, ever deleted this here. Not you. I moved my, um, my liquid pump down, but I never deconstructed the one on the top. That is the culprit. Now we have it. Now we definitely have it. Stop it. Don't pick up more polluted water. Very good, Jay. Very good, Jay. You definitely found the problem. 100%. That's what it is. Any thoughts on how to tackle to core? You just leave that alone. Uh, two core? Uh, I don't know what you mean with that. Yeah. Could you elaborate, Kionis? Yeah, that was a really nice catch, Jay. The core. Do you mean down here the magma? Is that what you mean? Wait, we completed the research? How? I thought we didn't have enough. We don't have to go to space after all. With our shitty rocket that I just uh, envisioned. I was just gonna build a carbon dioxide engine with a solo spacefarer nose cone and send one single dupe up there to make us enough databanks. Sadly, that doesn't explain where the, <laughs> where the polluted water came from in the petroleum refinery in my base. <laughs> that really sucks. <laughs> But yes, this is definitely the culprit. It was this pump right here that put it through here, put it into there, into the oil refinery. The oil refinery was, of course, not happy with it and just threw it out right here. Oh, God. I'm glad we, we found that. Okay, how much water do we have in here now? 240 kilograms. Ugh, way, way, way too much. Way, 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 way too much. That is now an issue. Uh, due to the polluted water, I didn't pay attention. 
Let's do some math here. We have 30 tiles. Uh, we have 240 times 10 makes uh, 2,400 divided by 30 makes 80 kilograms per tile. Obviously, much more than we want. Uh, can't have that. Um, let's fix that in the easiest possible way. The easiest possible way is to get rid of this insulated tile right here. The water will drain out into the liquid lock where it doesn't do any harm. Let's see how much do we have left here. Doesn't really matter too much. We're going to build us another one. Stop it, please. Don't put more in until we know how much we will end up with. There we go. And now let's see how much do we have left here. Is it actually going to be perfect? 116 kilograms, 117 kilograms. We can work with that. We are golden. <laughs> uh, yeah. Send dupe up in rocket, please. You want me to build a quick CO2 rocket? Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. We don't need it, but I can do it anyway. We can, nope, not close this one here up, but close this one here up. We're going to get rid of this ladder right here, first of all. Let me finish this here real quick. Actually, we may have needed that ladder, son of a gun. Um, shipping, because we will need this uh, conveyor rail thermal sensor right here, and we need it right there. Is this here reachable from there? I'm not entirely sure. If not, we need to build that ladder again. Nice how mistakes are also convenient. Yes, they are sometimes. They just happen to work out just fine. Because remember I said I wanted to have roughly 120 kilograms in here. We are at 117.4. It couldn't be much better. I'd love to see how the O2H2 rocket works. Yeah. <laughs> we are a little bit early in the game for um, liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen. though. Uh, liquid, liquid hydrogen, I mean, not nitrogen. We'll get there eventually, but it will be a while. It is reachable. Okay, now we can get rid of uh, this ladder right here. So we will have one piece of debris in there, but it will be picked up by the auto sweeper. Uh, just let me double check one more time that we don't forget anything before I close this thing off and I get mad later because I didn't pay attention. Uh, we have this here powered up. We have these here powered up. Everything's powered in F6. Our piping goes around and around through here with our standard setup goes down here through the bottom to cool all of that down perfect and also cools down our um, steam turbines um already set up for the second steam turbine very good in f7 yeah we only have this here we don't have anything else and in the conveyor overlay very good we can set this here um up slowly but steadily we have time all the time in the world uh, we're going to do that all at once so you guys can see exactly what we're going to do here. And now we're going to close this here off. After it saves, there we go. Very, very good. Keone says that's 120 by engineering mass physicist. This is my complaint, though. <laughs> yes. Correct. <laughs> All right, now that this here is closed off, all we have to do is turn on this pump right here and create that vacuum that we have been talking about. And as soon as we have that, we are golden. So right here, we want a quick rocket. We need a carbon dioxide rocket. And on top of that, a solo nosphere cone. And that should be basically it. Very, very simple. And all we're going to use it for is to create as much um, uh, data banks as we can. <laughs> Alert surface breach, you think? <laughs> Haven't we been here for a while now? Oh, God. Okay, let's create this vacuum here, and then we are good to go. Might as well put the second steam turbine in while we're at it. Let's 
I just use a water meter so it drops in the amount I want and feed it in though the, st the steam and feed it in through the steam engine water pipe. Yes, that is a totally legitimate thing to do if you have water nearby already. Um, I could have just put uh, built a pipe all the way down here uh, with a meter and got the exact amount I wanted. But usually, the boy, if the water is so far away, I just let the dupes do it with a bottle emptier and call it a day. But yes, a meter is definitely the smarter version. Don't get me wrong in any way, shape, or form. Um, one of the reasons I'm so excited that my namesake dupe might uh, get to go to space is I've never had a good enough game going to play with the space stuff. Uh, it's like late mid to late game stuff. I'm going to send Sin to space. Don't worry about it. We're going to make it happen, Sin. I promise. It's going to be your dude going up there. Not entirely sure if he will survive it in the CO2 rocket, but... <laughs> He'll make it up into orbit. Everything's good. Everything's fine. This one here we can still excavate. But other than that, we just need a vacuum in here. Six grams, we're getting there. It's happening again, the suit swapping bug. What you doing, Jay? Where do you want to go? You want to go down here. What the hell? I have never, ever seen that happening. Uh, yeah, I've never seen that happening. Not gonna lie about it here. Never. Once. I just don't know what to do about it. Huh. I don't know. I, I don't know what the problem is. I don't know why the dupes would, would do that. Everything's looking fine. That is so weird. I almost want Jay to come back just to see if, if it's only a J bug or if it's a standard bug. That's what I was talking about with the atmosphere. Yeah, Jaws, you were 100% correct. I, I just didn't notice it, but yeah, something's weird. Uh, $90 says that it's because of that gas tank right in front of the suit requirement marker. You think so? You think it's the gas tank here? Okay, um, let's fix that. Um, where is that at? It's in ventilation. It's the... Where are you? What is that thing even called? Do we not have that unlocked yet? In gases, we do not right here. The canister filler. Better to set a canister emptier is what we need. We will see. We're going to get rid of it. We're just going to plop it somewhere, anywhere really, and uh, release it into the atmosphere. Since it's oxygen, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Might be interesting to pause and see what his tasks were. Yes, that is a good call. Who is it? Killjoy. What are you doing? Nothing. Doc Exosuit. It's... Wow. Store polluted water. It's too fast. I can't pause it when actually his, his errands show up. What is going on here? Oh, it's too fast. You see it? It's popping up just for a second, but I can't press the uh, space bar quick enough. I can't do it. <laughs> of course it's me. <laughs> What if I just tell Kildra to go over there? Now what? Now you're just standing there. Okay, cool. So you have no errands. Well, that's fun. 
That is a very, very, very weird bug that I have never, ever seen before. Have you guys ever seen anything like that? You can't just release it. Um. Oh. See, I also had no idea that that's a that, that's a, a thing. Huh. Fascinating. That's cool. Look at all this wonderful oxygen we have now here. One ton released right there. Of course, popped eardrums. <laughs> Nine kilograms per tile. <laughs> I should have done it down here on the bottom. I think I have a guess. Um, let me hear it, Jay. Killjoy has seen it before. That was a massive ton of oxygen. Yeah, now we have nine kilograms per tile in here. <laughs> uh, probably should have thought about that before I just released it. But we will see if the bug happens again, I guess. Still doing it? If you temporarily turn off the suit to crime and marker and then on again. Uh, you mean as in um, disable building and then turn it back on? Disable enable building? Uh, enable it again. Let's see. Nope. It still happened like three times before Cassiopeia ran away. My guess was that they were becoming idle at the moment they stripped their suit, but that doesn't actually explain anything. I... Nothing explains anything, really. It doesn't make any sense why they would take it off and immediately back on. Like, there shouldn't be anything that could potentially cause that. Because there's nothing in the game that, that switches so fast. Okay, this is sending a red signal exactly as it should. Wonderful. Very good. Oh, you are now auto-bottling from here. <laughs> yeah, that is, of course, a problem. Deconstruct that. Where I want you to auto-bottle from would be from down here. Uh, that was my intention here. Let's deconstruct this tile, and then let's move our pitcher pump down here. Now, I do want to leave auto bottle on because I want him to auto bottle. I just want him to auto bottle out of uh, this stuff right here so we can get off as uh, rid of as much uh, polluted water as possible. That was the entire idea. But that has nothing to do with the suits, though, for sure. I tell you what it might also be. You're using a gap in your ladder and fireman pole to force the dupes through the suit checkpoint. Their pathfinding might be glitched out because of that. It shouldn't, though, because I, I have used this here for forever, and it never cost me any trouble. Like this ex same se exact same system you will find in my LP1 and my Let's Play 2. Um, it's just what I always do, because usually in the beginning I just build a ladder straight down, um, and then break it up uh, later on with an atmosphere dock. And then it just works like a charm sometimes without an issue. Or better to say, usually it works without a charm and then every once in a while it breaks. It's very weird. Very, very weird. You can disable the pitcher pump instead of disassembling it? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. I was too concentrated on this issue right here. Alright, well... I guess you guys get to uh, watch a dupe real quick, um, jump in and out of there. I gotta take a bathroom break. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. So, is it still happening? Did it happen while I was gone? I hope not. Ah, okay. It's true, programmers are the number one cause of code bugs. <laughs> God. Uh, very true, I guess. Can't deny it. <laughs> okay, of course I only left one space in here. I should probably get rid of this insulated Italia temporarily as well, so we have a better gas exchange and we get faster to our um, vacuum in here. So we can finally finish this project and I can take care of the research rocket. Um, up here on the top, there's nothing in here. Let's do this. Uh, let's do that. Well, let's... Before we do anything, let's get rid of the sandstone right here. And then hopefully, now that we have two spaces right here, it should become a vacuum a hell of a lot quicker. Let's turn up the speed again here. And once it is a full-blown vacuum, you're going to close this entire thing. You're off and be done with it. Then the last thing that's missing is power. It's going to be extremely simple. Um, we have a bunch of crude oil right here that we need to get rid of. Um, probably the easiest way to do that is to just dig like 16 tiles in this direction. And that should thin out the crude oil and we can just mop it up. Simple as that. And there we have it. Just as simple as that once again. Let's pick up the stuff, close it off, and call it a day. The pump right here. We don't need it anymore. We can already deconstruct. All of that. Don't need any of this power wire. Don't need any of this stuff. We don't need the high pressure gas vent or the pump itself. All of it can go right away. Uh, my glitch have it everywhere and it might just be a duplicate repeating task, either picking up something. Looks like the devs need a mod to fix the atmosphere docks. <laughs> uh, and after a long play, some weird memory glitches happen. Reloading the game helps. That may actually be it. It may be as simple as just having to reload the game. You are 100% correct about that. Um, that has happened before, where you just have a weird glitch going on that you have never seen before. Um, and all of a sudden, you just reload the game and it's gone like it has never been there in the first place. So yeah, I, I can't agree with that 100%. I have seen that many times, actually. But this particular one here, I have never seen before. Which makes it even more odd, honestly. Alright, this here is closed off. We still have our, uh, have our 117 kilograms in here. Right here, two more tiles. And this is our Volcano Timer, ladies and gentlemen. Very simple, a version 3.0, ready to go. And you still have 26.6 cycles to go before we have to do anything here. Our crude oil is down to 218. Still too much to actually uh, mop it up. So we're just going to go a couple more tiles on. Um, simple as that. If you have the space available, that is usually literally the simplest thing you can do if you have it sitting around. Of course, you could throw a pump in there and pump it around or whatever, but is it really necessary? So, yeah. Very nice. Much cleaner than the danger soup. I really want to know what you're referring to with danger soup. <laughs> oh, you mean the danger soup with the three tile high, uh, the, the water, um, the salt water and the um, polluted water? Is that what you mean? Come on, there we go. We gave the command, even if now more stuff is uh, flowing into this area, the dupes are still going to mop it up, which is really nice. So sometimes if you're just fast enough, you can actually do it with a lot more liquid uh, than they're uh, quote unquote allowed to mop up. The sweeper and loader made out of steel, a sweeper, a loader, Shut off the thermal sensor and the thermal aqua tuner are all made out of steel, even though the conveyor rail thermal sensor didn't need to be. Uh, just like the liquid pipes thermal sensor doesn't have to be either. And the conveyor rails right here are also made out of steel, only in this area. Everywhere else up here on the top, they're made out of gold. But oh, down here in this area right here, where the actual um, iron is coming out, it needs to be steel. Um, otherwise, it will melt away. And we don't want that. So that is also something to keep in mind, highly important. <laughs> Sin says, mmm, danger soup. And then David Kaiser says, danger soup sounds disgusting. 
No, no, my cool steam geyser that drains into a pit with a copper volcano. Oh, that dangerous soup. <laughs> yes, you mentioned that earlier. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yes, it is a little bit cleaner than that, for sure. <laughs> All hail to danger soup. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. But you know, at the end of the day, if it works, what does it matter, right? That's how I look at it. If it works, who is anyone to blame you for it? It does not make a difference. It gets the job done, period. Hard stop. Discussion over. Um, Down here on the bottom, it's nice and cold, so it doesn't matter. We can't just throw a... Uh, our transformer right there and then we can't just come of course now these two here are not going to be very happy because they're up in the air what is in those storage bins those are my coal storage bins really how did you end up over here i completely forgot that that ever happened i thought it's ice this here is my ice storage they are now in a somewhat dangerous position i would say um if now hold on a second if there is ice in here with a number eight priority and I have bins up here with a number, also with a number A priority. That would explain the issue. Come on, guys. The ice from the bottom right should be transferred, obviously, into the water reservoir. Wouldn't that make sense? Ay, ay, ay. Something else that we need to do is we need to actually uh, do something with our cool steam vent over here. Uh, because our water reserves are getting rather low. Uh, because we are currently feeding it straight into our three electrolyzers. And if you remember, they're using each one kilogram per second. So we are losing three kilograms per second of water. And that is, of course, uh, not going to be sustainable without a long-term source of water. Thankfully, we have our cool steam vent over here. We have another cool steam vent somewhere in this area. Can't remember where, but we have another one. I do know that for a fact. Um, so yeah, we will see. But for right now, I just want to transfer all this ice in here so that melts. That would be a good start as well. Um, with the coal. I think we are going to just copy these settings over to here. And you are not ice anymore. You are coal now. It's going to be that simple. So we can get rid of a little bit of coal. Um, then preferably we should have one here anyways for coal. That will then relieve us from both of our coals. And they should be now a little bit happier. <clears throat> good, good. Copy the settings over here. Let's make it a, a priority number eight. So we are taking it out of here and transferring it over just like this. In absolute high speed. <laughs> and there it's empty. Gotta love to see it. Now we can get rid of them. And we can come down here with our power and connect it up and then of course we can connect all this here to power as well just as simple as that just as we like it that's how it's supposed to be how do you get rid of the nitronium with rocket shaving patched out do you um didn't make luma a video on it where you can theoretically melt neutronium with about a million of those red bolts right here um, I think it's theoretically possible, but I don't think it's uh, viable in a real game. I'm pretty sure he just did that in Sandbox and, uh, you know, for showing purposes. But as far as I know, there is no other way uh, to get rid of Neutronium. We officially need a Danger Soup emote. We should be able to make that happen, maybe. We should be able to make that happen. <laughs> Not entirely sure what that's going to look like, but I'm always open for ideas. Last week, another streamer melted an oil vent because it was in an inconvenient place. He melted the vent with liquid gas. With liquid glass. It's crazy the ideas some people have. Really? We are talking about an oil reservoir right here? Melting point, 926.9 uh, degrees. It wouldn't even be that hard to melt this thing. You just connect it up to magma. It's also nothing that I have ever thought about, honestly. To melt one of those things. <laughs> Babe, wake up. New beer to your meme just dropped. <laughs> uh. 
Oh god. Alright, so this thing here is now ready to roll. Uh, currently we have some sandstone in here. Isn't that nice? Um, where is it going to go with our current settings? Oh, it's going to go into a circle over and over. We're just going to set it in the other way. So we can actually send that stuff out. Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, limit is zero. Huh. Let's set it to three. Let's see. Uh, you did build the... Yes, okay. So this is also important, of course, for the conveyor meter. It needs to reset itself, and now only 3,000 grams or 3 kilograms at a time are coming out. So that is the entire idea why this here is working. The only and the very last thing that we need is this liquid reservoir here. We need to fill it up with polluted water. And guess what? Very conveniently, right here, we have polluted water nearby. Isn't that nice? We can just grab this pipe here, come all the way through something like this, and plop it into the input right there, and call it a day. Um, very nice. We can't just pump this entire thing here out. We're going to say, send a green signal if below uh, 1,000 kilograms. Um, and now it should always send a green signal. We're just going to empty out all this polluted water here, and plop it into this liquid reservoir. Of course, we need to set this here up properly as well. Um, we're going to say, send a green signal if above uh, five, uh, 5 degrees Celsius. We remember the thermoacro tuner cools it down by 14 degrees. So if we are at 5 degrees uh, Celsius, uh, our properties here have a freeze point of negative 20.6 degrees. 5, negative 14 um, is definitely going to be good enough that we are not accidentally freezing our polluted water. All right. We should be golden. I uh, haven't seen the streamer, but I bet it was a leaky oil fissure. Uh, if you can't get rid of the Neutrium, it's useless to get rid of it. <laughs> Put some Chirginus on it and have it, and have some free petroleum. Yeah. I mean, if you if it's really in an inconvenient place, I don't know. I, I don't know how inconvenient that an oil reservoir would have to be. An oil reservoir I would never melt, for sure. A leaky oil fissure is less useful, so... I mean, I can't see getting rid of it because it's, again... Most people just ignore it, including myself. What are you going to do with it? So, there's that. But yeah, it really depends on, I guess, what you're trying to accomplish. Come on, guys, build me some piping to get this here rolling. Uh, while we're doing that, let's take a look up here. In our <clears throat> what? In our rocket module right here. Now, if I would just remember how I built this, because usually I just ignore that um, outright, usually. So we will have to see um, if I remember how to do this here properly. We need, where is that thing even at? The orbital data collection lab. Um, we could plop it basically anywhere, I would assume. Um, Probably over here on the right. I do remember having two airflow tiles right here, a ladder right there to get up to there. Then I usually just plop in an outhouse um, to pee where the dupe sleeps. It doesn't matter. We are not here for comfort. And then we need, of course, a storage bin somewhere like right here, which holds our plastic. On top of that, in rocketry, we will need a power fitting that we need to plop anywhere where it fits right here and then power and that should be basically everything we should ever need um, this thing here will never go any further than the orbit it will not stay in space much longer than five six ten cycles or so um, the dupe in there is going to be relatively unhappy but that doesn't matter we are not here to win a happiness prize and then we need to fill this entire thing here with oxygen um, Usually that's what I do. I just fill it up with oxygen. Um, We're not going to have any kind of storage or anything of that sort. Um, none of it matters. Um, duplicate operation required. That is electrical engineering. We have an electrical engineer. We just don't have one in here, which is why it's complaining. That should be it. Um, it's that simple. It's, it's as simple as it can be. So the dupes are coming by. They're building all this shit. Including the shitter. <laughs> uh, 
All right, come on. Get it in. This one here, we are going to set to uh, not refined metal. Manufactured material, plastic, we are going to take something like five tons with us. It doesn't matter too much. Let's go. Oh, yeah, we also need some food. You are correct. Um, Do we need food, though? That's the real question. I don't think we need bloody food. How long does a dupe survive? Um, Let me think. Can we put... We can put food in here. And I don't have enough space to put a fridge in here. Where would I put food? I mean, we can just dump food in here. That would probably be the easiest way to do this. Just dump it on the floor. But yes, food is required. You are correct. We'll find a solution for that as well. Two days? Eh. Move to? Yes, Jay is 100% correct. That's what I was just thinking about uh, um, putting it in here. And of course we need power. I forgot about power. Um, back out of here. We will need to add a um, battery module in here. So, let's do that. Which also means we will need to come with power all the way up here. Can we just put a solar panel on top of it? We should be able to do that as well. But for that, we need glass. And we don't even know we do have it researched. Uh, do we have a glass station, though? Glass forge. We do have a glass forge. Um, just going to plop it where all the other stuff is. Down here on the bottom, because it doesn't really matter too much. Um, I think the easiest way to do this in the short term is to go to F6. Um, how cold is our water down here, our polluted water? 8 degrees, and the um, glass that's coming out of here is at what temperature? Uh, 2,600 degrees with a thermal conductivity of 1 and a specific heat capacity of 0.2. I don't think it would do anything if I just drop it into the um, polluted water right here. Worst case scenario, I could just drop it into the crude oil because that is certainly not going to make a dent into it. I don't know. Yeah, the mass is very small. That's correct. It should be fine. It should be fine. What's the worst thing that can happen? We have a little bit of steam down here for about 0 0.2 seconds. Who cares? Um, let's just come over here with a liquid vent and hook it up to power. There we go. Simple as that. Uh, are you sure it's a bug? Says Mark. Che was idling, so it may be that he was just idling and it just played the suit animation. It may well be. It, it's just... The only reason why I believe it's a bug is that I have never seen it before and I can't believe that in, what, 1200 hours in this game I have never noticed this. It's just kind of hard to believe. But yeah, it may be. Pour the liquid glass down the ladder that the dupes use. Yes, that is the plan. <laughs> uh, won't the glass turn the oil into petroleum? It, I don't think it would, because the mass is so small compared to the mass around it. So I don't think it will do anything. But we will find out. We will produce one whole piece of molten glass with a number nine priority so we can get it done right away and then we will see what happens um how much is that a piece that's only 25 kilograms it shouldn't do a damn thing we will see why are you sleeping down here gremlin gremlin what are you doing i don't think that is um what's supposed to happen here sir Let's turn the speed down so we can watch our molten glass here. You should the glass be coming out. It's dropping down. And it does precisely nothing. The glass is still at 700 degrees, but the mass is too much of our polluted water that it will make even a dent into it. Um, just when we make too much, eventually it may become a problem. Um need to be careful about that because if we get a thousand kilograms down here it will become an issue that is for sure um 
how do we prevent that from happening? You know what? Screw it. Um, we have 25 kilograms. We need a total of how much did we say? 200 kilograms, I believe. Oops, I'm like 20 minutes behind the stream. Please ignore my blattering. <laughs> oh, you're totally fine. And it may well be that it's idling. It would still be a bug, though, because even if the dupes are idling, they, it should not play the animation over and over again. So per definition, it would still be a bug. Metal floor. We could put a metal floor right here and then drop it right there. That would work. I mean, there are so many options that we have available to us. Turn the speed back up. And by the way, how about we unlock a new blueprint while we are at it? The third and final one for today. And what do we get? We get a rocket. That's fancy. Basic purple shoes. A fresh pair of purple shoes that go with everything. I don't know if purple shoes go with everything, though. Um, it's not like that I'm really a um, very stylish guy myself, but come on, I don't think that's going to fly. Uh, glass 50 kilograms at 18 degrees. Yeah, now that it's cold for the first time, the mass of the glass itself should cool down the new mass coming in. Therefore, it shouldn't even make a dent into it. Yeah, it does nothing. Yep, we can make as much as we want, and we are golden. Perfect. So, make me the 200 kilograms I require, please. Four more. I said four, I believe. Sin is here himself, taking care of business, as always. And 25 kilograms. Give me... Two hundo. Come on, guys. And then we are going to build us right here a solar panel module. That should be then sufficient, I hope, to keep this thing powered. 150 kgs. 175. And I just need one more dupe to come back. Grab a little bit of sand. Actually, we have sand. Plenty of sand. And Croc is here. And gets it done. Compared to Don't Star from Cly, having hundreds of different skins, only are so stingy with skins, they could do much more. Pretty sure, didn't they announce that they will, or that they're planning on implementing more skins and stuff? I can't recall. Again, as you guys know from the last stream where I deleted half my skins, I'm not somebody who plays with skins, so I don't know a damn thing about it. Um, yeah. Let's put that on the top where it belongs. Um, that has a 60 watt output. And in the interior, we are needing a 60 watts. It's almost like it was built for that. Weird how that works, isn't it? Uh, so that works out just fine. We are full in here with plastic. Our outhouse has dirt in it, and apparently somebody already used it once for who knows what reason. What the hell? Um, how about we clean it out and get it ready? And then back here, we just need this glass right here. So, let's build a couple more ladders here. Last but not least, then we of course need carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide, how much do we fit in there? I cannot remember. A hundred kilograms. That is a lot of carbon dioxide because we are just getting 90 grams out of here per second, so that'll take a while. Um, didn't we have a vent? Yeah, down here. We also barely have any left on this pump here that we are pumping out, which is why we are getting so little of it. Um, and... Uh, and don't starve, they make you pay for it. So I guess it pays for them creating some decorative DLCs because that's what they're going to do, I guess. They are? Didn't they say they're going to make more DLCs? I don't remember exactly what they announced, but they announced a bunch of stuff. Let's take a look real quick here. I thought we have a carbon dioxide vent. More than one. A cool steam vent over here. Uh, that's the carbon dioxide geyser right here. 
Is there a good way, an easy way to get over there? Yes, we already have a way to get there, as a matter of fact. All we have to do is enclose it and build a pump in it, and we are golden. Very, very simple. Just almost said proud to assist my leader in Sherman, but suddenly remembered at least two of those words combined aren't chat friendly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you don't say that. <laughs> oh crap. Okay. Right here, we're gonna come up. We are going to build tiles here and eventually here. Um, again, we're going to make this here as simple as humanly possible. Get this crap out of there. In F7, there's really not a hell of a lot in the way. We can start building the piping already. The piping, we're just going to come straight across the floor right here. All the way over. Um, what's the best way to do this? Probably come across here, build it along the wall. And then right here, we never actually build a roof here, so it's time for that. Um, right around now, I would say. How are our hatches doing, by the way? Apparently they're doing just fine, huh? Um, then we're going to come along here. And then with the gas bridge. Actually, we're not going to do a gas bridge. Actually, we are going to do a gas bridge. Gas bridge is just fine. It's not going to make a difference. Most of the stuff that's coming through here is carbon dioxide anyway. So it's totally fine. What are we feeding those things right now, by the way? Copper ore. That's where our copper ore went. Yep. That makes sense. Uh, good that we don't need that for really much. And you aren't filling the rocket, you can make soda. Yep, that is definitely a good use for carbon dioxide. What are we feeding you guys? Sedimentary rock. How are there still any of you alive? I don't think we have any more sedimentary rock. Um, That's the wrong thing right here. The hatches. We need to feed him. What are we going to feed him? Let's see. Not data banks, of course, but a raw mineral. What do we have the most of? We have the most igneous rock. That's a, that's a good thing. Most igneous rock. We are going to feed not our normal hatches, but our stone hatches up here. We can easily feed igneous rock. Or can't we? Am I wrong about that? No, that's hatches. Where are the stone hatches? Stone hatches, igneous rock, there we go. And these here, normal hatches. I'm considering just letting them die out. Because it's not like we need them for anything. Ah, clay, dirt. What are we going to feed you guys? I'm not going to feed you sand. I'm not going to feed you sandstone. Because we don't have any more, probably. Sandstone, we have 16.3 tons. How much sand do we have? 172.4 kilograms. Uh, tons, not kilograms. I am going to feed you sand. That should be okay. Uh, so we can get a little bit more coal in. We are at 33.3 tons. We are definitely getting more in. Should be okay. Uh, that's why I arranged sage hatches. Very inefficient, but I can make their food 100% renewable. Never accidentally leave them consuming something. I have a finite supply of until it supplies zero. Yeah, you are definitely right about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, we have the fossil right here, which gives us sedimentary rock. 95 kilograms. I don't think there's another option. Um, we do have a minor volcano right here. And something that I wanted to try, and I actually have not yet. Theoretically, I don't see a single reason why this exact same timer right here shouldn't work for a minor volcano as well. Um, there is a lot of mass, that is correct. But the temperature is a lot lower. But here we have only 9.3 kilograms per second. I'm wondering if that would work. Or if the mass is just too high to get it out of there quick enough. The eruption period is 75 seconds. Here the eruption period is only 48 seconds. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. I don't think that's going to work. I'm pretty sure they will melt everything. So we will have to build something more standard. 
But eventually we will have, we have plenty of volcanoes. We have one here. We have another one over here. That's another uh, minor volcano, if I'm not mistaken. So something that we will have plenty of is going to be igneous rock. There's no question about it. But yeah, one step after the next. Let's get this here all built first. And let's get this thing here to space because I promised Sin he would go to space today. And I uh, intend to uh, keep my promises. So Sin is going to space today. And before we waste all this uh, carbon dioxide right here, um, yes, I know somebody's going to come back again and, uh, and ask me to probably put in a normal filter. But we will have to come up here. Well, we could build a mechanical filter in this case right here. You know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Let's get rid of this, sh uh, this stuff right here. And then let's build us a standard mechanical filter. All right. Wait, do we have another blueprint? We already opened three today, right? Am I wrong? I could have sworn we already opened three today. But we have another one. That's weird. Well, I would say let's go for it. Let's open it up and let's see what happens. Solid pink. A bold statement for bold duplicates. Well, that is a true statement for sure. And we have another one. Um, it may well be that I had one from last week, even though I didn't play the game last week. So I'm not entirely sure where that's coming from, but hey, I take it. If we have two more to go, then uh, yeah, we'll definitely open them all today. I'm having a beer now, tier. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Cheers. Cheers, David. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. That is, yes, a bold statement indeed. Yes, I agree. <laughs> right here, gas bridge. Let's go. How much longer until this thing here erupts? 21.9 cycles. That is a, a long freaking time to wait for a bloody volcano to erupt. But it is what it is. Could make us a little bit more glass while we are at it. Um, we have plenty of sand sitting around. Let's make us 50 of them. Shouldn't cause any trouble as long as we still have polluted water down here. And even if we don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> even if we suck all the water out of here, it still doesn't make a difference in any way, shape, or form. How much symbol reeds do we have now? 138 units of reed fiber. Oh yeah. That should be plenty. Come on, guys. Dig over here to this vent. Very good. Getting there slowly but steadily. Two more. And as a matter of fact, I'm also going to get rid of this brine ice right here. What are we doing with that shit? Nothing. Nothing is the answer. But priority-wise, I do want to build this one here first. Because otherwise, we will have this hydrogen here leak out. And I would like to avoid that. Of course, you're building the wrong one first. How else could it be? Always the same. Build the top one first. There you go. Then the middle. Thank you very much. Okay. Better. Now we can take a look how this thing here is functioning. We're going to come over. Of course, digging out everything as usual, except this one tile right there. Um, other than that, we're looking good. Gonna come into right there with our ladder, build a tile right here, not right there. There we go. And let's make an insulated tile up there while we're at it. There you go. And it's, of course, dormant. What is it? Everything is dormant on the seed every time we dig it up. You gotta be joking at this point. This can't be real. 
Oh my god. All right, dupes, go ahead and research it. Screw the uh, hydrogen. It's not going to go anywhere. It's above us. Well, it's going to go a little bit down because the pressure is so high, but it's not going to go very far. It turns out we don't need this here. Let's get this here researched. Let's figure out what it is, how it works, what it does. And let's build us 2000 this direction. Uh, all we will need at the end of the day will be in ventilation. <laughs> what temperature does it come out at? Negative 55 degrees, so it doesn't matter. We're just going to build it out of copper. And we will slap it. Where can we build it? Right. Yeah, we can't build it right here. That is sad. We can build it right there, though. Come in our insulated tiles all the way around here. Dig all this stuff up. Just as simple as that. In automation, we're going to grab us an atmosphere sensor. Plop it. Down here in the bottom with an automation wire. We're gonna build this here out of steel? No, thank god we don't. Yet you're secretly listening to the vents and then pre pretending to be surprised. Truth be told, I have the sound so low I couldn't even be listening. <laughs> so, no, that is actually not what's happening. <laughs> Convenient and sus the luck you've been having. I mean, considering I never actually planned to go to space with a CO2 rocket and therefore just completely ignoring this carbon dioxide geyser right here, I can assure you that it is actually luck. <laughs> oh. Yeah, going to space with a CO2 record was uh, never on the agenda. I was... Uh, Full on planning going directly to petroleum rockets. <laughs> Do you also have this weird daylight saving switch in the US? We will turn our clock one hour forward in exactly one and a half hours from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. tonight. Yes, we do. Um, we do have that exact same switch here, but it happens over here in the United States three weeks before yours. It happens not on the last weekend of March, but on the first weekend of March. So we already have that nonsense behind us. And just like in Europe over here, they also can't figure out how to get rid of this nonsense that's still left over from the literal Stone Age. So, yeah, there's that. All right, we can hook this here up. What is connected to here? Um, what are the chances that all of this stuff is running at the same time? I would argue it's close to zero. Therefore, we're just going to connect it. It's only going to be a gas pump, and it's fine. Best reasons to live in, a Hob in Hawaii or Arizona? Yes, those two states don't have it, which is another absolute insanity here in the States, not going to lie. <laughs> There are just two states that decided, fuck the rest of you. We are not switching the time over. Screw y'all. <laughs> I listen to them. Also, I have to sound low as well. But I uh, don't know what the sounds mean. I think you can learn to do that. Yeah, you can hear it. Like if you hover long enough over it, uh, you can just hear it. If they are actually making the overpressured noise, that is a very true statement. But again, it's not something I do. I just dig it up. That's why I always leave this one tile here open. And then I will just see it with my eyes and I don't have to try to mess around. Uh, hoping to find the right spot where it would be erupting or not. Especially for something like... Um, we just looked at this volcano over here, right? It erupts uh, 75 seconds every 10,066 seconds. 10,066 seconds. So in an absolute worst case scenario... It is actually active. Um, it has just completed its, its 75 second uh, eruption period. And then for 10,066 seconds, you're right here with your screen. You're trying to listen and you don't hear a damn thing. Because it's not trying to erupt into the stone. Um, yeah, you can't just get very unlucky with that. So it's usually not worth it in my opinion. Therefore, just dig it up, leave that one tile where it's supposed to be and call it a day. Oregon is trying to go to daylight savings full time, but Congress has to make a law to let them. Yeah, I think there are several states. Didn't Georgia also vote 
that they want to get rid of it, but they can't until Congress says it's fine, something along those lines. Um, I tend to go with steam rockets with a launch complex that cools itself and make a, a, and make steam. Yeah, I have also dabbled with that before, but truth be told, you know, petroleum is just so much more easy and convenient. <laughs> and I just ignore the steam usually as well. What is your favorite geyser? My favorite geyser depends on what I need in this moment. <laughs> um... Usually it's metal volcanoes. Metal volcanoes are always good. They always come in handy. But usually something like a cool slush geyser like we have up here on a world like the very first world, the normal Terran world, is also um, very happily to, um, or is always very nice to come across. Let me put it that way. It really depends on what you need. Um, yeah, most of them are useful the carbon dioxide geyser here is just useful right at this moment, in this very particular instant where I need it. Other than that, I would just completely ignore it, for example. So carbon dioxide is probably my least favorite. Or something like an uh, infectious polluted oxygen vent. Also a complete nonsense that I don't ever use for anything. But yeah. That is that. Alright guys, let's put the roof in. Get this thing here researched. And then hopefully, also, build me my conductive wire. That would be nice. Okay, up here on the top. Let's see if we can build us a um, mechanical filter real quick. In ventilation... We will need a gas valve, and the gas valve needs to be connected to something like, uh, let's see, how many spaces do I need to be away? One, two, three. Uh, should be connected like this here. Then we need insulated gas pipes coming through here, and then we need a gas bridge right there that will work. Just need to have the dupes actually get over here properly so they can reach it all. Infectious polluted oxygen vent can be used to make renewable ceramic. Isn't that a thing that you need? Um, I did that in my last Let's Play. I don't know if you watched my last Let's Play or not. I did exactly that. It's just a pain in the ass. Um, it's literally just a pain. But yes, you're right. That is a very good function of it. But it's just, yeah. I cooled it down with an aqua tuner. Uh, so to delete all of the... Um, uh, germs in it. I had it on a uh, insulated pipe right here with a germ, with a gas pipe germ sensor, and just snake it through until all the germs are gone. That might be where I learned it from. <laughs> yeah, that may well be actually. <laughs> that may well be. So let's prime this thing here up. Um, need to connect this here. Zero point one grams. That is already enough. Let's see here. Something just like this here, that should work. And then right here, we need another gas pipe that comes out of there. And it goes all the way up to here. Just as simple as that. And done. Just need to make sure that I don't overfill this thing here now. Um, this here needs to be deconstructed again. Until I actually have my output built. Uh, come on. Or does it matter? I don't think I can overfill it. No, not with a gas pipe. We are goat. I completely forgot about it. With a gas pipe, you're totally fine. It will always work this way. Oh, I just found another anti-entropy nullifier. Like I said, I'm surprised that I haven't found one yet on this map. There should be one, you would think. All right. Who was it who was uh, trying to convince me to build a mechanical filter? Was it you, Jay? But now we finally have one. <laughs> Did I miss the discussion on finding the teleporter? Yeah, we still haven't found the damn uh, teleporter. Um, still no sign of it. What? We have found it. Look at this. 
We found the teleporter, finally. I didn't even believe in it anymore. But we are finally here. We found the teleporter. It's all the way up here. Look at how far away it is. I, I don't think I have ever seen it that far away uh, from the printing pod. That is actually insane. But we found it. Now we just need to get over there. Uh, let's get all the stuff here done. And still dormant for 17 cycles. At this point, it's got to be a bad choke, right? I mean, there's no way it isn't. That is crazy. Absolute crazy talk at this point. Uh, let's come through here and up. That's fine. Let's just snip it off somewhere. And then eventually, the nice thing is that we now have our filter, which means everything that is not carbon dioxide is going to go to space. Uh, once this last tile here is built, please. Thank you. And only carbon dioxide is going to go into our rocket until it is all the way full until all this year's full and until this year's full and i forgot we have meteorites that's right um meteor showers are a thing again um yeah that is a slight issue can we build us a bunker door up here no because it's too wide i don't think our rocket will fit through there will it don't think so we can try it though yeah let's try it what's gonna stop us Worst case scenario, we just rip it out when we're done with it. Trying to protect it at least a tiny little bit. What's even coming down here? Ice? Is it an ice meteor? Yeah, snow is coming down. Can I see somewhere what, what kind it is? I don't think so. I think I will have to have a telescope for that or something like that. We also need steel for our bunker door. And nothing else we can build it out of? Am I crazy? You need literally 500 kilograms of steel here. Yeah. I haven't built a bucket door in a long time because last time I played the game, it didn't exist yet. We didn't have meteor showers. So, yeah, that is, of course, an issue. Um, let's build us uh, 10 of those. That should be a ton of it. That should be plenty. And by the way, all this stuff over here, the left side we're just gonna rip all that out we don't need it anymore we don't need anything in f6 anymore don't need the actual metal refinery or liquid vent because we are about to be out of water down here so that's very good we will make us more sand oh more sand is already being made not more sand more glass i mean of course so that's good I think I saw it two streams ago. Did you really? I have not noticed it at all. I thought it was somewhere going to be right here. That was my expectation. Or maybe somewhere right there in this area. But I didn't expect it to be up here on the top right. But that works for me. We have it now. I just recently learned of the element sensor and valve filter and I quite like it. Yeah, that's definitely another way to do it. I believe on Star Map you'll see it. Um, yeah, okay, so we have a copper, a slimy, and an ice meteor shower. So this here has to be the ice meteor shower, quite obviously, because of all the ice. And now that I built this bunker door here, it doesn't even matter anymore, because the um, it stopped. That's my luck. Let's dig up this stuff here. Get rid of it and pump it full with carbon dioxide slowly but steadily. Just need to make sure that this here doesn't freeze off in our dupe sty because we still don't have a station right here. We should probably build us one, as a matter of fact. How about that? Um, let's see. We're going to go to stations, atmosuit, checkpoint. We should be able to just put one right here. We will have to move our pipe and replace it with a different pipe, but that's fine. Um, not there, please. There we go. Let's build us all five of them, or all four of them, better to say. Then in F7, of course, we need to move this here one higher and come through. And we need to snip it off right there. You don't have a choice. And then snip it off right here as well. And deconstruct it. So we will need to come up here with another pipe that has oxygen in it. Um, it's probably going to be a bigger issue. 
We could just make our life very simple, though. What do we have here? We do have oxygen up here. We do have oxygen down here. We could literally just, yeah, we're going to make our lives very, very simple here. Uh, just need a little bit of power. Where do we have a line that has enough power left over to supply another pipe? This one here is completely maxed out. Also down here. Uh, what is going on with our ice right here? We do need more water. And we need to do that fast. As soon as the space mission here is done, we need to take care of our water supply. And we're going to do this with this cool steam engine right here. Um, it's not going to be 100% optimal, but it's better than nothing. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty simple, though. Where do I get power from? Where is the best place? Probably from right here, because these here are just turned on very uh, uh, briefly anyway. Are we going to risk it? Are we going to risk it? Screw it. Let's come up here. Uh, not like that. Come on. I keep forgetting to press the shift button. Uh, highly important, of course. And we're going to go, and we're going to go into ventilation. We're going to grab us once again a filter gas pump built out of literally anything that we have laying around. And we're going to plop it right there. In F2, we're going to connect it to power. In F7, we're going to grab it a gas pipe. And with the new gas pipe, we're just going to come up here all the way and connect it to there. We're going to make this as simple as we can. We're just going to suck some oxygen out of the base instead of trying to come with another pipe all the way from our um, um, spawn right here up to right there. Yeah, that is just a waste of resources, really. Especially since we're not going out there too often anyway, so it's not going to do any harm at all. Uh, we don't have anywhere where we store our bleach stone. Is that correct? Apparently so. Uh, the reason for it is that we don't have any water in here. Didn't I put water in here at some point or another? I could have sworn I did. Maybe I forgot about it. Apparently so. Uh, we're going to make that also very easy. We're just going to come with this pipe up, build us a liquid vent. And then drop some water straight from our loop into right there. And then we can also plop leech stone in there because it's not going to outgas. You know me, always trying to keep it as simple as possible. Yet it might be why your base is slowly filled with an excess of chlorine. That is probably it, actually. I may have, I may have dug, uh, dug up some... Uh, um, bleach stone somewhere and it's just outgassing to its heart content because I never actually filled this here with water and allowed it to go in there so let's fill it up new flavor of danger soup <laughs> all right let's pump some water in there one tile full is enough it's already enough as a matter of fact in F6, we are just going to snip it off, get rid of the liquid vent, and then allow bleach stone to go in here. Bleach stone here, and bleach stone there. Simple as that. Grab it. And then right here, we're just going to leave that ladder in here. What does it matter? And then... Close it off. <laughs> or you know what. In the late game, it will bother me if we have a lot if we have a ladder in there. So let's go deconstruct. Let's go buildings. And let's get rid of this here. Don't need it anymore. Only the ladder. Very good. I'll make it my mission to create the most danger of soup possible in my next run. <laughs> we need to have a uh um, a danger soup run, yes. I like that. A run where we tame those kind of um, vents here in the most chankiest way possible. There gotta be a way for that. Like right here, we could have probably just opened up that iron volcano and let it drop on the surroundings and hope it just uh, not cause mayhem due to the cold. <laughs> That could have worked, actually. actually. 
And this here is now done. In F7, we can connect this pipe here back up. It is connected all the way through. Yes, as that should be. Very nice. And now we can just create a vacuum in here. We're going to say send a green signal at below 1000, which it will always be. It's just going to take all of this stuff here. Pump it into our exit pipe. And the exit pipe should not let it in here due to our mechanical filter. 100 milligrams of carbon dioxide are keeping us safe and evacuating it out into space, which is uh, just as good as anywhere else for this matter because it's barely any mass anyway. All taming must be done by submerging with liquid where possible. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what kind of liquid I would use for a volcano, but certainly something we could mess around with. Yes, just open up everything and let it drop to the bottom and see what happens. <laughs> Try to survive as long as possible. Uh, the only thing is you cannot tame anything, but you have to open it up as soon as possible after you find it. Something along those lines. That sounds like fun to me. <laughs> of course, now this pump here is running. Oh no, it's actually our um, uh, natural gas generators that are pumping constantly gas out and up, which doesn't allow anything else to go into the same pipe. How else would it be? Um, at least for right now, let me do it this way. We can tear this back out here as soon as we have a vacuum, but for right now we need it this way so we can get something out of this pipe. <laughs> Pour the crude oil into the volcano, pump the sour gas into a cooling chamber to get 100% conversion to uh, petroleum. Uh, wouldn't that be natural gas? I think so. Yeah, okay. That is not what I intended here either. Of course, without another um, gas bridge, that's not going to work either, though, okay, uh, will it? So let's try this here. <laughs> oh, good grief. There we go. Now we slowly but steadily will get rid of it every other tile. And let's see, proof of concept, will our um, mechanical filter work? And the answer is, of course, it will. Wonderful. Very, very good. And look at this, our rocket is full now, too. Um, the only problem is now, can I open this thing here? And inside of our interior module, we still don't have any food. Let me see here. Is there anywhere where I could put anything that would allow us to have food? Could I replace the ladder with a mechanized airlock? Because I can build on top of a mechanized airlock, can't I? As long as it's closed... The fridge would be reachable. And as soon as it's open, the dupe should be able to get up to, up to the top. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Man, is it triggering my OCD and compulsive hoarding tendencies to just see beer to wasting natural gas like that? Oh, don't worry, it's not natural gas, it's just hydrogen. <laughs> and it's not a lot. Um, let's see here. As a matter of fact, we already have achieved a vacuum. It was basically nothing in here. I promise you, the waste is absolute minimal. Absolute minimal. It screams internally. <laughs> uh, it was absolutely negligible, uh, negligible from a mass perspective. Okay. Can anybody please come up here? Get rid of this. I saw some, uh, saw some polluted oxygen. Yes, polluted oxygen was also in there. It was a mixture between polluted oxygen and um, 
hydrogen. The outhouse in the rocket is ridiculous. It hurts my eyes. What's wrong with the outhouse? Come on. It's perfectly fine. You'll see. It, it all comes together. It makes perfect sense here very soon. For some reason, somebody keeps using this toilet and I don't understand why. Don't forget to fill a gas reservoir and add a canister filler. You will need that CO2. Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, later on for the soda. Shit is full. Yes, I know. I don't know why they keep using it up there. Dupes have a mysterious love for outhouses. Yes, especially when they are in space. For some reason. Um, and why exactly? Unreachable module, unreachable storage. What is unreachable here? Am I crazy? You can't get over there. You can't get on top of here. You can't get in onto this ladder. You can't get anywhere. Oh, of course. I forgot about the episodes. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All right. Um, but now we have the power problem again for our atmosphere suits. Um, yeah. Now what? Do I really have to build something all the way to the freaking top just for this nonsense right here? Because, I mean, later on we will need it. Later on we will need quite a lot of power up here. So we might as well do it now. Eventually I'm going to rebuild this entire area right here. Um, this is obviously... Not going to be for the late game. This is obviously just for the beginning to get us going. Even though we are 200 cycles in by now. And it doesn't look like I have much of a choice. Um, let's see. I come straight up here, over here, and then all the way up. That's what we're going to do. The dupes have nothing else to do right now, so that should be done in absolutely no time. Let's come just straight through here. All the way up, and we are going to use as much lead as we, as we possibly can because we don't really have any uh, any other use for it. So it's uh, perfectly fine for those kind of excursions. Uh, it's almost just a waste material, if you ask me. And then right here, as a matter of fact, we can just connect it up here and deconstruct all of this here. Don't need it. Cancel this here. Don't need that either. Come through here, so we actually have some space to walk through. And then once again in F2, we are going to continue up, straight up, and into right there. Yes, I'm also going to power the door. Screw it, I'm not going to go around it just for that. Just power, uh, power one at a time so you don't overload the circuit. Yeah, that would be definitely a viable option, but again, I need power up here later anyway. So might as well go ahead and put it in right now. Uh, later on, I am planning on having my power spine go up here on the left. As a matter of fact, we could prepare that already if we wanted to. There's nothing stopping us from doing so. Hmm. You know what? Screw it. Let's plop it in here. Three here. Three here. Three here. If you have seen any of my other Let's Plays, then you know that I'm a huge fan of this kind of setup. Because it's just so uh, simple and efficient. Um... It just works. You just come in with your power from the left to the right into the rest of your base and power everything however you need it. It just makes perfect sense. So, we're just going to come with our ladder through here, all the way to the top. And with our fire pole, once again, all the way to the top. There we go. And then we're going to dig all of this here out. And as a matter of fact, we can come over the top as well. Something just like that. I designed the power spine there as well. Yes, I borrowed your design. And there's absolutely not, nothing wrong with that. Um, I like this design. It has worked for me forever. And, you know, why change a running system? It works. Why would I try something different if this here just works perfectly fine and there is absolutely no downside to it whatsoever? Um, you just come with your main power wire, which we already have over here anyway, all the way to this point. We just have to lay it all the way around here, come up, and connect it all up. And we are done. We can tear out all of this wiring down here on the bottom that we don't need anymore. 
all of this shit down here can all go just like that. Isn't that nice? This one here we gotta set up for oxygen, of course. Of course it doesn't have power right now because we tore it out before we built a new spine. Or better to say, a new connection. Here and there, just so we can get it going. And then we also, of course, need new power, uh, new atmosphere suits, not power suits. There we go, deliver suit, deliver suit. There we have it. And then down here is our exosuit forge. We're gonna build them out of. Doesn't matter. Build me four of them. And let's go. I think you skipped the conductive wire bridge. Let's see. Here is one. Here is one. Uh, nope. They're all there. I think we are good. Apparently I skipped to deconstruct this here though. Not entirely sure how that happened, but here we are. Alright. Very good. <laughs> Be careful saying it just works. People might start thinking you work for Bethesda. <laughs> uh, yes, it's, it's very true. <clears throat> that is funny as hell. <laughs> Made a mess. Oh, Sin and Cassiopeia got themselves stuck, of course. Come on, Sin. Really? Not everything. Just this here. And while you're at it, clean up, damn it. Thankfully, there is nothing there where it can go to. So it doesn't matter. Could be a hell of a lot worse. And we can, as a matter of fact, also try to mop up as much here as we can. We have too much water in here. But the nice thing is, because we have a nice big space down here, and we can do that right now, speaking of it, we can literally just open this here up. And let it go into this area right here. Then do the exact same thing we did earlier. We're gonna dig as far left as we can. And then we can just mop all this stuff up. Very easy and simple as that. Matter of fact, we don't even have to do that. Let's stop that. Because they are already mopping. Even though it's theoretically too much stuff. But as I said earlier, if you are fast enough. If you can give the command. Even if more liquid flushes in later. It will, they will still do it, which is very nice. There you go. Get rid of all that stuff. And I just realized that we are completely full here. There we go. I think we have now more than enough in here. <laughs> more, more, more than enough. Can't get rid of all this piping right here. Don't need it anymore. Hey, I can't be awesome getting it done 100% of the time. All dupes only have a few brain cells. I would even argue that a few is um, an overstatement here. <laughs> Nothing here that will prevent us from deconstructing this here. Actually, there's something there. Gotta be careful because we do have this here in the back. So, buildings only. Let's get rid of it. Um, while we're at it, this and this and this and this as well. And that should be good. Oh, I need to get me another drink, guys. Give me one sec. <laughs> All right. Plop in the ladder. Get rid of the ladder we don't need anymore. And how about you dupes go ahead and clean up just a little bit here, huh? There's garbage everywhere. There we go. That's better. Or it will be better. And why are there still these notifications? Go away. Nobody cares. Now we just need some atmosphere in here and some power. And we should be good to go. To send sin to space. And hopefully create some wonderful, wonderful data banks. The poor dupe is sleeping afraid of the dark. Where? I have only two dupes that are afraid of the dark, and um, both of them should be right here. That's a croc, and I'm not entirely sure who else here. Somebody else is assigned to this one here, Brandon. Oh yeah, we have more blueprints up here, and I keep forgetting, I, the entire stream, 
I have not once looked in here. Um, I don't want another dupe right now. Um, I think at 19, we are getting stuff done right now. Until we are actually going over to the other uh, planetoid, I'm just going to ignore them. As soon as we are opening up the other planetoid, we are going to bring on um, more dupes. Um, and then when we actually go to a third one, even more dupes. But at the moment, I think 19 is a pretty good number. But yeah, we will, uh, we will get there. Um, very soon we will be in space. How much longer do we have here? 13 and 8. That's fine. That is totally fine. Just waiting for the power to be built here. Our spine is built. Look at that. We can go into power and we can grab us the large power transformers. And just at every stage along the floor here, we're going to put one. Then with a heavy watt wire, we're just going to come all the way up here. And everywhere where we have bedrooms, we also have power. So these here are currently a total of six. And down here on the bottom, originally, we only have five. So we already have one more than we originally had. Um, and it looks a hell of a lot cleaner, a hell of a lot nicer. And once it's put in in the F2 overlay, you can immediately at a glance tell where your individual ones are going, um, which makes it really, really nice. So again, can't say it often enough, I'm a big fan of this setup. Definitely has uh, helped me out a lot of times. Um, how do we get down here? What's the easiest way? Probably just going to put one of these here in. Maybe, of course, have right here our signal switch. Probably just going to plop the signal switch up here. And the wire as well. And then disconnect this stuff right here and get rid of the signal switch. Just so it looks a little bit more uniform. Does anyone happen to know how long it will take? Uh, take until the fish trap bug is fixed. There is a fish trap bug. <laughs> Truth be told, I wasn't even aware there is a bug because I don't think I've ever used a fish trap for anything. I mean, I have, but so few times that I would have not noticed unless it doesn't work at all. I've never used fish. <clears throat> the my understanding is that they quote unquote fixed the um, infinite um, food method for fish. That is my understanding. But I'm not entirely sure about that. Is that actually a true statement? You can't do the infinite farm anymore that I actually have a tutorial video myself on the channel. I haven't tried it since, but I think I read somewhere that it's not a thing anymore. They got rid of it. Okay, power spine is being connected to power, just like that. And then we can actually change all of that. No fish for me, I just dumped them in the water, but don't care. <laughs> oh, we actually have snow right here. Should probably dig that stuff out before we melt it out, which we will here very, very shortly. Okay. Power spine incoming. Why are you dupes not building this here? Come on, guys. Please get this here done right away. Sick and tired of waiting for it. All right. Very good. Like I said, getting there slowly but steadily. <clears throat> What else do we have to do? Down here we have the Iron Volcano, of course. Um, the Iron Volcano is still dormant for 13 cycles, but slowly but steadily we should set this here up. Um, I have this here set to 5 degrees right now, but eventually I'm going to set it to negative 5. But right at the moment, we're just going to set that out. Come on, put that right there. Then, next on the list, we have the... Um, what is it called right over here? The um, conveyor thermosensor. 
And the conveyor rail thermal sensor um, for an iron volcano, it doesn't really matter too much, but we can set it to something like um, send a green signal if below 150 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Celsius. We will have to try around a little bit with that. Um, that will have to be done. Wait, in the uppermost condo beer, the poor guy. Who's sleeping up here? Conan and Ojin. Uh, Conan and Ojin. Let's take a look at either one of them. Conan. Conan right here. Your bio. Uh, shouldn't it show somewhere here? You're right. This duplicate will imagine scary shapes in the dark all night if no one leaves the light on. What are you doing up there? Didn't I assign you to down here? Conan, come down here. All right, that should fix that. That should fix it. If I remember correctly, the infinite does not work anymore because they won't reproduce before dying. I thought that's what I read. I did think that is exactly what I read. But I wasn't 100% on it anymore. Um, let me just think about this here real quick. Um has been a while until I built it. We are sending a green signal if below 150 degrees. That is incorrect. We need to send a green signal if above 150 degrees. So if we are, um, um, if our metal has a higher temperature than 150 degrees, we're coming along here and we are sending it back in. With a red signal, we are sending it down to our conveyor meter. So yes, it's highly important that we send this here to above and not below. That, of course, I couldn't forget. And then last but not least, we have down here our conveyor meter. And that will also be a little bit of trial and error. We can set it up to whatever we want. Um, we can set it up to more if our temperature is too low, or we can set it up to less. Currently, it's set up to uh, three units. Um, so three kilograms per um, tile, I guess, per second is coming out. But if it's coming out too cold, we can increase this value. If it is coming out too hot, we can decrease this value. It's literally this simple. Just eventually, is there a good reason that we can't set it to negative 5? Not 150. I guess we can do that right away. It shouldn't cause any harm. It should be totally fine, as a matter of fact. Let's just go there. So this one here is 100% ready to go once the um, Iron Volcano here comes online. So once again, this one here at negative 5, and for that, obviously, you do have to have polluted water. Negative 5 minus 14 makes negative 19. Uh, freezing point is at negative 20.6, so you're totally safe doing that. Then over here, you have the conveyor rail thermal sensor at above 150, and the conveyor meter with a limit of 3 units. And one more highly important thing, this cable right here needs to be connected, or you're going to be in a world of hurt. Um, yeah. It should be this simple. Let's see if that works out as planned. In the meantime, we're not getting any... There we go. I was about to say, we are not getting any oxygen. Why not? Um, should be getting plenty of oxygen. And now we are. Very good. No, Doc can empty the fish trap anymore if a Paku is in there after the last update. Oof, that sucks. That does suck. Since the last update, you talk about the very small one that happened like two or three days ago or something. I would assume they probably fixed it in the next one, but yeah. Danger soup max stress run. I mean, keep them on the edge. <laughs> I mean, we can certainly do something fun like that. There is no question about it. Just to see what happens. I'm, I'm all, I'm all game. I'm 100% all game to see if we can do something stupid like that and just dump shit everywhere and and see if we can somehow survive it. Or better to say, how long we can survive it would be the more accurate question, I guess. We do have atmosphere now. We do have oxygen coming in now. So, slowly but steadily, I should actually build this here differently, though. Because we're only filling up one atmosphere at a time, um, which a lot of people prefer. I don't. 
I prefer to have it uh, coming in right here, something like this here. Let's snip it, snip it, snip it, snip it, and then connect it. There we go. That's what I want. Once we have it, let's take another look into the interior. Yes, this here still needs to be done. This here still needs to be cleaned. And then we finally, finally, we will send Sin to freaking space. It is going to happen, I'm telling you. All right. Build it out, dupes. Build it out. There we go. Much better. 9F7. Once again, get rid of this nonsense right here. Good, good. And then, how is this thing here looking? Shouldn't that erupt at some point too? Still 10 cycles. My god, of course. You're going to say above a thousand grams. That's fine with me. What is even coming out of this thing here? Uh, 441.6 grams per second. And an average out point, uh, output of 149 grams per second. Awesome. And we can just turn it off. Fill this here up. And it will overpressure eventually. And set this here to something stupid. Didn't I just say above a thousand grams? Come on. There we go. <laughs> Cinnamon night at a time, it will be in zero G and smell the shit. Nice. Have you literally never seen anyone just plop a outhouse in here? Am I the only one doing that? There's no way in hell that's correct, right? There gotta be other people doing something like this. I'm really getting sick and tired of all these exclamation points right here. Come on, go away. You know what I got, and I know what I need. Don't need to tell me constantly. There we go. Okay, now in a food, we should have a fridge. And the fridge should fit right here. Let's see if that's going to work. Also something I haven't tried yet, but we will see. How are you going to heat up the liquid carbon dioxide off the vent? Um, let me see. You are right, I should probably change my insulated tiles. Uh, let me check the temperatures here. Condensation point is negative 48.5. Uh, the temperature in the surroundings is negative 36 and 33. There's really no reason to build insulated tiles here. It could make my life very, very easy. And just change the insulated tiles here. That would be very simple, probably. You could just build one single metal tile probably anywhere, and it would probably get the job done. Let's try that. Let's see. Um, let's build a single metal tile made out of uh, something with a high thermal conductivity. Make it straight out of aluminum. Screw it and put it right there. Let's see if that is already enough. But there's no contact. There's only contact to gas. That is actually not an optimal location. A much better location would be if I can come in from the top. How are we going to do this? What do we have in here? We have hydrogen gas. If I can't just dig up here straight, it wouldn't do any harm. Because the truth is, we don't need a lot. Yeah, let's do that. Let's come in here, come then down with the ladder right here, and then come... Does it matter? The question is, is if it matters or not. Does it have to be this particular tile right there? Yeah, it probably should be, because it is going to be fluid. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to come all the way down to here. Then we're gonna build a single metal tile. Where did you go? Am I blind? There you are. Right there. Alright, let's try it. Out. 
David says, I have never seen it and it goes against my beliefs. <laughs> I also put outhouse in the rockets. That's why I ground the rocket when not in use as it stops other dupes using it. Yeah, I should have done that in the beginning. Come on, build this here, please. Then clean the damn toilet. Let's see if this here works the way I hope it will. It works exactly the way that I want it to work. Look at that. Like a charm. Uh, this one here is... Why does it say out of order? It shouldn't be out of order anymore. Oh, it needs more dirt. Okay. Let's grab this stuff here. Uh, guys, you gonna come back? You gonna you gonna take care of my outhouse? Oh, you're just grabbing the polluted dirt. <laughs> come on, fill it with dirt. And then at the same time, let's go back to the planetoid and let's take a look here. We have I can just throw all the nutrient bars in there, maybe. That would be really easy. Or all I'm just gonna fill that sucker up in muckroot. It's totally. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter if Sin is happy up there or not. That is not his job. Um. So we are going to go ahead with a number nine priority and we fill this thing here up completely, 100% with um, wonderful, wonderful food. The question is just, I can't remember where the hell I put my actual food. <laughs> where did I put my food? It used to be right here. Where did I relocate it to? Anybody remember where my food's at? Um, I thought I put it somewhere around here. Somewhere low in the base. Oh, the power brick. Oh, yes. I did move it up a little bit. That's right. Right here it is. Because these here, we need to change to a number nine setting, uh, to a number eight. Outhouse and Muckroot as worse as it gets. <laughs> yeah, this rocket here is uh, not of the luxurious kind. That is for damn sure. It has now 200 kilograms in it. Um, that's very good. So we can disable this building for now. We are not going to put any power on this fridge here either, by the way. So the food's going to be warm. We're going to suppress all of this stuff right here. Our battery should be full at 100 kilojoules. We are uh, almost ready. What is Sin's morale? That's a good question. Uh, Sin? Yeah, he's not going to be too happy, at least not for very, very long. But at the same time, again, that's not really my concern. <laughs> now there's only one thing missing. The one thing that's missing is we don't have any atmosphere in here. Um, there are several ways that we can take care of that. Do we have space on this rocket right here for a cargo canister? I don't think we do. No, we don't. Therefore, the easiest thing to do is probably to take one of these here. 274 kilograms, that should be plenty, right? And bring it to here. Open an O2 canister. Yep, that's the plan. Just a few kilograms. Should be okay. Just like 274. <laughs> so pop your drums are going to be a problem. Warm food, free floating poo, but in space. Sounds like a great time to me still. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. oh god. Let's see. I told you you will go to space today and it is going to happen. Come hell or high water, you are going to fly, Sin. Oh, 
What about breathe CO2? It will just accumulate on the bottom. That's totally fine. That is totally fine. We also have a little bit of polluted oxygen in here. Come on, dupes, bring it in. Actually, didn't we say we have to turn that up or nothing will happen? You sound like Markiplier. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Bring it in. Bring me that damn thing. You can already assign. Change the crew to Sin right here. So Sin is already um, officially um, our pilot. Buildings with their access restricted cannot be operated while grounded, but it can still be filled. I didn't even know that's an option. Son of a gun. All right then. Cool. Priority is important. I'm like a Kerbal, it's just happier in space. Survival optional. <laughs> Look at that. I had no idea that the grounded thing is an option. Did that just get added not too long ago, maybe? Can there be? Okay, we have our oxygen here. It's only 74 kilograms instead of 274, but we will uh, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, let's empty that out right away, and then let's go. <laughs> Gun over <a> sitch. <laughs> yeah. Grounding the rocket has been there ages. Like, what is ages? Like, if you're talking about a few months, then it is well possible that I have just not had the pleasure of working with it. If we're talking about a few years, then I'm just blind as a bat. And both of those are a very viable option. Okay, he emptied it out. Let's see what we've going on in here. Um, 3.3 kilograms per tile. That's actually very reasonable. Will he be able to take his suit off? No, he will just leave his suit on. We can take his suit off um, manually. We may do that, but yeah. All right, let's get up here. Uh, let's go to our rocket. Um, no destination set. That is, of course, important. And the destination is going to be very simple. We are not going to go anywhere. All we are going to do is, or all that we need is, we need orbit. So, uh, this is basically the International Space Station. Let's see. You are now the ISS. That's, that's all you're going to do. Uh, simple as that. So, the ISS should now be able to begin the launch sequence. Uh, Sin should be coming. Uh, hopefully, with a little bit of O2 in his suit, that would be nice. Hopefully, he grabs the first one. Here comes Sin. And he takes the second one that is completely empty. That's oh, the same as always. Alright, Sin is coming in. Inside the rocket. Um, pilot requested. And look at this. We have almost liftoff. There we go. Later, Sin. And here is Sin on the International Space Station. Just chilling. Of course, you are here to do a job. So we're going to set this year to forever with a number uh, nine priority. Even though there's not really anything else you can do because there's nothing going on up here. But... We can um, unequip his clothing, or his suit, not his clothing. <laughs> that was the wrong thing to do. Doesn't matter though, thankfully. The warm sweater right here, we are going to reassign it to Zin. He will pick up his sweater again. Look at Zin having all the fun. With his warm sweater, of course. <laughs> More plastic is coming in, and we are just creating data banks. Data banks, data banks, data banks. Um, until Sin is almost dead, and then we're gonna bring him back home. Just to make sure, yes, you are actually in space now. All right, promise kept. Good, very, very nice. And up here, we are just doing the same old thing. 
of course, right at the moment, our um, thing here doesn't really know what to do because it has no output anymore. But that's totally fine. Doesn't really hurt anything. And we got an achievement for that as well. That was actually our achievement, uh, our achievement right here on the very top. Space race, launch your first rocket into space. And that's a Cinnamon Night Entertainment in space. Janky as fuck, but it will work. All right, very good. What's the next thing that we can work on? We are still waiting for our uh, iron volcano here to blow up. Um, we already have some nice steam in here. It's already nice and warm at 115 degrees. Our steam turbines haven't done shit yet, but our thermal aqua tuna is still running um, to bring down our water temperature here to negative 5 degrees. Let's see if above negative 5. Currently we are at negative 5 point something degrees, so it's still running, but it should turn off here very soon. And on the other hand, of course, we also have the storage here filled to the brim with 4,985 kilograms. Very, very good. Water level getting scary. Yes, it is getting scary indeed. I also am not entirely sure where our ice here is not melting. We have to do something about that. Um, probably right now. So let's do something about it probably right now. Um, how are we going to do this? The water is at 96.4 degrees. The ice is melting too in a power brick. Uh, there is no more ice here. That is, no. Thought. I thought we had all, we, got, we have gotten rid of all of this here. Apparently not. Apparently we had some left over. How much do we have left over? A uh, total of 7,531 kilograms. So I'm just going to plop one more storage bin in here. <clears throat> just as simple as that. And Cinnamon, you are another five gifted memberships. Come on, I was the one to keep the promise here, dude. You are amazing. Thank you so much for your insane support. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah, I'm not even asking for that, as a matter of fact. <laughs> no, truly, though. No. Thank you very much. Truly, truly appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, Mason Rayo is here, building it. You're already a mechatronics engineer, Sim. That is the highest honor for a dupe. It's like being knighted. You're not wrong. <laughs> That is the highest honor as a dupe you can have. I'm going to set this here to 8,000. And hopefully now all the stuff from over here is being transported over. We need to get this water here out. We need to preferably cool it down a little bit. Even though that's not really the main concern right now. Um, we could just try to go the chanky route here for a second. We could try to bring it up... Let me think about this just for a minute. What do we have around here? I mean, cooling it down is really the easy part because we have so much cold around us. That's totally fine. Question is where? Question is how? What are you? Infectious polluted oxygen. Hmm. What are we going to do here? I mean, first of all, I could just do this here. Because it literally doesn't matter right now. Um, we're just going to snip this here off. This water here will disappear and we're going to use this water right there. And then... From this input right here, we could bring this here up, but I probably want to go down. Let's try something like this here. Connect this up. And then bring it back around up here, not in there. And let's see how much heat we are actually sucking up. Is this thing here dormant? Oh, this thing here is dormant for another 32.7 cycle. So we actually are not going to do shit with this. Okay, so there is that. Um, in 32 cycles, that's not going to be enough time. We could use our salt water. That's another option available to us. What else do we have on the map? Didn't we say we have another one over here? Yes, that's another cool steam vent. 
Let's take a look at this thing here. What do you have to offer, cool steam vent? Let's see. It's going to build a single ladder down here. And then, of course, the same as usual. Uh, not there, but here. And let's see what we have here. Maybe that is going to be helpful. Seriously, my pleasure in gifting memberships helps out the other cool cats here. It's not crazy, just rational celebratory support. I'm not meaning when I say crazy as in insane crazy. Um, when I say crazy, I mean crazy amazing, if you know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> um, no, I truly appreciate it. You're an amazing person, dude. Um, I, I just don't know. I don't know what to say about this. <laughs> Just thank you is all I can get out of my mouth here. Let's deconstruct this stuff here. Will luck run out? We will see. We will see if this thing does anything. You guys want to take a listen? You hear anything? I hear something. I'm not sure what I'm hearing, but I do hear something. <laughs> You have a steam vent and a lot of ice that will not melt. I wonder where to put that. <laughs> uh, oh, it will melt. It's just a couple degrees away from melting. Not even. Melting point negative 0.6. The water temperature is at 21 degrees. And now, per definition... All this oxygen here is heating up as well. We are pumping it through here. So we are pumping all this heat that we are gaining from the left into our water. So that's going to be helpful as well. The thing is that the usage uh, from our loop is comparatively low. Because the only thing that we are losing in our loop is right here our um, bristle blossoms, and of course our bathrooms. And that's roughly it. Everything else we are retaining. Um, so the retention is probably above 90%. We are not really losing any water other than over here on the left side. I get you. I, uh, it was an excuse to say cool cats. I promise you with my ego and hedonistic tendencies... <laughs> If I do something, it's for my pleasure. <laughs> you know, in my time in Middle East, I was put into jail, unrightly. I've experienced corruption. I was running a company with 300 employees, was millionaire, and lost everything due to this. Guy like you, gifting without asking, is giving back hope to humanity. Thank you for that sin. Sounds like a life and a story, David. And again, I, I cannot agree more. That is... Again, you guys know, I don't even ask for likes on my stream. And you're just gifting out memberships left and right, which is insane. It's, it's insanely good. You know, I'm just doing this because I have genuinely fun doing it myself. I mean, YouTube, even with the gifted memberships, it, it doesn't pay anything worth mentioning you know i think with all the memberships that you guys have bought and gifted all together it was like what 150 dollars in in a month or something um but yeah of course that's better than a than a uh than a fist to the mouth don't understand me wrong but at the same time clearly we're not talking about thousands of dollars or making a living out of this i'm just here because i didn't genuinely enjoy playing the game talking to you guys about the game and about whatever else you have up there. I've watched this entire stream, not counting the nap, <laughs> but the chat is as much fun as watching the video. I agree. You guys are just fun to hang out with. I mean, it's the truth. Negative 2.2... Negative 1.9 and 1.8. These guys here are about to blow. Uh, giving us 12 tons back. So we should be getting into better shape here very, very soon. Should be totally fine. Our water temperature is at 
19.6 degrees. The only other thing we could do is we have all this polluted water up here, which is completely churn free. Um, you know what? Let's do precisely that. It's probably the easiest thing to do. What did we build this fancy thing here for where we are using radiation uh, to get rid uh, to get rid of um, all the pollution? Let's see, in plumbing, an insulated pipe. With the insulated pipe, we're just going to come out of here. In refinement, we need a water sieve. As a matter of fact, we need two water sieves. Two water sieves, because one of them can do 5 kilograms per second. And we are, of course, getting out 10 kilograms per second. So we need two of them. Something simple as this here. It's going to build one on the top, one on the bottom. Then, in plumbing, once again, we're going to grab our insulated pipe. And we're going to come into right there. Um... Here we need a liquid shutoff. Um, how are we going to do this? I actually don't need the liquid shutoff right there. I need more space. That's what I need. Cancel. Let's come down here and then out of there. That's more like it. We will need in uh, automation. I believe it. Or we have not researched it yet. There could also be. Let's take a look here. In medicine. No, we do have the gas pipe and the liquid pipe germ sensor. That's what I'm after. Is that actually in plumbing? Yes, it is in plumbing. Good. Plop one of those here. Then a liquid shutoff valve. It's still not going to work, though. Um, how are we going to do this? I need to come up to here. I need to go in, and I need to send a green signal if we have no germs. If we do have germs, though, I need to route my water. Probably something simple like this here just back into there and then from here we can come out of here and up to there okay that works no problem and then we're gonna come from here straight back into our pipe probably in one location and not in two so we're gonna connect these here up somewhere um let me think about this we need a, a liquid bridge right here and a liquid bridge right there does this pipe here have? Nope, doesn't. Yeah, that should work just fine. Something like this here. Yeah, that should work. That should work. Just as imagined. The pump is currently off, so that's totally fine. We're just waiting for all this here to be built, and we are good. Trying to build something as simple as I can, as usual. You guys know it. No need to overcomplicate this kind of nonsense here. We have plenty of sand to go around, so we should be golden. Let's take a quick look at that. 150 tons left over. We're golden. We will need a tiny little bit of power right here. It's not a lot, though. Uh, we can directly start using our power spine for this, as a matter of fact. Uh, this pipe, or not pipe, this conductive uh, wire right here, we are going to re reuse it. Gonna come into right here. You're gonna come up to the top, but we are also coming down to the bottom. Um, and the bottom is going to be where you know what we're not gonna do that. No, we're not doing that. How are we gonna do that? Don't want to connect this here up because it's just too much of a pass. We can save a lot more resources if we do something like this here. And it is also now time to put floors into everything, by the way. Because if we build a wire through here, the floor will just disappear. We don't want that for damn sure. From here, we can then deconstruct, uh, deconstruct all the way down because we don't need this wire here anymore for anything. Just as simple as that. Mr. Pipe between the two bridges, really? Did I mess that up? Yes, I sure as hell did. There we go. And now, how are we going to do this with this thing here? We can just come down here, plop this in, um, come over to right here, plop this in and down there. And then we can snip this here off, don't need it anymore. And at the moment, we are just going to power this area with this one thing here. That's totally fine. Doesn't cause any trouble or anything. Uh, it's just a matter of um, suffocating. Oh, are we already at this point, Sin? You used up all your oxygen? Looks like you actually did. 
Let's see, how many databanks did you make us? 33. That's not a hell of a lot. Um, how about you go ahead and you put your Atmos suit back on before you die over here? Uh, Sin, where are you at? Atmos suit on. And then we have to send you back to the ground. Not abandon ship, please. But return home. And we can watch the glorious return of Sin on our planetoid. Wonderful. Just as simple as that. Isn't that nice? <laughs> um, where is that grounded thing? Oh, it is already grounded. Very good. So we can still use all the stuff here. And we can, of course, also get back our wonderful databanks. Very nice. I would say it was a successful run. Um, the only problem is that we don't have any capabilities to stay in space much longer than however much um, oxygen and food we put in there. That's basically our, um, our main restrictions until we get into better rockets. Which is why I usually just skip it, because was this trip here and all the work we did for it really worth it? Uh, for a whooping 33 databanks? Yeah, I would say no. <laughs> I would say absolutely not. But we did it. We did it, because I promised sin, and the promise was kept. So, there's that. Now we just need to put in this, these wires right here, and we are good. And the bloody outhouse. <laughs> yes, the outhouse made it back onto the ground. <laughs> Yet I sure like to breathe a lot. Very rude. <laughs> oh, can't agree more. Cannot agree more. All right. Now we just need some power here. Um, if you could please, for the love of God, build this shit. Thank you. Don't worry, Sin. Once we have a real pl uh, a real rocket that can actually stay in space for a extended period of time, you will be the number one choice to make it back up there. No questions asked. Can we suppress this nonsense here, please? Thank you. There you go. Three more pieces of wire. Neurovaxillator, where did you see one of those? Um, the only neurovaxillator that we have is down here. Hmm, not entirely sure. We haven't found a second one yet. Oh yeah, that's right. Speaking of the de oh, of the devil, we wanted to see what this thing here does. It is currently idle, and it is uh, throwing out four thousand one hundred and sixty-four grams. Compared to the 3,700 grams. Average output of 1,396. Over here we have an average output of requires analysis. So we will wait with this one here a tiny little bit longer. Um, obviously because it is currently idle. So we need to do something about that. But we are good on that. The other thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to take a look at this thing right here. Question is just what's the smartest way to get in there? Probably just across the top here. Really nothing stopping us from doing so. So let's come over here and let's dig all of this here up. There we go. Lots of digging. Should be good. Today has just been fun. Good space, good peeps. Outhouse is the least of my worries. <laughs> a golden throne and a cigar. That is exactly how I imagine Sin up there. Not gonna lie about it. <laughs> We still have plenty of water over here um, for right now to keep this here going. But yeah, we will need to find us a more permanent water source very, very soon, though. Looks like something fun above the teleporter. Yeah, I saw that. There's something here. Robotic arm. Um, I'm assuming if this is the teleporter receiver, that probably the, uh, the other teleporter is um, above it. That would be my understanding. So we will see how that goes. Please, build me my wires. And now, we're gonna say here, send a green signal if um, below one. Which should turn this one here on. Now we just gotta turn this one here on. 
And then in F6, we should see that we have the water coming out of here, even though there shouldn't be any germs in any way, shape or form. And we are now running our water sieves. Of course, that is now a slight problem. Um, they're going up and down, which means we will need another liquid breach anywhere. Uh, for example, right here we'll get the job done. Uh, that actually broke our loop. <laughs> um, deconstruct this here. And there we go. Of course, you had to make a mess up here. How else would it be? You didn't just um, deconstruct the tile that was in the middle of nowhere. Oh yeah. Now we are golden and we are running. The only problem is now that we are not really putting a hell of a lot of water into our loop. Um, up until we are actually getting to the point where we have used some water. Which will be a second, so let's turn it up. Uh, you could inspect the neural vaccinator for a free databank. Didn't I do that already? I could have sworn I did. Oh, I did not. Usually I do. Oh, you just don't inspect the old world stuff for free databanks. Yes, I usually do. Most of the stuff has been um, inspected that we have around here. Already inspected. Every once in a while I miss one, yes, but in general I do that, of course. Um, yeah. But yes, you're completely right. Apparently I didn't do it for the neural vaccinator. Um, what else do we have in chat? Um, Yoskarat says, Hey, happy Easter to you all. Hope I didn't miss much. Uh, we made some progress, actually. Uh, you did miss a little bit. We, uh, tamed us an another natural gas geyser. We tamed us a hydrogen vent down here in the bottom. Um, we tamed us the iron volcano, which we're still waiting to turn on. In 6.0 cycles, we are getting there, for sure. Uh, problem, uh, polluted water is running in the wrong way into the liquid shutoff overflow line. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, what? Why is this here stuck? Oh, because it needs another bloody bridge, of course. But even then, no, it should do this here then. This should work. So let's build us another bridge right here. That should uh, fix the uh, dimensional problem. Let's see. Does that fix the issue? No, it doesn't because the bridge actually would have to be right here. I missed the connection point. Or I could build it right there, which would have also fixed it. Either way around, it wouldn't have mattered. I'm going to build it right there. It's probably the easiest solution right now. Let's fix this here. There we go. But right at the moment, though, what is this here showing? It shows current germ count is 16, and it is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's uh, feeding it back and not into our wonderful water sieve, so that's very good. Term count seven, six, five, four, and zero. There we go. The only problem is though that our water sieves are constantly clogged because our water cannot escape. That is actually a much bigger problem, as a matter of fact. So we are having just our liquid pump run constantly for no reason. Um, this bridge right here, we don't need it anymore. I could just get rid of it. Let's turn off this pump here for a second. We need to fix this here up better. That's not gonna fly. Point A, it looks like shit. And point B, it's also not working as intended. So we need to do something here. Just don't know yet exactly what something looks like. Let's see. This one here can just be a straight one. That's fine. And then right here. This pipe right here. What is it actually doing? This is the... Uh, that's the shit pipe. <laughs> yeah, let's rip it out. We don't need it anymore. And if we rip it out, we also don't need a bridge anymore here. Which is going to be a good thing. If you get rid of this bridge. 
we can just build a straight pipe over, which will get rid at least of a little bit more than with a pipe. Come on. There we go. That is still not optimal, but it is definitely better. Now we can turn our pump back on. Let's see what this here looks like. Give them a dedicated line and a dedicated spout. Yeah, I'm considering that right now really hard, quite honestly. That is probably what needs to happen here. Oh, all the bridges needed everywhere. So fun to figure out where they wanted to make it work the way you wanted to. <laughs> yes. Yes, a lot of bridges are definitely needed because otherwise the, the liquids are going all over the damn place. That is for sure. Um... It sure looks like we will have to give it a dedicated spout. But where? We could do something really simple. And dig this here out. And then come with a pipe. Instead of going down, we could turn this here around. Go with the pipe up all around here and literally just plop it right there. That's probably the easiest way to do this. And that's probably, yeah, that's what we're going to do here. Screw this shit. Too much work to mess around with all of this you're trying to make it work better there we go we're just gonna turn this last bridge here around just as simple as that you're gonna come out you're gonna come up and you're going to yeah nothing right now but deconstruct this here in a second there we go and now everything goes into our tank <clears throat> all right there we have it After drinking beer, bridges are intellectually not accessible to me now. <laughs> is that a radiated, unlimited storage? Yes, that is precisely what this is. Unlimited, irradiated storage. Um, for the polluted water coming out of the sinks as well as the lavatories. And then on the right side here, I just built two water sieves with a liquid shutoff and a liquid pipe, uh, liquid pipe germ sensor that says send a green signal if below one which means zero. If it's not zero, pump it back into the tank and irradiate it a little bit more. And if it's um, zero, then go to the water sieves and pump it into our water. Very, very good. That should take care of most of our issues. Now, down here in the bottom. Let's see. Our oil. We need to get further down. We have crude oil here. Um, we do want to combine our crude oil. And we want to melt this. Actually, it has already molten. There used to be more here. I'm pretty certain of it. So yeah, I'm going to dig down here. Just making sure um, what do we have heat-wise going on here. Absolutely nothing. By now it has cooled down. More than enough time has been uh, or has passed. We should be good. Let's unlock another blueprint, though. I think it's our last one for today. Might as well. Let's print it. Let's see what we got. And we have frilly leech socks. Thick, soft green socks with extra flounce. <laughs> uh, it would work too with a normal airlock with uranium. Yeah, I just wanted to have a little bit more on it. Uh, because the mechanized airlock is actually giving off more radiation than the normal one. Uh, I just wanted to speed up the process a little bit. But yes, you're right. It 100% would work without um, uh, with normal airlocks. I'm going to build me a new ladder. I just wanted to go straight down here. I don't want to have the dupes jumping back and forth between 15 different uh, sides here. And I'm just going to dig to this solid crude oil right here. Our oil is going to hit the solid crude oil. Uh, and it will slowly but steadily melt it, uh, which is 3,200 kilograms at a time. So that's definitely going to be helpful. We're going to deconstruct some buildings. We're going to get rid of these ladders right here. We don't need them anymore. And these ladders here as well. Like I said, I would like to keep it all nice and straight. Oh yeah, I poorly asked what your plan was for the molten core. Uh, most likely, um, what I'm going to do for in the beginning at least is um, convert my crude oil with the magma over to petroleum without having to use this do that right here, the oil refinery. 
so that is definitely going to be on the uh, agenda here very shortly. Um, yeah. A little bit, a little bit of pee on top. This is actually not pee. It's actually uh, standard polluted water. No pee has happened. Uh, Jay says, I'm going to die. Why are you dying, Jay? Or not? <laughs> You're totally fine, Jay. Come on, man. There you go. <laughs> it's just hilarious. You look over in chat and somebody writes, I'm going to die. <laughs> You know, in any other context, I would have the FBI in front of my house now. <laughs> yeah, frozen hair, though, is not too happy. Um, you're right, frozen hair is not too happy. Come here. Let's build this. Let's get it done. Not this. There you go. Frozen hair is safe. It's all good. Don't worry. Got it under control. Bitch, I'm going to get rid of it. We are going to relocate it a little bit out of the way here. And that pitcher pump, we're going to put it right here, probably. Actually, let's put it one higher. Right here. And then another ladder right here, so the dupes can still come over here when we need to. What's the <laughs> standard operating procedure to deal with the spore kids? Um, not entirely sure yet how we're gonna get in there. Not entirely sure yet how to get in there. Um, how to deal with them? We're gonna dig them up, but we will definitely find a way to uh, take care of them. At the moment, I'm not worried about him. I just want to get down here real quick to the solid crude oil. We have three more over here on the left as well. Um, eventually we need to dig into this oil reservoir here. That's going to be easy. Should be pretty simple. Germs and water tank? Germs and water tank. Germs and water tank. How did we get germs in our water tank? That should not even be possible with this setup right here. Um, unless I connected the wrong pipe somewhere for a brief second. Hey, B, why don't you make a designated oil fill tank just for the pitcher pump? I should probably do that. You're correct. He saw the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> he did. Just so you don't have to keep moving it. Yeah, you're probably right. I should do something like that. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure how we can potentially even get... Um, germs in there. How did we get germs in here? I'm not entirely sure. Send the green signal if below one that makes a zero. It, it should have not gotten into there. It goes into here. It goes into there. It comes up. I must have um, very briefly. Yeah, we do have germs in here. How? Where did I mess up? Maybe they got in there from some other source. I'm wondering. I mean, there were a lot of bridges. Did I connect the bridge wrong for just a split second and accidentally have a wrong piece going into the wrong direction? That would be the only way. You radiate that as well? Yeah, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> I already have the solution in mind, of course, but still, though, the problem or the question that I have is, is it getting any more? And it doesn't look like it. And how is our liquid tepidizer running? No, that's funny as hell. You are not in water at all. <laughs> Do we care for germs? No, we really don't. It doesn't really matter in any way, shape, or form. But still, though. Huh. Very, very odd. Well, let's uh, irradiate our water a little bit here. Make a nice airlock. Let's build us a couple of those. Uh, one here, one there. Should probably get the job done already. 
But yeah, very odd. Um, that's uh, beyond my comprehension, honestly, right now. And maybe the water from further up going through the toilet? No, that shouldn't be possible. Because the toilet water is coming through here, and then into here. I'm thinking I connected something wrong when I built all the bridges here, just for a split second. Um, that was probably enough to get a couple of pieces through here uh, that have germs in them. And that was the root cause. I can't imagine anything else, or at least I can't come up with something else. Um, but yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes. Not the end of the world. Come on, dupes. Please, build me my ladder. And as a matter of fact, while we are at it, let's build a fire pole right beside it to speed up this process here just a notch. Eventually we will need it anyway. So I might as well do it right this very second. Screw it, let's do it. And then once all this here is molten, we will dig over to the right side and also accumulate all this crude oil here into our wonderful tank. I thought the liquid tepidizer runs for half a second when it receives a green signal, then turns back off, if not in water. I know at that point you could boil water with it. Yeah, I have actually used this as an exploit before uh, to make some natural tiles because that actually allows you to heat water to a higher temperature than 85 degrees uh, just by flipping the switch or automating it for that matter. But this is more than half a second. That's actually a lot more. Very odd. Also, the main problem is that my thermal sensor here is not in liquid. Um, it needs to be in liquid, though. Oh, it's really funny because the mechanized airlocks are on my automation wire. I didn't even pay attention to that. Oh, God. Okay, gotta do that differently. Get away there. Come on. Yeah, it has overheat damage. Probably because it heats itself up because it's not really in any fluid. It doesn't heat any fluid up. Let's see here. Um, on one of those. The automation input is on the bottom. So we can't build it like this, but we can most definitely build one here and build one there. Um, we can also... We cannot turn it around all the way, though. Should be totally fine, though. Let's build us a few more. These are all temporary. We're going to get all the resources back, so it's not really any harm or anything. Matter of fact, let's turn these here around. 90 degrees, there we go. Let's just build them like this. They are still being built out of uranium. Yes, they are. So that is okay. Are we going to make it down here? Oops. One way for spores to make a liquid drop and drop a bleach stone in there and wait or plant a wee sword next to it. Yeah, you can plant a wee sword or you can just use my uh, um, mechanized airlocks. That's usually what I try to do. The problem is um, to get in here with a liquid lock. Uh, but you're probably going to flood a lot. Let's see here. How could we get in there? Let's take care of this here real quick, huh? Um, let me think about this here. We can build something like this here. The oil would come in. We can build a tile right here through the corner. Then move this tile here out. That should theoretically work. Build a tile right here. Let's see. Let's try this out. Let's give this here a shot. Something like this here. All this shit here can go. We don't need it. None of it matters. The only thing that matters is this tile right here and the tile that's going to be above it. But probably the pressure is going to be so high that it's just going to flood it. No, that's not going to work. We got to wait a little bit. Until we have more space down here. We need to dig more stuff out. It's much easier. Um, and maybe the water... Let's see, you know. Um, I encountered a similar problem. I thought the liquid tabulizer runs for half a second. We already had that. Answer checks the content of the pipe it's placed on. If there's contaminated liquid in front of it, it's then already transported. Yeah. Um, which is why this here is built right beside it. So there is no... There is no... Um, um, what is it called? No distance right here. The way it is built should work. Without an issue, I believe. I forgot to type storage bin for chlorine while in the spores. Also another way to do it. 
I realized this morning that I could literally use move to to move a Chermy bottle of salt water into my chlorine room. No radiation in the base game. Yeah, chlorine rooms is what I used to use. Now I just use radiation. I guess it's that the water level is making it to the next tile, but not enough to show up yet. That may well be. Now we are actually in it. Um, let's take a look at the radiation. Everything is nicely irradiated. And let's look, uh, take a look at the germs. We are back down to zero. Very nicely. We just have a few left over here on the side. And also, I just realized we ran out of water over here. That is a problem. Um, of course, we need to set this here to below. Below 1000, maybe. To pump this here all out. I want to use all this water here up as long as humanly possible. That's going to be good. In F1, we are still doing good. So it just turned off a second ago. Not a big deal. And the charm overlay. We still need like a liquid uh, a door somewhere over here to get a little bit of radiation into this area. However, if I get it in clean, I have no idea how to... Uh, in liquid... Can radiation clean spore out of liquids? Yes, radiation can clean any kind of um, um, contamination. Like for example, right here, the food poisoning or also the spores that are... Um, the zombie spores here, if they're in a liquid, it makes no difference. All the spores will die from radiation. It's really nice. Radiation is a uh, big improvement to the game, if you ask me. Big fan myself. Let's see, what is the water temperature in here? 28 degrees. Yeah, of course. The water temperature is now way different because our um, thermal sensor is not even in water. Can we get a little bit more heat in here? So one of those things explodes at 1.1 degrees. Yeah, 0 0.9, 1 degrees, 0 0.8. Soon we're going to get um, a lot of water back. That's going to be very, very good. It's just a question of time. And down here we are already starting to melt our solid crude oil. Very, very good. And you don't need to irradiate the enter pool just near the pump inputs. You mean the entire pool? Yeah, like I said, I just wanted to have it go down as quickly as possible. Thankfully, uranium, we are at something that doesn't hurt anything. That is, um, we have plenty of it laying around. Um, for example, over here, we have two total beta hives. So it's not like I'm going to miss it or anything. There's probably way more hidden over here, I would assume, somewhere. Like, we have a bunch of areas that we haven't even discovered yet. So yeah, I'm not too worried about those few hundred kilograms of um, uranium that we used for those doors. And these here, we also all going to get back. No problem at all. Glow stick dupes make great cooks. The natural radiation emits steri uh, emitting sterilizes food as they cook it. Yes, 100% true. Definitely another big benefit of a irradiated dude. Dude. Dupe, I mean. <laughs> so, let's see. How are we looking? You're going to get rid of this stuff here slowly but steadily? Apparently not. So I may have to uh, sacrifice my pitcher pump here for a minute. Shouldn't be that big a deal. Sounds like danger soup to me. <laughs> Oh, God. Let's put this last one here in. The moment it's built, we can probably watch it. How fast those few germs here disappear. So, that's exactly what we are going to do. We're going to watch it. And we will see how fast that goes. And we should be golden. By now, we have 247 units of reed fiber. So, yeah, right here. More and more reed fires are being grown. And we still have roughly 30 tons left. Very nice. Come on. Build the mechanized airlock. There we go. And all the germs are gone. Literally this quick. You can see it, I'm playing at five times speed. Um, for me, the slow speed is one times, the medium speed is five times, and the fast speed is ten times. I have a mod for that, so this is not actually double speed, it's five times speed. Uh, just so you know. 
Sorry, it's three times speed, not five times. It's one, three, and ten. Um, but yeah, in three times speed, it happened instantly. All of the doors can be deconstructed, and we will see if we get any more germs in here. Theoretically, we shouldn't, with or without radiation. If the system up here works the way it is intended, we shouldn't have any trouble with this. Um, we will find out soon enough, though. Let's take a look into our F6 overlay. It's coming through. Everything's good. Not detecting any germs. Now we are detecting germs. And now, this one piece here, I'm wondering if this here actually has germs in it. Guess we're about to find out. Come on, dump it down. And no, the answer is no. The system is working exactly as intended. So yeah, I still don't understand how we got that in there. It could have been in there for forever. Not like anything I ever look at. Because even if it's in there, it doesn't really cause any troubles. Or what's, what's the big deal about it in the first place? But still though, let's try to make it nice. And look at this here. We only have a tiny little bit of polluted water left here. Our pitcher pump got most of it out, as a matter of fact. Isn't that nice? And down here on the bottom, our solid crude oil is slowly but steadily melting away. Filling our tank actually back up. Very, very nice. We can go ahead and get rid of all this nonsense right here. We don't need any of it anymore. Uh, the heat problems are in the past now. There is nothing left that will do us any harm. 150 C and Abyssalite literally does not matter in any way, shape, or form. Therefore, we can just rip it all out, get back our wonderful resources in the process, and then slowly, slowly but steadily, uh, dig our way through here and extend our um, um, crude oil storage all the way into this area right here. That's where I want to have it. That's where we want to end up. Somewhere... Kind of like there. Yep, that's perfect. That is where we're going to build our ladder and our fire pole so we can get all the way to the bottom. And then we can dig our way through here. And this will then be our final crude oil storage until it won't be crude oil anymore. All right, looking very nice. Does uranium debris work to remove germs, or does it have to be constructed into something? I wonder. Um, that is a very simple answer. It does not work. You can see it. Uh, the uranium ore is still laying around here somewhere. You can see uranium ore 400 kilograms. The debris is not emitting anything. Um, it has to be built, and we tried that last time, um, into a manual airlock or a mechanized airlock. Uh, the pneumatic door here also does nothing needs to be a manual airlock or a mechanized airlock, and the manual airlock is weaker in radiation than a mechanized airlock. It also costs only 200 compared to 400 uranium, which is why I usually use the mechanized airlock, because it is just so much stronger in radiation. Especially for temporary builds like this here, you know, you get your resources back 100%. Work in progress, programming is hard. <laughs> all right, come on. Let's build all the way down there. And then we can start just digging this here out a little bit. And to make our crude oil come all the way down. This is also where our liquid pump is going to go. All the way down here. Probably, let's take a look in F3. You could put it right there, but I'm probably going to put it a little bit higher or a little bit further over. Um, somewhere like right here probably is going to be a good place for it. Very nice. That should be then the last relocation for our pump, because uh, it's not going to get much deeper than that. Oh, that's also going to be nice. This area here should always be filled with oil until we have only those tiles here in the bottom left, plus this one. So that should be perfectly fine.
Here we have 2,000 kilograms per tile, roughly. That's quite a lot of extra oil. And every time one of those solid crude oil here is melting, it that's 3,200 kilograms extra. So we are definitely getting a lot more crude oil in. Very, very nice. Definitely like that a lot. We have a lot more diamond over here. More solid crude oil. So that's the first place where we are going to dig to. Question is just how are we going to dig there? I'm uh, going to come all the way through here. That's probably the last thing that I'm going to start today. We have been here for good grief, almost six hours now. So slowly but steadily, not going to lie, I am getting a little bit tired. Oh, I'm certainly no full-time streamer that sits here for 12 hours a day. Oh, <laughs> Maybe one of those days, but we are far, far away from that. Let's actually wait with this here. But we definitely want to combine our nice and warm oil with the cold oil that's over here. Have a nice heat exchange and start heating up this here as well. When I say nice and warm, we're still at only negative 3 degrees, but it's still more than enough to uh, get rid of this solid crude oil right here. Twenty-four hour marathon. <laughs> hey, we can do that if uh, uh, if you have a discussion with Icy Venom about it. How about that? <laughs> the polluted water somehow came back. What in the hell was it? All just together in one tile over here. Son of a biatch. It can't be right. I was so happy that we got rid of it, and now it's back. <laughs> All right, temperature is dropping slowly but steadily over towards the right, exactly as expected. And the nice thing is that the solid crude oil has a melting point of negative 40 degrees, so at negative 29, we're still more than good. Time to build some mesh tiles. Um, where? For what? What I'm trying to see is if I can... Maybe I can cheese it. Hold on one second. If I can build this here... Should be good. When I build this here, there's almost no liquid over here. I should be able to give a command right here. And maybe I can't just mop all of this stuff here up. Also, this here should be set to crude oil. Yes, my plan's coming together. <laughs> Use a mesh under the polluted... Yes, I could have done that. You are right. I could have just put a bunch of mesh tiles right here. But this way, I'm just mopping up everything. And the crude oil, I'm just going to dump it back into the top. That could work right here, though, maybe. With a little bit of luck. With a little bit of luck. It could work with that one piece right here. Look at him mopping. Croc, doing a great job, man. That oil sure will keep a space program going for a while once you have a boiler. Yes, that is the general idea for sure. Yes, we can mop this here up. We mop all of this over up, uh, up over here. No problem at all. And we should be rid of it. Croc is winning. And Croc is winning. <laughs> that should be the end of the polluted water saga in our crude oil. Almost nothing left.
There we go. Yeah, wonderful. Simple as that. Okay, down here. This here's built. This here's built. Which means this here can go. Don't need it anymore. The end of the first polluted water saga. <laughs> Come on, Jay. A little bit of optimism. <laughs> Like episode 12 of anime, never to be seen again. I hope so. I truly do. Uh, four tiles high. We're going to come all the way over here. We're going to dig this here out. Last but not least. And then we will see how far this here drops. This here is already melting. Once this here, this here is all molten, all we have to do is get rid of this fossil right here and get into this solid crude oil as well. We have more solid crude oil over here. This is going to be quite the storage here. Good grief. And we have more and more solid crude oil everywhere over here on the left side. And then even though, even on top of that, we have another oil reservoir. It's insanity. The amount of oil we have is certainly nothing to scoff at. Uh, just so we are on the same page here. Alone, this here is 112 tiles. And that's just a fraction of what we have. <laughs> Very, very good. Now, um, these poor kids right here. What are we going to do about that? Let me think. We could do something like... Um, the problem is it's all still underneath the oil. We need to dig out more stuff. That is the truth of it. So we can get rid of most of this oil right here. Maybe leave only this crude oil right here to fill up our um, um, our liquid lock. That should get the job done, hopefully. Negative 36 degrees. Yeah, we need a little bit more mixing right here. Unfortunately, it's all the same shade of blue, so it doesn't really help us anything. But that's totally fine. Let's get it lowered just a tiny little bit more here. All of this here can be dug out as well, by the way. Don't need any of it. Or high, of course, as usual. Trying to make it as simple as possible. Dig from the top, yes, that it will be the general idea. I just do not want to dig up the solid crude oil. I could just wait until it's molten, I guess. Meh. Somebody really needs to add some options to the temperature overlay. Yeah, I agree. Um, what is this here? It's all cold. Temperatures reaching negative 0.1 degrees. And then the next one is negative 273.2 degrees. So there's literally no difference. <laughs> um... You are getting stuck, aren't you? We need a dupe that comes by and digs this here up. With a little bit of a higher degree. Because Icy Venom here cannot dig up fossil. Or granite for that matter. Here is what, or better to say, Jay. Jay's here to help, as usual. Easy, no problem. Jay's getting it done. How is our metal volcano doing, by the way? Oh, it has already erupted. Look at it. Let's see if this here works the way we want it to work. <coughs> our steam turbines are running. That's a good thing. That is a very good thing. Um, let's see. This here turns on. We have the first material coming out at negative 5 degrees. Let's give it a limit of 5. Let's see how that works. At 1 degree, 2 degrees, 3 degrees, 4 degrees, 6 degrees. Do we get 10 degrees? Yes, we get 10 degrees. No problem at all. Yeah, I would say that works exactly as expected. Very, very nice. And as soon as the last... Um, 
matter here is through it. Let's see here. Those metal tiles will cool down absolutely rapidly. Very nice. Very good. Uh, dig from the top, I mean for the spore kids. Yeah, we could dig down there for the top. The only problem is if I do that and I release it, um, we have 4 million germs in the base. Something that I would really like to avoid, if at all possible. Um, not that it really does a big harm or anything, but just not necessary. Um, I would like to come in from the side with a liquid lock. I could build a liquid lock right here, I suppose. Not with a conveyor meter, though. Um, and then dig from the other side of the lock down. I guess I could do that, but... Yeah. At the end of the iron material flow, what was the max temperature? I don't know. Can we still see it? Yes, right here. Um, well, by the by now it's so cold again. Uh, we will see it during the next eruption cycle. I'll take another look at that real quick. We will get that answer for you. I think the max temperature was still not even 20 degrees Celsius. So it should be totally fine. Let's dig out all of this stuff right here. Um, just to help out our dupes a little bit to get around here. Um, let's build us some ladders to come over here. Something like this is that it don't have to come all the way to the bottom and climb up there. That's just annoying. There we go. Each tile that we dig out is another 800 or so kilograms of crude oil that we can store further down. Which is a very good thing. Let's see here. Everything looks totally fine. Um, we can dig through here, four high, all the way over. And then right through here, two high, before we dig all the way down to here. Oh, it's not even the fossils, so they are not doing any harm other than if it's in your way. No, they're not doing any harm. They're not doing any harm at all. I just want to get rid of it. Okay, so far so good. Now for high, we can come all the way to over here. And then therefore also all the way to over here. Very, very good. We can go even further with this same scheme. All the way to right there. Filling it up with wonderful crude oil. Used to have algae for life with slime. I'm pretty sure we still do. Let's see. Oh, we have only 8.4 tons of slime laying around. I expected it to be a hell of a lot more than that, but I guess not. Um, yes, I just realized our oxygen is, of course, a little bit low currently. Um, because I just remembered that we have a cool steam vent right here that is completely out of it. So we need to turn this here back on. Um, and this thing here is still dormant for another 20 cycles, so... There we go. I should fix that problem in a second. Just happened to look at our bre uh, bre breathability meter right here at 70%, and I was like, that's a little low. It looks like we had another ice meteor storm. Alright then. Not that that matters, but yeah. And we are getting a, a hell of a lot more water again, which is very good, of course. I uh, can't complain about that in any way, shape, or form. And in here we still have... Kind of hard to see. Oh, 1.2 tons per tile, 1.4 tons, 1.5 tons. So plenty of that going around. Come on, noobs. Dig this here out. Give me a tiny, tiny little bit more space for our crude oil. Dig all of this here out. More tiles. More the merrier. Put another piece of ladder right there while you're at it. Then let's take a look here real quick. I build it like this here. If this here is our liquid lock, I just need some tiles that go through here. Something simple like that. Plus this tile that we already have. Let's see if we can work with this.
You're running at a full speed right now, 10 times speed. Need to get rid of this one right here and then build one extra one right here, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Not exactly what I expected, but uh, should be good enough. Then we can get rid of this one tile right here. And we have still three tiles left. How am I going to do this here? What is the best way? Probably temporarily I'm going to build me. I don't want to build a pitcher pump or anything. We're going to build a tile right there. Uh, why is this one not reachable? You should be able to get over there now. Build us a few more ladders. Come on, dupes. Get her done. Oh, it's because of right there. I'm blind. Yeah, it's this one piece of ladder right here. There we go. Right here, we are going to dig into the top. That's all reachable. Without a problem, which enables us to build this one tile right here. Come on, dupes. Actually, how much do we have here? Oh, that's totally fine. We don't even need this here. All we need to do is just dig out this tile right here and let it drop. That should do the job. Yep, perfect. No more problems. Now we have a liquid lock and now we can just come over here and, well, dig into here, really. Get rid of the spore kids and then fill the area up with our wonderful doors. Simple. Literally as simple as that. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. You can see now, spore count is of course insane. Absolutely insane. But we don't worry about that at all. Because the next step is we get rid of this here. Then dig up the spore kit highest priority and then let's deal with it like we deal with everything else which are mechanized airlocks built out of uranium with the highest priority so we have them and then we can dig from the top very nicely down 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 to get rid of all of the stuff here to make it a nice open space We can already see it, the radiation is pretty high, and with the third one, it should be even higher. Literally this simple. Come on, dupes, build the last one. There we go. Can we see the churn overlay? Of course. Uh, let me put it into 10 times speed and we should be able to see this here drop. Hopefully at 10 times speed. Yeah, right there. 2.16, 2.15, 2.14 and so on and so forth. It will probably be, I don't know, two, three, four cycles until we are all the way down to zero. But it is definitely dropping like a rock. You're just sitting here and waiting it out. It's uh, very nice. And of course, it doesn't contaminate our crude oil, which is uh, also very nice. We're just waiting until it is all the way down. But yeah, I just wanted to show that off real quick, how I personally would do that. How would I get rid of those spore kits right here? We've done it before, but a few people were asking in chat. So of course, I'm happy to show that off. Always happy to oblige to requests. Was it necessary to get rid of them? No, in any way, shape, or form. Um, why doesn't it contaminate the crude oil? Because this here is a gas and this here is a liquid. That's why it doesn't contaminate it. The only way that the crude oil would have been contaminated is if the spore kit would be submerged in crude oil. 
Um, if we submerge the uh, spore kit in crude oil, the crude oil will get contaminated. Other than that, um, it won't do a damn thing. Which is really nice. It's kind of like the same with, um, let's see, do we have any germs in our base? No, no we don't. If this entire area here would be filled with any kind of gas with food poisoning, it would still not contaminate our water. It's the exact same um, principle with those zombie spores, even if it's 10, 15 million zombie spores, it doesn't make a difference. But yeah, it's the same for every stream, guys. Um, if you have any requests, you want me to, uh, you want me to do something for you, uh, you want me to explain something or show you something, I'm always happy to do that. Even if it's not required in the game, who cares? I mean, if I can help somebody out to help to uh, make their own game better, I'm always, always happy to do so. Um, if I know it myself, that is. <laughs> um, don't want to even pretend like I know everything there is to know about this game. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for today. Um, we have our solid crude oil here. Um, we are doing very well. We, we literally, like, we killed it today. Uh, natural gas guys are right here. Hydrogen vent right here. Iron volcano right there. We sent a cinnamon, uh, a cinnamon night entertainment to space with the chankiest rocket you have ever seen. Got a lot of fun out, out of the outhouse right here, so that's of course always good. But yeah, that's just the way that I built that thing. We put in a power spine, even though we only use it in a one or two connections so far and not more than that. It's still very nice. And uh, we almost died from water loss, but we are back. And we can slowly but steadily see this here coming back to life as well. Um, the oxygen is flowing. Isn't that nice? So yeah, not entirely sure what we're going to do next time. Probably going to slap this crude oil here into our uh, magma. Or better to say, we uh, transfer the heat from our magma into our crude oil. So there's that. But yeah, this is something similar to the Escher liquid geyser thing for gas. I accidentally made one with liquid, but I broke it. Um, not for gas. Not that I'm aware of. No. But yeah. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you haven't left a like yet, I would highly appreciate it if you did. It doesn't cost anything and uh, it would help me out greatly for the algorithm. You guys know how that works on YouTube. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, longest stream I've done so far, over six hours long. I truly appreciate all of you guys hanging out. It was fun as always. So yeah, again, thank you very much for watching. And with that, I say thank you and Peace.